Coverage of the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour, second stop, Hainola's Disc Golf Park World. I'm Andrew Gum. I'm Victor Torgestad, and if you're not pumped after that intro video, then I don't know uh, when you will be pumped, because that was, uh, yeah, getting my pulse high. <laughs> Definitely, very exciting, very exciting trailer video there, and a very exciting action we're ready to bring you. We got uh, some incredible cards, beautiful course, if you don't know, keep us all is a premier destination in Finland and in the world. You know, this Kipasuo, uh, Kipis for short, which means cheers, like a toast in Finnish. Yeah, this is, might be my favorite course that I've ever played. We were actually up there. It's just like two, one and a half hour north from Helsinki. So we were traveling up to, to have a look at the tournament layout just two days ago. We had beautiful weather. And uh, even though it's gonna rain a bit today, like, these players just have to enjoy the course and have fun today because uh, you know, don't, there are no better courses than this, basically. It's, uh, it's very impressive. Yeah. The work they put in it mm -hmm. is top notch. You know, they've, mm -hmm. they've developed it over the last few years to a, an incredibly high standard. You know, one of the best, if not the best uh, in the world. So the weather's not quite as good as we got on our practice round. We had a nice like 24 Celsius and perfect sun. We got a little bit of sunshine. Um, but it's not too bad. There's just a little bit of drizzle. It's a much colder than it was a few days ago, but uh, n not a lot of wind. We're going to show you some highlights from Tali, our, our first stop on the tour that you, you might have tuned in for a few weeks ago. Yes, here you go. And uh, two of the top three players uh, from Tali we are actually going to see on our feature card on the on the F, uh, MPO side here today, and that's Niklas Antila and Seppo Payo, who finished second and third in Tali. Yeah, so we're going to see some highlight shots from them as well. But here we see a few from the FPO, and uh, yeah. But let's start to mention uh, the, the feature card uh, on the MPO side. That's Niklas Antila, Seppo Payo, Villa Ahokas, who we saw with a third position in um, in Copenhagen, where he played really that's good. That's right. Yeah, he won that playoff with yeah. a big putt there. And uh, Rasmus Metsama, Estonian guy who I had never seen before. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a quite a new face maybe to the to a lot of our viewers as well. We're I, really I happy, so, yeah. happy to have him on the card. Be exciting to see what he can do. Yeah, a busy guy. He has played quite a lot of competitions already this year and won one, and that's the Estonian Winter Championship uh, that he was able to finish uh, with a victory. And uh, other than that, he just recently played Kokkedal, finished sixth, and uh, also the Heatland Open when he finished 14th. So he's a good player. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, a lot of potential. Be exciting to see how he performs under the spotlight here with the live coverage. And it's also nice to see that uh, not only Finns are playing this tour, even if it's the Finnish 
Pro Tour, Prodigy Disc Pro Tour, it's also open for everyone. So happy to see some international faces here also. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Everyone's welcome. Sign on up and get over here. Here we're seeing some FPO highlights from Tali. That was a really exciting weekend, wasn't it? We had such a good time with that. It was so tight and uh, it was exciting all the way until the last hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. We, we had some really, really close finishes, lots of drama, lots of excitement. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more of that coming at you this weekend. Make sure you tune in, tell your friends, go, go to the Disc Golf Stream website or download the app from Google Play or the App Store. Yeah, and what is exciting to see is that we have a feature card containing four really good players. And behind or behind on the, on the on the second card we have the reigning champion Heidi Line who was able to beat both the big favorites last year Evelina Salonen and Hena Blumros and uh, she also won this competition here in Tali that we were talking about so uh, yeah definitely. there are many good players who could really compete for this victory oh yeah the field is stacked both FPO and MPO we have very high rated players players with the uh, already a really wonderful legacy and just looking to add to all the all that and here we see the the card that we were following um, for the MPO and Tali on the final round that was really exciting and that that young Estonian Roland Roland Kur yeah wasn't that something that that's something I will never forget uh, seeing such a young guy just step up with this Finnish all-star players basically and just showing them that I'm not here to watch you, I'm here to beat you. And yeah, he almost did with, like, he beat basically the whole field except those on the podium. But, but Oh, that was yeah. so impressive, yeah. you know, to be at that age and to show that level of composure. He's not having his best day today, but he's, he's in the competition as well, so we're very excited to follow along and, and uh, see some more of that magic he can pull off. Another guy who's not having the best day today, that's this guy, Christian Koksa, who was playing amazing in Tali, but oh yeah, he was on, he was on fire, and he, he really showed his his ability, really impressive. Today he had a really slow start on the putting green, especially, but he picked it up in the end. Not sure where he ended up. Uh, I think he's two over par uh, two, after. Yeah, yeah he fin he got uh, out on the course early today, so he's already finished. Uh, I think that he is probably going to play better tomorrow and on Sunday, but. Um, Maybe it's the pressure that he came in here as kind of a favorite, and uh, it's not easy to uh, to go out there and just uh, play. Then yeah, it's kind of a kind of a different thing when you're ex expected to to win, or if you're coming off a big win like that. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard to kind of keep up to that uh, level of play. He plus actually finished at plus one. I see now. He plus bird, one. He, okay, he birdie so number seventeen. Yeah. Yeah, that was important for him. But so yeah, he's not that many strokes behind the current leader. But still, this is a tight course. It's hard to score here, so he's gonna have to play two really hot rounds to get himself up there. He's definitely got that ability, but yeah, he's gonna have to shoot lights out. He's gonna have to really improve the putting. But he can throw as far as anybody in the world, so he can he can really you know uh, steal a few strokes that way on some of those longer holes by by just getting that massive distance. Our, uh, yeah, go ahead. This guy, Niklas Antila, uh, we actually saw him uh, when we were up there in Heinola two days ago and uh, I was impressed what I saw from him, that that snap he gets and it's like, if you ever heard a whip, then you know how it sounds when he's throwing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, he can crush. Not a huge guy, but very compact, very clean form and just extremely explosive. Massive I'd energy he's getting on those. Yeah, it releases. was cool to stand next to him to see him throw and to actually witness that in. Yeah, in and person, just to even uh, feel the wind coming off it. <laughs> <laughs> in a yeah. way, I mean. He, also, Oscar as well, another young, young Finnish crusher. Yes, yes, he was bombing off the tee as well. He had a good competition, Oscar Wikström, we were, talk we were talking yes. about. And yeah, he was on the lead card last year, right? He was on the lead card for the last round last year and. Uh, uh, had played quite a solid round today. We can expect to see some good results from him as well, I think. Yeah, I think he's still out there. Looked like he had a pretty good start. Right now he's minus one through seven. Just took a bogey on seven, unfortunately, but uh, decent round, decent start. Plenty Nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, and plenty, no. of room, plenty of room to go further under par. So it'll be exciting to see how that finishes.
And uh, what do you think about Seppo Payo this weekend? Very excited to watch him play, as always. Such a great talent, such a great person. We'll see what kind of uh, mode he's in. Yeah, it's really nice to have that kind of like ambassador for the sport here in Finland because he's a guy that like it's impossible not to like him. It's impossible not to like his style of play and uh, everything he brings to the sport is just so so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Great, so, great role model. Exactly, and uh, I really hope to see some great play from him as well, and I think we will. Oh yeah, for sure. Here we're kind of seeing where it all came down to last week. That was so exciting. He's, you know, Nikos hit this putt to force Christian to make his putt for the for the win, and it, it was windy. Those those are not short putts. They Clut are clutch, scary putts. And when Here you're putting for the lead from this distance, look at this putt. This one came in a little high, but it caught just perfectly. Just it. So nice. Huge win for him. First A-tier win. So that just really shows you how deep talent is here. Yeah, I was kind of surprised when I know when I learned that Christian is very young. He yeah, looks, he seems very mature. Yeah, he seems very mature in his acting, in like the way he looks like and the way he plays also. But yeah, very composed. Yeah, very mature. So uh, we're going to see a lot from him in the future as well. Most definitely. And here you see us. Welcome <laughs> back to the studio. Disc Golf Stream Studio here in Sipo, Finland. Happy to be with you as always. Thanks for joining us and make sure you tell everybody what's going on here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the course we're going to see? Because it is a beautiful course. It's a world-class course. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really something special. You know, it's uh, very heavily wooded, kind of a, a, a nice, almost like a sandy type of terrain. Mm. Uh, a lot of elevation, which is not very common in Finland, so I it's quite special in that regard. They've really, really used uh, a lot of the hills into the course design perfectly, and uh, it's just a beautiful place to play. I mean, the infrastructure is absolutely top-notch. They use uh, they use some state-subsidized labor to get get uh, unemployed workers jobs, and they and they've done a great job in yeah. building this infrastructure. Every tee pad is immaculate. They have steps uh, up and down all these hills. There's even a Zuka cart <laughs> ramp, yeah, ramp, yeah, yeah. A, ramp a, a ramp track for your Zuka cart. And so I mean, they really, really thought it out, and they really put in the effort. It's it's something special. They have thought about everything here, and yeah, it's a wooded course, uh, kind of tight fairways here and there, but it's s very fair. And it's beautiful. Yeah. This is a disc golf destination uh, for everybody. If you can get here, you have to check out this place. You will not regret it. I promise you. It, it's it's a wonderful place to play. And they have something for everybody here as well. There's actually a, a beginner course with two different tee pads, a short and a long. And uh, then there's an amateur layout and a pro layout. And then today we'll be playing the championship layout, which is a combination of the AM, AM and pro put together mm -hmm. with uh, it, its own yeah. completely unique design. So really, really something for everybody here. Make sure you plan that and get on over for your holidays. Yeah, and it's really long and winding holes that turn from left to right and right to left. So you really need to bring your whole game here. It's not enough to have big spike hyzers. That's so true. not going to bring you get you anything. We may get to see a fly over here of the course and see yeah. some stats. It's a little course preview kind of thing. Yeah. But that's true. It, it does really require all types of different sh uh, shot shapes. It does, yeah. And uh, even though it's a wooded course, you will definitely have some advantage if you have those extra meters on your drives because yeah. the holes are long and you want to get as close as possible before you uh, approach the basket. So. Yeah. And and the fairways are very fair. I mean, they 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 are. They, they there's there's some nice green grass in the in the fairways, even though it's wooded. You know, it is a very beautiful place. There is definitely some tight lines here and there, but uh, nothing unreasonable. This is the result from last year's competition where we saw that Heidi Line, who has been the the third uh, best player in Finland for such a long time, just behind Evelina uh, and Hannah, yeah. Evelina and Hannah, yeah. And it must have meant so much for her to get that. That's that a huge win. win. Yeah, yeah, look at that. She won by four strokes. And that's a lot. And very impressive. And, we, and we've been lucky to get to see Heidi uh, on uh, lots of our coverage this year so far. So Yeah, she has been on, I think, every single card on the FPL side we have. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, more I think or less. So. Yeah. And she's, she's a really fun player to watch. She has a great attitude. She's always smiling. She's happy. She's having fun out there. And that's 
Like that goes a long way. Yeah, she's showing a lot of emotions, uh, both when it, she's playing good and when she's not playing that good. But it's never that you need to like think that uh, she's doing something stupid or doing something that she shouldn't. She's always very professional and uh, crushing the course. Yeah, yeah, she throws so far. Yeah. Here we're seeing the MPO's finish from last year. Relay, the king of Kiposua. He took second in a tight race with Lauri Lettinen, who we're very happy to have back from a pretty extensive tour in the States where he did very well. Yeah, he just came back from, from the US tour and uh, he's definitely one of the favorites for this, uh, for this week and defending champion and... Uh, and look at that statistic. He played the first 39 holes bogey-free. <laughs> Can you even imagine that on this that, course? I think it's more or less impossible on this course, but he shows that uh, That's even the impossible things are possible. Yeah. Well, when you have that kind of skill and that kind of competitive energy and attitude, you know, anything is possible. He, he has the, the potential to do really, really amazing things in disc golf. You know, uh, maybe no limits, no limits on his ceiling of potential. No, and it, it will be, he has actually, has he finished his round already today? Uh, yeah, I think he was four down. Four down, that's a really good result. He, I think we're going to see similar results to, as we saw in Tali three weeks ago. It seems Smart like the leader boys. is now six under, and that was uh, s uh, somewhat similar to what we saw. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's kind of an exciting mm. uh, storyline there. Matthias. Vilota. Vilota, six down in the clubhouse. Holding on strong to that lead at the moment. We'll see if anybody can catch up to him. Uh, I think we're going to have some contenders for that lead. But yeah, still P Puder Jotsen on a tear. Five down through 12. So he's already challenging for that Pogi lead Pogifree also. Wow. Mm. Very impressive. Another stat that stood out from last year was Vile Ahokas started out every single round with a turkey. <laughs> three, three birdies in a row. Each round. That's which is not miraculous, <laughs> really, isn't it? <laughs> I don't see how, how that's even possible. Almost. No wonder they call him the king of Kipaso. I, I guess yeah. I get it now. I think he was originally from Hainola. Now he's residing in Turku. But he's certainly earned that nickname over the years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I understood another. correctly, there are quite a lot of Finnish players who have moved quite recently to Turku. And I think it has to do with that they have a little bit longer season. Maybe a few weeks longer spring, a few weeks longer. Uh, autumn before the snow comes so. yeah yeah they definitely get a little bit better weather there over there on the on the west coast the southwest coast of, of uh, finland maybe a little bit more of that jet stream a little bit less snow and a little bit more sun and then uh also seppo Payu is, is from there and uh he's a, he's a great great role model for all, a lot of these youngsters maybe they want to play play a lot with him and a l uh, just a bunch of great courses as well Re really have, good scene yeah. over there we're gonna see that on the European Pro Tour. We're gonna visit uh, Turku very later. Excited. Yeah, this very year. excited to check yeah. that out too. That's that's gonna be uh, later on in the fall, I believe. So here we see the player profiles for the players on our feature card today, and here is Seppo, just as we talk about him. And uh, yeah, he played so great in Tali. He was just a few strokes behind. Never really in the challenge, to, like in the in the competition for the win on the last round but he was very composed and he played showed his skill level and uh, yeah very solid uh, play i mean a couple of those 150 meter ace runs just blew my <laughs> mind really you know they were so close like and they will come in handy today on this course they will i think it's gonna suit him well like, oh yeah, yeah yeah his game definitely plays well in these type of woods and he can throw as far as most people and uh it'll be exciting to see how he plays that, that Turku event that I mentioned is 12th to the 14th of August, so Stay more towards the end of the summer, yeah. Then. Here is Rasmus Metsama, and I'm really excited to see him. I think these are photos from the from the Heatland Open that he just played last weekend. Yeah, currently rated 992. I think his latest performances have been quite a bit above that, so that might be a little bit under under his real real level of play at the current time. His club is the Disc Golf Factory from Lagri, Estonia. Eight career wins. And here is the, the tee pad on hole one, which is like, it's a beautiful tee, tee and <laughs> there's not, it, it's so unique to see a course with that much work put into it and maintenance. They are taking care of everything here. There's nothing left to, to um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very impressive. Mm. 
all the infrastructure, very top level. Quite an, can be a great inspiration for course designers across the world that they're able to to get that level of uh, support and um, financing to to build such a thing. You know, it, the future is looking really bright if, if this is the kind of thing that uh, that might catch on. Hopefully, it shows that even the small towns in Finland, like Heinola, is they can they all have great courses and. Uh, Yeah, it's such it a cute little town, isn't it? It's such a benefit for 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 a town, like in that that size, to have such a world class course. They can have events like this Prodigy Disc Pro Tour coming there. Yeah, it's great for the community, yeah. right? It brings a lot of people in. It uh, gets gets them their name on the map there, you know, in, in, the, in the disc golf world at at the very least. Yeah, that's what we say here in Finland. That if you're in Finland, you're never far away from a world class disc golf course. And that's so absolutely true. And if you don't know that for yourself firsthand, then You might want to think about doing it as soon as possible. <laughs> and this is definitely one of the absolute best ones, of if not even the best, I would yeah, say. Yeah, fantastic. A, a real wonderful disc golf complex. Disc golf park world. It's called that for a reason. It seems like the lead card is getting ready. It's, we still have about 10 minutes, and we're going to see some interviews before that. Yeah, it'll be great so. to hear what they have to say. Let's listen in. Morjesta, morjesta, Niklas Anttila, hallitseva Euroopan mestari. Tervetuloa Heinolan kippikselle. Kiitos, kiva olla täällä. Millaisella fiiliksellä olet saapunut Heinola? Ihan hyvillä, että on pari viikkoa tuossa lepoa alla ja nyt on mies freshinä, niin kiva lähteä kilpaille. Sehän kuulostaa oikein hyv- hyvältä, hyvältä pohjalta. Millaisella mietteellä sä oot lähdössä haastamaan tätä Kippiksen championship layouttia? Ihan hyvillä, asiakin missä kentällä vähän heittää ja heittää tuntuu ihan hyvältä, että hyvä mieli lähteä pelaamaan. Kuulostaa oikein hyvältä. Tämä kierros on melko pitkä, niin ootko varustautunut tähän jotenkin tietyllä tavalla? No mulla on vähän eväistä mukana, että nämä on aina aika pitkiä nämä kisakierrokset, että ei mitään ihmeempää, että ihan peruskierros. Loistavaa. Mitä sulla on kisaeväinen? Nyt taitaa olla kuiva lihaa ja pari patukkaa, että niillä pääsee eteenpäin. Ai että kuulostaa herkulliselta. Onko täällä radalla jotain tiettyjä väyliä tai useampia semmoisia, joita sä odotat tai pelkäät tai jotain vastaavaa, jotain nostoja? En pelkää mitään, mutta odotan tota väylää, taitaa olla kahdeksan siitä laakso yli sinne, missä nyt on vähän vettä, niin se on mukava par nelonen, niin se on kiva lähteä pelaamaan. Se on kyllä haastava par nelonen ja se on oikein, oikein kiva se pieni vesieste, mikä sen tällä hetkellä on tullut. Kyllä. Kiitoksia sulla haastattelusta Nik- Nik- Niklas Anttila ja oikein paljon tsemppiä kierrokselle. Kiitos paljon. Hello Rasmus Metsämaa and welcome to Heinola Kippis. Hello, nice to be here. Great to hear. What are your feeling feelings when you came came here to Henola? Uh, I feel great. Mm, really excited to be on uh, this uh, feature card. Uh, really thankful for the opportunity uh, to disc golf stream and uh, Prodigy brother. Great to hear. Uh, it's really uh, honor to honor that we have a foreigner player players here too. <laughs> uh, What 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 does you have for when you're going to challenge the Kipasua Championship layout? Uh, we played two rounds yesterday. It's uh, it's wooded. It's a really cool course, uh, really well maintained, uh, really cool greens, and I'm really excited to play it. Great to hear. Uh, the round is uh, quite long. Uh, have you prepared any way to this round? Uh, I didn't know it's gonna be a long round, <laughs> but uh, I will manage. Uh, hopefully the rain will uh, let us play, and I have my snacks and drinks, and so we can uh, do it. <laughs> Great. And last question: uh, Is there in the course is there some some holes that you are really expecting or e- expecting most or least? Um, the first one is uh, already a good one. The second one uh, with the island, uh, really beautiful. And uh, last holes, uh, anything can happen there. That's great. Thank you for the interview, interview Rasmus, and uh, I wish you a good throw to the round. Kiitos. Kiitos. Okay, very nice to hear from Rasmus there. Sound nice like to hear an excited. interview in English also. <laughs> yeah, we apologize yeah. To, to you guys. Uh, we, for the Prodigies Pro Tour, all Finns will be speaking Finn all year long. Hyvää päivää, Ville I think we have another interview in our ears. I'm not sure if it's going out to you, but it's a little bit distracting for us to hear that in our ears. So maybe if the... Yeah, just wait and see what happens here. Anyway, okay, yeah, I guess we'll wait. Come on.
few days ago. It Perus, looked like he's going to be in the top. Yeah, absolute top, at least in the top 10, for sure. Yeah, most definitely. He's a very talented player and a, a very fierce competitor. So I would expect him to, to perform really well today, as also, always. Yeah, also the highest rated player in Finland, now together with Lauri Lehtinen, who's also playing here. That's right, they're both 10.27 rated. Maybe maybe his might have dipped a little, but uh, very high ratings, very high quality players. Yeah, and you don't get that, that rating just by by accident. No, absolutely you, not. No. Absolutely not. And I think uh, he shot rounds in the in the 1070s uh, and stuff like that. We actually saw him almost do something historic right on the second round in Tali. If you haven't seen that, uh, go and watch it because that was one of the coolest starts of a round I've ever seen. He was nine yeah. down through 11. And if you ever yeah. played at Tali, I can just tell you that's something that you couldn't even dream of. No. You know, and so if he, if he were able to keep that pace, that might have been one of the best rounds in history. He did kind of trail off a little bit in that round, but still managed to stay bogey free also. Yeah, yeah. stay bogey free, which in Tali is extremely impressive. And we just learned that that was actually his highest rated round in his career. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he is definitely on the top of his level right now. He's showing that he... And that was coming coming back with yeah. jet lag from a you know a long trip to the states. That's true. So what can he do now after three weeks of? Uh, let's see. Let's see. It'll be very exciting. Practicing here in Finland. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be really exciting to see him. I'm pumped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're if you can't tell, we're very excited. I'm sure you are as well. Yeah, it has been three long weeks since Tali, and uh, yeah, we have just waited to get some quality finished disc golf, and finally it's time. And on a, such a great course, I'm yeah. Y yeah, you can excited. see the excitement. We <laughs> yes, are, we I'm are sure. Yeah. And we'll be getting teeing off in about three minutes. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss before we do that? I think we have talked about... Mo we, we, let's have a look at the leaderboard right now again. That's a good idea. To see if something has happened. Uh, we do have players shooting hot rounds. And uh, there are so many players who could actually contend for the victory here. So it's... Hard to keep track of everyone, but uh, we still have the Estonian Matthias Vilota in lead. Pur Jotsen just tied for the lead. He took That's his true. fourth birdie in a row. That is really impressive. Keeping bogey free and uh, four birdies in a row. That what a wicked pace he <laughs> yeah. is on. My goodness. We haven't seen him yet on our coverage. Mm. He's from Pietasari. I know he was he was having a, a really hot round in Tali as well, but then he kind of... Uh, faltered a little bit. I can't remember which round it was, but I remember seeing his name right up there on the on the top of the leaderboard. Now we get to hear Villa Aokas. Oh, oh, nice. Hyvää päivää Ville Aokas ja tervetuloa kisa ensimmäisen kisapäivään. Terve, terve, kiitos. Millaiset on fiilikset? Hyvät fiilikset. Ei tällä hetkellä sada ja sitä vähän tuossa perlattiin, että sataa tai ei. Niin mahtavaa. Jos voit niin ottaa pikkasen mikrofonia ylemmässä, että saadaan kun äänenlaatu. Niin. Hyvä, hyvä kuulla. Millaisella miettiällä sä oot lähes haastamaan tätä sun kotirataa, tsemppärirataa? No aika kivoin mielin. Lähden nauttii pelistä ja meillä on tosi mukava ryhmä siinä, niin eiköhän tästä tule ihan kiva päivä. Aivan mahtavaa. Tästä liitkeen, että tämä kierros on tosi pitkä. Mitä sä oot varustautunut siihen? Syönyt kaksi lounasta tänään, ottanut hyvät lämpöt ja vähän rapsutellut kissalta saamulla. Oho, Miri rapsutteli ja se kuulostaa hyvältä. Juu. Äh, onko, onko sillä radalla jokin väylä, mitä sä odotat eniten tai ehkä odotat vähiten? Eipä oikeastaan ole sellainen, niin kuin että... Ehkä etuysi on niin kuin, no en tiedä, ehkä takaisin on mukavampi. Ei mulla ole sellaista perus niin lempparivälää. No niin, tämä koko rata on lempari. Niin. No niin, kiitoksia sinulle Kippa Suomen kuningas ja tsemppiä rundille. Kiitos paljon. Kiitos. Kiitos. That was the king of Kippis, Ville Ahokas. Yeah, very nice to hear from him. And Kippis is... That is this. It's this course, uh, Kippasuo, and Kippis also means cheers in Finnish. So it's a play on words there. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice nickname. And you can check all that information out at kippis.org if you want to know a little bit more about this place and what's going on. Yeah, we're there, very close to tee off here. Yeah, Peter Jotsen now tied for the lead with Matthias Villotta. And Joni Peltonen also nice. having awesome. a great round. He's five, five down through 12. He's put down four birdies in a row as well. 
I wondered where he came from. I hadn't seen him on the leaderboard, and all of a sudden, right, he's right up there. That's what we mean. we say that there are so many good players here in Finland and in this field, so that you need to keep your eyes on the on the leaderboard all the time because suddenly there is a new one, new ni- <laughs> new name there and a new guy. Yeah, yeah. So it's such a deep field and so many talented players. And here we get to see the first uh, hole. Hole one. It's a par four, 167 meters or 548 feet. You want to get your first shot up here to that road or up by this uh, T, which is the M M layout first hole T. And then uh, you're going to go way up the hill. You can't quite see how much elevation here it is, but it is quite uphill on that second it's shot, isn't steep, it? Deep, yeah. And pretty well guarded green, but enough space to get it up there. So let's averaging just on par. Uh, it's definitely reachable for for. Uh, these guys uh, to, to 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 reach for a birdie, but it's it's a tricky, especially the second shot. I think it's very tricky to put yourself in a good position up there on the green. So it's not an easy hole, and it's perfect starting hole, really showing your all your skills. Yeah, it's yeah. a very cool tee off area. You know, plenty of space for the gallery to stand around. Um, right right by the tournament central, lots of different tents set up, and. Uh, yeah, just a very beautiful hole. You got to you got to hit that gap first things first, and with the nerves, that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. Definitely not. And if you just miss it, right side or left side, it's going to be a tricky second shot. And oh then yeah. Birdie yeah. is more or less out of the question if you're not doing something miraculously. But yeah, that's true. I mean, you really have to scramble if you get an early kick. It's not not what you want, but it's not the most difficult hole, as you said. It's averaging right at par. And the course itself averages at the moment 0.135 strokes above par. And the guy you see here is our tournament director, Mikko. <laughs> Not this guy, but he, he was just. Uh, yeah, they're getting ready. Yeah, Mikko's done a great job organizing the European Pro Tour, and he's also the tournament director for this. Keeps very busy and does a great job. We're very grateful for all his efforts. So thank you, Mikko, for all that you do. There we see Vile and Rasmus having a little relaxed. chat. Yeah, they seem like they're nice and calm and ready to go. Seems like we're just a, a tad bit late on our tea time, but... A few minutes, I think we can live with it. Oh yeah, nothing yeah. to worry about. We'll be getting right to the action soon. Yeah, but this, this guy, Rasmus, he won the... Estonian Winter Championship, and that's a that's a big win. There are so many good players in Estonia as well, just like in Finland. I think Estonia is actually the the, the country with most courses per per person or like per capita. Per capita, yeah. yeah. So uh, hey. they are just as crazy about this golf in Estonia as we are here in Finland. That's very cool. Yeah, getting a pretty good look at our lead card here. Looks like Seppo might be the first one to tee off. And it's nice to watch him spin that disc. <laughs> He's a very talented uh, Frisbee artist. He can do a lot of cool tricks. Stretching out a little bit. You can see in the background there that Putinola. It's like a, you can do a tic-tac-toe. Yeah, that's something them. I've never seen anywhere else. Uh, Pretty cool, yeah. Play tic-tac-toe on disc golf baskets. That we, d- we didn't do that now when we were up there, but that's right, next yeah. time we need to, to see who is the master of the <laughs> tic-tac-toe. <laughs> I think you would have quite a good chance to, to score well in that game. I would hope so. But lots of, lots of cool uh, warm-up area here, tons of baskets. You know, you got that... Uh, that beginner course there so you can warm up on that with your ace runs and and putters and practice your up shots and stuff like that and if you haven't seen um, <coughs> a map of this area uh, this w- where they are teeing off from now is more of an open field an area that we're going to see more of on the back nine there's a lot of holes that start on this uh, open area and place into the woods and vice versa that starts in the wooded area and plays out to this. So there are no really like really clear open holes, pure clean open holes, but they are all mixed up a bit. Yeah, the 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 last uh, few like say starting on 14, where you go out from the woods back into the open, and then f- then the yeah 14 through 18 
kind of play with a little bit more of that open space, but they still do utilize the wood line very well. And it's just fantastic course design, in my opinion. Another great thing with this course is because it's so elevated and uh, like even on rainy days or if it has been raining for a long time, it doesn't really get that wet because it's all on hills and the water... F yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of a sandy terrain. Like I said, it's, it's a lot of pine woods, but uh, a huge mix of different trees. So it is, It's yeah. a really, really neat forest, yeah. And a beautiful landscape for, for disc golf and for anything, really. Yeah, we were talking about that in some from some tea pads. It almost doesn't look like you're in Finland anymore. It more looks like something in Central Europe, like Germany or Czech Republic or something like that. With there's a lot of um, different trees. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice variety of trees and a lot of a lot of elevation, which is which is very unique. For but now, now it's time. The moment we've all been waiting for. We are ready to tee off with our feature card, and we have the legend himself, Seppo Paiu, sponsored by Prodigy. Throw on a nice hyzer flip straight through the gap. Stay off that tree. Yep. Oh, he's gone way up there. That's Look so at that. Far up. I, th I was a bit worried that he would get too far to the left, but no, that kept, kept, kept flipping, holding yeah. straight. Yeah. Super Perfect nice. hyzer flip shot. Beautifully done. He, he, that's a relatively easy up and down for Birdie from there. Let's see what Nicholas Antila can do. You can't do it much better than that. what Seppo just Yeah, that was did. fantastic. Putting some pressure here on the on the rest of the card. Yep, out to a great start from Seppu. Niklas sponsored by Discmania. Wonder what he's throwing here. FD maybe. Flips up nicely, drifting a little bit to the right, but it comes back and... Uh, not good too shot. Bad. Not too also bad at all. Far up, not really as far up as Seppo, but still. Still great position. Should be able to reach the basket without any bigger problems. Yeah. And here we get to see Rasmus, sponsored by Latitude 64, as well as a few others, looking like from the shirt. Uh oh. That's an That's early a shank, but he's pretty lucky that he doesn't hit anything. It gets so far up, even though quite miraculous to be in that position after that wide of a tee shot. Yeah. Yeah, and he's safe. He has good footing on that road as well. So yeah, he can still birdie from there. He can. He got really lucky though. It, it was definitely not his release point that he was looking <laughs> it for. Was it was very out, early. Release came out way yeah. early and just so bad it was good in the sense that it didn't hit any trees. And there must be a small little local line on that side. King of Kipasuo, Villa Ahokas. Yeah. Not gonna get catches that first tree, I believe. <laughs> it, I think it was a double hit. It hit yeah, he ping pong yeah. back back onto the fairway, so he, he can still be in pretty good position from there. But I think birdie's out of the question now for him. This is the big open area uh, of the course we were just talking about, and look there, how yeah, with the drone sky, yeah. very very pretty. Number five disc golf course in the world, rated four point six. New disc, not surprised. Uh, not if surprised. you haven't been here, if you're just like somewhat close to Heinola, go. Oh cool. yeah, and yeah, experience yeah. If this. You're on, yeah. If you're on a vacation in Finland, get here. This is one of the places you definitely want to check out, without a doubt. Interesting stats there. Udisk, thanks for all that, all that information. Yeah, without Udisk, we would have been quite lost <laughs> in the in the in a th tight field like this. So thank you, Udisk. And I think we're gonna very soon see Ville Ahokas throw his second shot. Might actually have missed it now. Because it was so, uh, yeah, he was so short that he might have got up there and uh, yeah. threw quickly. I think I might have seen his disc push up there on the right right side. I'm not sure if what I saw was right, but I think it might have been his disc. Yeah, he must. Yeah, yeah. So, so we missed relay shot, but uh, yeah, as you see, the gallery progressing up the fairway, heading towards the next one, which will probably be Rasmus. Yeah, that's that's going to be exciting to see how far on the left side he ended up and uh, if he has any kind of look. I think he will. Now he's looking for his disc there and I seems like he is surprised that it went that far because he started to look quite early. You can see him on the far right side there putting down his, his yep. bag. 
And you can see on that tree line there, it's kind of hard to imagine how he actually got that far, but he'd be happy with that result anyway. Nice to see a gallery already on the Friday. And the yeah, first day and already yeah. getting strong support from local viewers. And look, he, he can even see the, the flag there on the basket, so he's uh, not in a bad position at all. Not at all. He should buy himself a lottery ticket after this release. <laughs> yeah, very lucky to get through all those trees. Now he's like lining up a forehand. Yeah, and Anheuser forehand uh, should be able to, uh, trying hopefully trying to land flat up there on. Yeah, he's got a on the mid green. mid range or approach disc of some kind, and he's just put it right in the bullseye. Look at that, fantastic! It's gonna be a birdie. Great start for Rasmus. We have one bad shot and one good shot, and he's and a part luck. for yeah. a birdie. Yeah, there you go. That's all you need. There might have been some nerves there on the, on the. Oh yeah, there. most definitely with the live coverage and everything. Nicholas can also go for a forehand, and not that far behind Seppo's drive. Just you can see it there, just in front yeah. of him. Uh, Those are both really great drives. Yeah. That's the way you do it. That's how you start around it. Kippis. Yep. Looks like Nicholas is reaching for that tactic, that soft tactic that he's been using quite often. Looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. He's there. Real good. He's there. We're going to see at least two birdies. Yeah, he's tapping that in for bird. And I would be surprised if... Seppo isn't able to. He should be able get to get himself to a birdie also get on that, that yeah. on that birdie wagon. I think we might see Vile. I'm not sure where his second shot went. Okay, Seppo first. He's going backhand here. Very clean approach from Niklas there. Oh, he gets stay just off that. Gets yes. around and Ooh, almost, almost threw it in. in. <laughs> wow. Scooted off to about eight or nine meters there. As he will have a tester putt here on yeah, the. Yeah, a little bit of a tester for the first putt. You know, we'll see, see if he can connect there. It'll do great for his confidence if he can. But I, I'm sure he, he wanted that to be a little closer. Kind of juiced it a little bit, but. Then again, an eagle throw in wouldn't be too bad either, would it? Start your round off. Uh, that would have been something. Taking the lead on the first hole, and uh, Villa is also up there, I think, inside the circle, or just outside. No, he's no, well he's inside. He's yeah. right there, seven meters for his par. He's going to want to connect on that. We have a new uh, outright leader at the moment, Puro Jotzen, seven down through 14. Wow. Five okay. consecutive birdies on holes 10 through 14. <laughs> and Can you believe that? Yeah, and he has some great birdie chances there on oh. the last four as well, so... Looking wow. forward to see where that. Wow, he is on fire. Yeah. Those are, are not easy holes. Seven down through 14. That's he got both the par fives, got both those par fours, and then he even got hole 14, which is extremely long. It is, yeah. And difficult. Lots of OB on that one. So very impressive. Poo Ryotsen. Leone Pelton and still going strong. Five down through 12. Here's Seppo with his birdie putt. This is so important for him to start off with a birdie after that great tee shot. Would feel... Got all those cameras around oh there. Great. Clean putt. Beautifully done. And that's what we didn't see so much from him on the first round in Tali. He missed quite a lot of those like circles edge putting. Uh, that's right. That's yeah. a very good sign. Great to see. Off to a good start here. Well done, Seppo. Let's see if Vila can get his par after a really early kick on his drive. Oh, yeah. Right Beautiful. In the so a clean. No doubt about it. Clean scorecard here on the first hole from the from the group. No bogeys. Yeah, well done from the feature card. Because I would be surprised to see any misses from Rasmus and Niklas here. No, that's a tap in. And Niklas is less than a meter, less than a foot even. What a start. Great start. Hole two is such a beauty, isn't it? I love this hole. Yeah, uh, this is 
a scary hole for someone like me who is not that comfortable throwing putter straight but uh, these guys are and uh, have a look at this hole yeah Down this is here. a dream hole for me i, I yeah. really really enjoy this type of shot and then it's just so beautiful i mean look at it you got that artificial turf and all that rock work done a very special and unique hole yeah you want to clear that that little wall of stone rocks there because if you're if you just able to clear that then you will slide up towards the basket and have an easy putt but uh, otherwise you will have like 16 meters or something like that circle two circle yeah. two's edge if you slide up to those rocks there you can still birdie from that but you definitely want to get over those rocks and, and get it to slide up closer for a, for a little bit better putt the hole is averaging 2.82 at the moment so one of the one of the easier ones on the course relative to par anyway 30 percent of the field able to birdie it and only 12 percent taking bogey so not the most difficult hole but very aesthetically pleasing very very pretty and beautiful tons of work has gone into it i mean you see these like layered tiers uh mm. going down it's green. one of those holes that even if you get some early kick or hit, you should be able to scramble towards the towards the green and save the par it's not that dense sure there's a little bit yeah. more space on the on the rough on this one this one's brought to you by Koti Pizza. Make sure you get some of that good pizza if you're here in Finland. Translates to home pizza and it, it really tastes great. Seppo first up. Cool catch cam angle here. We get to see the disc coming in. It's so straight, That's so perfect. good. That's perfect. If it just has to, That uh, is yeah. fantastic. And it slides right up there to five meter putt. Five meter and uh, He's showing that he's going to keep that box. Yeah, that was great. He's not going to give that up. Such a clean tee shot right down the middle of the gap. No question about it. Yeah. It's perfect speed. Got it to land nice and flat and just slide right to pin high five meters. He's looking so confident so far and uh, really great to see. Surprised to see Niklas going forehand there. Okay. Interesting play. Yeah. Looks like that tactic, I believe. Yeah. So that's also an option. Looks pretty good. Yeah, is it too high? Oh, good. it got through. Yep. That's going to work just fine. Oh, that's an even better result. Wow. And look, it curls up towards the basket. So he's three meter wow. away, and uh, he will get his second birdie of the day after that shot. Most definitely. I thought it was too high, but it, it, it fought through those um, those branches, just kind of caught one leaf. But yeah, he, got, he was a bit lucky there. Yeah. Pretty good, though. That's... Off to the left side and uh, not what he was looking for. He, he's had two early releases on his tee shot so far. Hopefully Rasmus can calm those nerves and uh, at least scramble for his par here. Yeah, I think he, he's still in the middle of the fairway there, so he should be able to scramble for that par. See what Vila is doing here. He's going with the backhand putter shot. That looks beautiful. If it just hooks up. Has to no, right it did side. not. Yeah. But he got lucky with a kick and he's... Uh, Probably on Circle's Edge. He is, yeah. Pretty decent kick there, really. He can still make that. He, he might might well be inside the circle. Which yeah, is I, a, I little think bit it's off just on the right inside, side, yeah. Here. It went a bit to the left side and maybe a bit long, but... Yeah, he got, a, he got a really good kick off that birch tree. It was hard to see from that camera angle, really. Where it ended up, yeah. 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 And also, this is a hole that look that is much steeper when you're there. Oh, in absolutely! Person. Yeah, what yeah when you see like this gallery, here, it yeah. looks like they're just walking down a fairway. But in reality, that's straight down a, a very steep hill. Yeah, and such a nice view from up there, and such a great shot if you're able to to find that line, which I did not. Yeah, we see that Rasmus. He does not need to. Uh, navigate around any trees or anything so he should be able to s reach the basket from there quite yeah yeah, yeah he might just yeah. have a couple of these little limbs hanging down but that shouldn't shouldn't be too much of an issue no he's probably going to just power right under him yeah that's not it shouldn't no, be no, he's all clear from yeah. that no stress some type of very flat approach this might might be a harp i think it's a sinus actually even sinus okay yeah Beautifully done. Puts yeah. it right up on the pole. Tapping in for three. Yeah. Great scramble there. 
Uh, you can see here that on the on the right side it's such it's so open and uh, if you end up there you can scramble and get yourself on the green with no big problem. Huh? Is it sinus or sinus? Sinus. Sinus. Yeah. Yeah. Learn something new every day. I think so. Yeah. That, that's how I've heard it said yeah. anyway. I, I, I'm certainly not an expert on that, but this hole is so beautiful. This is the first hole you see when you drive onto the property, and, and it just puts you right in the mood for some fantastic disc golf. I always stop and, and look up look up the hill and uh, <laughs> just admire the work that they put in. If you're lucky, then you get to see someone throwing down there. Throwing yeah. down when you come with your car on this road towards the parking lot. Ville. Just a oh. little bit low on that one. So he's going to be taking a par. Seppo five meters out. Shouldn't be a problem for him, but could be a little bit of a nervy one. No problem. No nerves from Seppo. Great to see that. Nice commitment and puts it right in the middle. Two birdies. And Vile is getting pars. his second par. Another one with two birdies after this putt. Yeah, Niklas with the bullseye hit. Yeah, there you go. An easy birdie. That's two for two on those bullseyes. Great start. A great start. We have a lot of green on the scorecard so far after two holes. And uh, now we will see a different kind of shot. This is a very beautiful S-shaped fairway where you need to go from left to right and then fade up towards the basket. Or maybe with something straight that also works. But sure, if you got yeah. that power, you can throw the straight shot. Yeah. Most uh, most players have to flex a little something in order to, to get that shape and that distance. This one's brought to you by Rami Rent, and it's averaging uh, 2.83. So also one of the little bit more easier holes on the course. Yeah, relative one of relative to par. One of the easier holes. It's reachable for all these guys. Just under 100 meters, playing a bit uphill. So it's oh, it's quite a bit uphill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it can be a scary putt because it's up on a like a ridge. Yeah. Ridge. So if you miss that putt, you need to get a most probably get a great comeback putt if you want to save your par. Yeah, that's uh -huh. true. That's very true. It's a scary, scary putt on that one if you're mm. if you're not really close. I think that might have been one of the problems that Christian Quaxo had on his early round. Yeah, that might have had the higher scores a little bit. Yeah. Puro Yotsen eight down through sixteen, so he's got himself a bogey-free round, and he's birdied half of the holes on this championship layout in Hainola. Can we see some double digits today, do you think? Like, I don't think I that I they I don't have any rain now, so I who guess knows? it's possible. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect it on this course, but uh, these players are so talented, and if they get hot, anything's possible. Seppo first, keeping the box. Throwing a mid-range, I think, and yeah. did not get enough turn, but still safe Pretty decent on the kick fairway, anyway. yeah. Shouldn't have any trouble on that up and down. He's going to want to put it close, though, as you can see the basket placement there right on that hill, that ridge side. Yeah, it's very steep behind, so... Uh, One of those ones you want to get it as close as you can, and then you really want to focus in on that putt, because if you airball it or, or hit cage and roll down, you can be in all kinds of trouble. Uh, it's dangerous to be too aggressive on this one. Let's see what Niklas can do. Niklas puts himself. He's pin high, circle pin Z. Pin high, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not not too bad. And that's one of the safer angles to putt from, I guess, as well. Where you don't really yeah. have to deal with the ridge drop off too much. That's true. I didn't even think of that. But yeah, he does. He can just put straight towards the basket and not worry too yeah, much about the the steep slope behind there. And oh, again, yikes. three in a row, early releases. Yeah, I think he's. He's battling with some pretty heavy nerves due to this live coverage, maybe. It seems like it. Because that was a pretty bad shank, and it's it's pretty hard to hit those first trees on the left there. <laughs> yeah, they don't really come in play that often. No, no, that's just a 
Yeah, timing issue and it most likely in there. No. Oh, we like cut that overhanging kind of short branch on that pine tree and also scramble again. Yeah. So not the best play from our feature card on this hole. I would have expected a, a few more birdies at least, but um, it's going to be hard to to save a par, especially for Rasmus. For Rasmus yeah. yeah, he hit so early. I'm not even sure where that ended up. I think that's quite a place you, you don't down to definitely right don't side. practice that shot. No, you don't. And uh, yeah, will he have anything at all? Or just maybe need to get himself back up on the fairway. It's Almost this this one might be more punishing than the first two. He was able to scramble for his pars uh, due to some kind of lucky, lucky. I think result. he's reteeing. Really? Yeah, I think he's going back to the tee. He is. So this will be counted as his third shot. He's electing to throw from the same position again. You're always allowed to do that. Sure, but is there any OB on this one? Or what, was he just in such a bad position? Uh, that probably he, he got himself in the worst position that he needed to. Uh, he I don't know. Preferred. We didn't get to see where he landed, but he's back on the tee. So uh, that seems to be. Yeah, very interesting. It's not the start he's looking for. He's going to have to correct on that early. There release. is actually OB on the right side here. So okay, he so probably he kicked, kicked far, far to yeah. the right. And, and he's going to go ahead and retee because it's a better line and better footing than where he ended up. Smart play. Good decision and good to know for you players out there that you are always allowed to throw again from your previous lie with a one-stroke penalty if you're not happy with where you ended up. And that's yeah, that's an OB that doesn't come into play that often. So uh, Almost never, I would no. say. I didn't even know it was there. I played this course a few times, but so it's a go. smart decision, though, to to most read definitely, the yeah. Let's see if he can improve on that and get himself close. Hopefully, definitely a better early release, release again. Early. That's four in a row. Yeah, let's hope he can right the ship really quickly because he's definitely off to a pretty rough start. Yeah, so he's in this position after three, so he was looking at a. Probably a double bogey at least. At best. Yeah, at mm -hmm. best, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you can throw in from there, but I, uh, that would be a, a really ill advice it, with, it with this green. No, you cannot go aggressive on this basket because you have everything to lose by doing that. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. And so far, he just need to, like, if he just gets that he's one over par and he can, st he still have many holes to, to, to work with and if you can just get his nerves back in control then he's gonna go with the forehand approach here trying to put it close and hit that tree oh, oh man it i thought it would go around but no. no he's all over the place and it keeps on rolling backwards maybe it can roll down into the more open uh, that's actually good that might if be it okay stays there I mean, then then you can pitch up but, but that's for triple bogey then it's now a six at best yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is he next up again? No, Ville. This is Ville first, yeah. He has to reach out around that tree and also go with the forehand approach. Is it too hot? Is it coming in too fast? It is. Sure is. It didn't go that down Not that too bad. Part, no? Not too bad. He's only about seven meters, so he should be able to connect from there. But mm. if he were to airball that, that's bad news. So he kind of juiced that one a little bit, I would say. But I think he kind of got away with it. He should be fine from there. I didn't get as that bad. And this is also coming in fast. But no, that's good, no yeah. that was good. I th thought it would be. Yeah, he had the height just right. So yeah, the, that's true. Yeah. The, the ground is pretty pretty catchy on this mm -hmm. one. It's Even though it's wet, it's it's still kind of uh, provides a lot of friction for a disc. Except we're probably not going to be aggressive here. Uh, kind it? of a half bid or oh something, yeah? yeah. Smart play anyway. Easy three. Mm. Nice nice kind of floaty half bid though, yeah, like you said. It kind of had the height, but maybe it was just a layup anyway. Yeah, he gave himself the chance to at least, with a bit of luck, get in the basket, but now I don't think he was really going for it. We have to mention Jona Heinonen off to a fire start. Five down through nine. So he's on pace for that yeah, double-digit so mark that you talked about. Yeah. yeah, so exciting. And one play we haven't even mentioned is Jonas Alto. And he's also like five down, 
for the round, yeah. For the round. Yep, in the clubhouse. We know what he's capable of. There Very are so solid. many. Yoni Pelton and the five down through 14. Oh. Lots of exciting players to keep track of here. Niklas, one of them. Yep, let's see if he can keep this hot start going. Absolutely. Ah, That's a tricky. Three in a row. Three, four, three. Great job, Niklas. That's a good really. place to, to, to end up there on the up there on the sure. ridge, yeah? Sure, yep. And he makes that look so easy, doesn't he? That that putting stroke yeah. is just it's so tight and compact. He led with his comebacker, great putt for par. Nicely done. That's a scary one. Much scarier than it looks like from that angle, but I like his putt though. He's got a got a nice mm. spin putt. It's very deliberate. You can tell he's really focused in on a on a precise point and he hits it more often than not. Rasmus, six. Yeah, yeah, rough hole for him. Let's hope he can bounce right back. Yeah, you don't want to be too over par here after three of the easier holes on the course. Huh? Yeah, yeah, he's at the moment kind of shooting himself out of the contention for the win. But if he's able to battle back, there's so much golf left to play. You know, all he's got to do is get hot and try to battle back, try to get himself under par for the day. Yeah, while the players are moving to the fourth hole, we get to some tee off here on the first hole, but soon we will be back on the fourth hole on with our feature card. It's nice they set up that uh, tent prodigy, keep everybody dry. Yeah, on a day like this, it's worth a lot to have somewhere to hide from the rain. Yeah. And look at that, Niklas Antila. Starting to look like the second round in Tali. Yeah, he's definitely one of the favorites, and he's off to a hot start, like you might expect. Very great to see. Here's hole four. Hole four, yeah, this one's a tricky one. I guess it's a par three. There was some confu confusion about whether it was going to be a par four or a par three. Definitely one of the most difficult par threes you'll ever see. Yeah, this, this is more or less unreachable. I think there was two, no, three birdies or something for the hole on the whole three rounds last year, so. Kind of one of those in-betweener holes where you, it's kind of like a part three and a half or something. Yeah. It's, it's really hard to call it either one, you know? But it's still a great hole and it, the par is relative, so none of that really matters in the end. Everyone no, you count score, you don't count. for everybody, yeah. yeah. You don't count birdies, you count score, and. Uh, this one's averaging 3.65, so that kind of tells you exactly what I'm saying. It's right in between a part three and a part four. It's 436 feet, you know, uh, provides a lot of difficulty because it's, it's quite a tight gap hit here and then you got to move from left to right with with an insane amount of distance at the end of your flight which is something most players just can't even do now the thing is that if you want to go with a forehand it's very hard to reach the basket because your disc will pro most probably die off before yeah i don't think you can actually park this hole i think the no. birdies that you we saw in the past ha have probably come with big putts yeah, or maybe a really lucky tree kick or something. Roll like or something. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just not shaped the way that it can be at attacked for a park job, in my it opinion. That's that's so true. Even and even with this class of players. Yeah, it's not still a great hole, 133 meters. Yeah, with a, a crazy left to right, after some really intense trees. Niklas that's a great shape right there, though. Trying. See how get this works out. Far and skips. See, like that. That's about the perfect shape, and he's still like 30. Whoa, he's getting but a look roll. At Hold this, on. Look at this. Don't okay. speak too soon. I but guess no. I did speak too soon, but <laughs> still, he's still way off from the basket there. Yeah, he's not even... That was basically an ideal shot, and yeah. he's still 25 or 30 meters short. It's just that type of hole. I can't really get it. Well, a forehand roller. Forehand roller might... Oh, no, no, no. no. It's cool. a risky shot, but... Yeah, uh, cool idea. That might be one of the only ways to actually reach it, you know. Yeah, if you want to get that birdie. roller down there and just get it to move left to right in the end, which... Uh, not an easy shot. <laughs> very, very techy. 
And now we get to Very see cool that he tried it, but it didn't really work out too good in this case. This must be a placement shot. Yeah, he's just yeah. playing this for three. He's just trying to hit this gap with a nice clean putter. That's beautiful. This is how I would recommend it to be played by most guys, unless you got that bomber forehand. I wish I would have listened to you when I played this hole. <laughs> you were trying to turn the corner. It's very tempting to go with a with a forehand and try to get yourself down there, but it's it it's doesn't not really give you much advantage. No. in the sense that your upshot is going to be very similar whether yeah. you whether you play the safe play or whether you try to get yourself an extra 10, 20 meters, you still have a similar downhill. Rasmus is showing that his forehand is working well, though. It, that's great, though. He's matching Niklas almost with that shot. Yep. Should be pretty easy up and down from there if he can get his speed control right and come in soft on that green. Yeah. It's kind of a scary up because it really drops off kind of a lot. It's, it's very steep downhill, so um, you need to have some touch on this up shot, but I think, I'm think i sure these guys... Yeah, there we see only three birdies during last year's competition, and birdies were holed out from 18, 50, and 61 <laughs> meters. <laughs> That's so crazy. nobody even put it in anywhere near circle one. I think... If that I don't tells you all you need to know, right yeah, there, doesn't if, it? If I don't remember wrong, I think actually Niklas got one of those, but I might, oh, I'm I sure. might be wrong. But he's uh, that sounds about right. Yeah. But look at the way it's averaging, or the way it averaged last year: 3.71, mm. 3.65, and 3.66. This is like the definition of a tweener hole. Yeah, it said when we came there and we, we were watching the the sign, it said par four, and I th now we we got to see that it's a par three. So. Um, I would almost prefer but it to be called a par four. Like I if if this world, these world class players can't put it into into circle one or two with with any consistency, then no, I really just don't see the point in calling it a par three. No. Not to be critical, it's a great hole regardless. And as we said, par is is all relative. But yeah, in the end, it doesn't really matter if it's par three or par four. Because no, it doesn't. But that's not. It's just rare yeah. that you see a par three that nobody can get anywhere near circle one on. Got this shot from Seppo. Will he get himself all the way down? He will. Wow. <laughs> That's oh a yeah. highlight shot from Seppo. That was cool. Wow. What an awesome angle and speed control. Yeah, th especially the speed control. Like it, We know that he can ma find those angles, but like to, to be able to land so softly there in on the that circle. Out yeah. green, I mean, that was, that was incredible. That's a highlight shot. Great shot from Seppo. Hope he can hit that, that putt. And here you get some kind of sense of how steep it is towards the basket. So it's very hard to come in soft here. And yeah, did pretty well. Yeah, nine meters. Uphill putt is what you want to have here. But it's not that steep once you get down to the green. So it's okay. Wherever in the circle you land, you are happy with it. That's right. Here's Rasmus. I must feel good for him to finally get a good tee shot. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully that can uh, help him with his confidence and, and with settle those nerves a little. That's a uh, fading out quite a lot, but it Fading curls right back up perfectly. Yeah, nicely comes done. Back, yeah. He'll have five meters for his par. Pretty good up shot there. Have a jump putt approach. Decent ground play. Yeah, that almost feels like a like a bounce back birdie even though this isn't actually a birdie but to to to, to stay well, on par on this hole three, feels three like a birdie a yeah a wonderful score on this hole whatever the par is niklas he's just trying to put this close yeah and he does not going for it and can't do it any better than that no nope. <laughs> and now i mean you could say it's not a perfect start because he didn't get a birdie here, but in my opinion, it's still a perfect start. There's not really any chance to get anything better than a three here without some miraculous throw in or something like that. So Since he wasn't going for the birdie, I think we can call it a perfect start because there he has go. followed his game plan Indeed. perfectly so far. So yeah. yeah, and it's that type of hole that yeah. we, we may not see any birdies. We might have been lucky last year to see the three that we did. Seppo from... Oh, but wait, there has been a birdie today. There already. has been a birdie. Yeah. That we would need to mention who that is. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just give us a second that while we watch. That is a huge shout out. Out here from just inside the circles. No, just high, just high. Mm, bummer. Oh, my goodness. Somebody did put it in circle one. <laughs> That's what? How? I don't even understand how. Arne Aveneinen. Remember that name. Well done, sir. Seppo Bayo. 
Great job. His putt looks so good today. Wonderful to see that. It's great start from him. Yeah, two birdie, down, two birdie, four. par, par, and this par being almost a birdie. So, and the putt looks so perfect. Yeah, he really he's great to see him in in that form on the green. That's a confident birdie. Uh, that confident putt. Sorry. Putt, yeah. yeah, it's a great three. We'll just call it that. Yeah. <laughs> Vile gonna take the four, unfortunately. Uh, just a bit high there on his first putt, but okay. I'm He's just I'm just trying to get my mind around how Arne has done that. I'm sorry to be distracted from those great great putts and everything, but let's just say it. That he he got himself into circle one and he hit a nine meter putt for birdie on that hole. This is hole five, par three, sponsored by NBDG Natural Born Disc Golf for. Uh, tight wooded fairway that turns to the left what yeah. do you want to throw here well there's an early mando on the left uh i kind of like the backhand it's almost like a flex shot or like a flat to 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 hyzering out yeah type of a type a of a dri driver, like a driver for yeah. me I, I had to throw a fast driver but i actually did get it up in the circle with my north northern launcher which is a denmark uh, a danish disc that i was gifted um during my trip there and I also got into the circle, but I don't know how. <laughs> I was able to find my way in some between some tight trees on the left side, but yeah. But this is a very beautiful hole, and it is yeah. a very technical hole. Very, very. Uh, I guess I wouldn't call it a bonus birdie. These guys are probably going to be, most of them, trying to get it, but uh, it's not an easy birdie at least. No, no, not at all. Not at all. A very, very pretty hole. You got those wood chips on the green. You can kind of see it from the tee. Here we get a good look at it. A lot of trees there, but it's a it's a fair, clear, uh, clean uh, fairway. Like the line is, uh, there's basically just one thing you can do, and that's to throw that kind of flex shot. And I think this is a mutant he's throwing, so very overstable. Okay, okay yeah, that, that makes yeah, sense. Uh, overstable mid range. Mid, mid, yeah. yeah, I guess that makes sense with with his power. Yeah, it, it is definitely a flex shot. Really, I mean, there's kind of an the main gap is a little bit more on the right side. There is kind of a sneaky uh, gap on the left uh, not really on the left side but uh, on the left from the main gap look at this that's too much though that's too much too much angle even on such an overstable disc he yeah he tugged that a little bit too much maybe uh let's see that's I guess similar yeah looking he's taking a mid-range uh, yeah. too like a very overstable mid I guess that's the pro play for these big guns anyway but yeah, it's definitely a righty backhand flex shot, I guess. He gets around that. That, that looks, looks perfect, perfect to me. And it's great, yeah. Yeah. It's right about where I ended up. He's he's about eight meters. Clean look at the basket. Rasmus taking a now nice looking disc. Nice yeah. flat top mid. Maybe a justice? Could be. He's done the same problem that... Uh, but he gets around, Bright. Oh, he snuck through those two trees. Yeah. So pretty decent result. He might be on circle two's edge. I yeah. think even closer. I think it's just outside circle one. Okay. But we'll ha have to wait and see. And Villa, after his birdie... You know, bogey would like to bounce back here. Can he? Going a bit wider. At least trying to, but he hit something and... Uh, Will be a long putt from him, but still a look. Puder Jotsen has birdied hole 17. He has. So he's nine down through 17. Yeah, then it's just one hole away from those uh, double digits that I was talking about. And 18 is totally birdieable. I think we're going to yeah. get to see him on our lead card tomorrow. I would be surprised if we have four guys I beating that result. I can't imagine yeah. that we would. That's a very, very impressive. And it's like oh, on the back nine, he's eight for. Eight for or seven for eight on the back nine. <laughs> That's wild. That back nine is even harder than the front nine, in my opinion. Yeah, it seems like he has booked a ticket for the lead card tomorrow. Oh, I'm excited to yeah. see this guy. Nine. It'll down. be a new new face for me. I haven't have not met him or seen him play. From Yetarsari. Yeah, definitely a talented player to score that well on this course. Well impressed. Niklas ended up shortest with that early tree kick, but and this will be quite a tricky shot to reach the green. Is he taking that same disc? Yeah, same same disc again. Yeah, that very extremely overstable mid-range from Disc Mania. 
the cyber disc they were calling the, the cyber, cyber truck, truck disc. <laughs> yeah it's got some uh, interesting angles on the on the rim i think he made that yeah bit unlucky with that kick but still in the circle Tester and he has putt, been putting for him, well yeah. for him those are you know more often than not cash money so See who's up next. So Seppo now has a chance to tie with Niklas on this card. First up, Ville Ahokas. Now this is a long one, but he does have a pretty impressive range with that spin putt, so he might be giving this a chance. No, no, I don't. I guess not. Pretty close though. Yeah, he didn't really dare to go for that, I think. Or was it just a misrelease, maybe? But well, he was pretty far yeah. out. I think he was happy with the three. I mean, it's such a low percentage shot mm -hmm. to really be able to connect from that distance, but his spin putt is very impressive. Let's see if Ras barely a look slightly obstructed. Yeah, I think he's closer to circle two. Two's edge, then yeah, you were probably right there. Yeah, he's gonna have five meters for his par. So let's see if uh, we can have one birdie. But this hole is also averaging just around par, which is bit surprising that we must have seen quite a lot of bogus here and you'd think you would yeah. yeah it's kind of like a lot of trees on this one right uh, there is like it's a you very can distinct be unlocked. line isn't mm -hmm. it yeah but yeah 94 meters or 308 feet so important putt here for Niklas not particularly long hole anyway but the shape is it's pretty tricky and there's just trees everywhere Great yeah. putt. That is so clean. That's important to get those around circle's edge. That's where you win the tournaments. And uh, it has been looking good for Niklas so far today. Yep. Great job there. And Seppo about seven, eight meters for the birdie. This putt's been looking so good so far. Let's hope he can connect on this. This is kind of one of the things we noticed. Uh, well, I'll wait for a minute. Something is disturbing him. Somebody's taking pictures. Yeah, uh, he's uh, hearing the um, shutter <laughs> shutter from somebody's um, professional camera. Or he just had to ask them to to please not do that. And it yeah, seemed to have affected his stroke. Unfortunately, that definitely that was a completely different kind of putt than yeah. what we have seen from him so far. He got distracted. Yeah, and and like I, I was gonna try to say before he putted that we we saw when last weekend in Tali that when the putts were for birdie. Sometimes there seemed to be a little bit more pressure that he had mm. put on himself. Yeah. And, and his stroke didn't look quite the same as, as some of those par putts looked, looked a lot more uh, relaxed and clean. Today, those birdie putts were looking great. And unfortunately, he was distracted by somebody's camera shutter. That it's a mental game. You need to be in, your in the zone. And if yeah, and, yeah, and people need to know. If yeah. you're out there taking, taking pictures, do not ever take a picture uh, while someone is, is making their putt. Wait till after they released it to to take a uh, yeah. a picture. And if you're in the gallery, please be quiet. Yeah, it's and so don't move around. This is really important stuff. I know it sounds silly to some people who don't understand what what kind of uh, mental composure it takes to make a putt under pressure. But very important lessons for for all disc golf viewers and fans. Mm. 
Legendaarinen ylämummo. Se on voittajan valinta. Kotipizzasta. Back with you. Thanks to all the sponsors for making this possible. Hole six is a par four, playing as the second hardest on the course at 4.54 average. 217 meters, a lot of that's uphill in the end, 712 feet, 12% of the field able to get the birdie here. And it's another hole where you need to hit the line and more than just one time, it's like two, three throws that you need to have perfect to be able to reach the basket and as you can see it's very uphill here in the end. So. Yeah and it's tucked back behind this, these trees and that structure that they built. This one's brought to you by Zuka, very, very pretty green but very difficult. Uh, hole. Not surprised to see it's it's second hardest. No, well, I experienced that as well, playing here <laughs> two days yeah. ago. Yeah, this one will beat you up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there seems to be a little bit of backup. They are still playing on the hole. Yeah, it looks but like the further, But it's a par four, so then there. we might see some drives before they finish up. Yeah. yeah, these guys are probably trying to bite off quite a bit, so they might have to let them let them move on before they can even even try. You know. That's true. That we have some power throwers. Ten down. We got those double digits. <laughs> hey, I don't even believe that. His back nine. Eight down through the back nine. Eight down. Yeah, like two down was already a good score, and then like coming in from the back nine, and like no, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> That's mind blowing. <laughs> he must have been in just such a groove. Yeah, we're gonna see him tomorrow. Most, Most definitely. Oh, without yeah. a doubt. I, I would be surprised if he's not the leader after this round, but he was 93% on his circle one putts, and he also made 20% of his circle two putts, so he was just throwing the disc incredibly. 80% fairway hits, 78% in circle two in regulation. That's going to be a high-rated rate, high rated round. Oh, my. Yeah, that's that's way up there. Jona Heinen and also five down through ten, so he has a chance to get himself a really good score as well. But still, 10 down, that's going to be... 10 down's magnificent. I wonder what the course record oh, here and is. Oh, yeah. another Tero Yatinen. He's in the clubhouse at a 7 down. Also finished really strong. Finishing with the turkey to get, get to 7 down. N not familiar with him either. Yeah, so many From good Yon's players. Field. Yeah. From the Eastern Karelia region. Great, great shooting from him. 7 down. That might be enough to get on the lead card as well. I think so. I think so that uh, we we might see some some guys here from the lead card and uh, feature card and some some later cards going down to those numbers, but still seven down is a great a great score. score. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jonah Heinonen doing great, five down through ten. He's on pace to get himself on that lead card too. Niklas three down through five. That's a great start. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's battling for position in that. Uh, on that lead card too, most definitely. Aiming for the victory here, I'm sure. After coming up just short in Tali a few weeks ago, you know, for the first stop on this oh yeah. Disc Pro Tour. Fierce competitor. In this group too, we have Joa Saari, we have Kasperi Pakarin, and we have Mika Tonti and Onni Ruusunen. No players that I'm that familiar with. Yeah, me either. like they're slowly making their way up the hill and I'm sure we'll be able to tee off within a matter of moments. Yeah, they are just here before the before the, the basket area. But that is protected by by a fence, so you need to really go around it on the on the right side, which is a very tricky shot. This is a, a very challenging hole. 
there's kind of a lot of things in the way. Even those wires can come into play. Like yeah, those cables up there. Not yeah. It's easy to... <laughs> they are so small, and, and but you know that those small things blocking the fairway, those are the things that you're, for some reason, hit quite often. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't usually think you're going to hit them, yeah. but uh certainly happens. It's something you don't often account for. You think, oh, it's so small, I, d I doubt that I would... But it certainly does get you now and then. Yeah, time to get that snack to keep your energy up. That's what, uh, what Rasmus was talking about, that it's a long course. So uh, keep yourself hydrated, even though it's not such a hot day. Get yourself some energy, eat some snacks, and uh, rest your legs when you can. Yeah, it can be a bit bit tricky with these uh, later later tea times to get your n nutrition right. You know, you don't want to eat too much before the round, so you feel too heavy. But y you definitely need need the energy. So, yeah, I think snacking's the way to go. We do have some ladies out on the course now. Also, we have Heidi Line playing par at the first hole and also Silva Saarinen so that's going to be a interesting leaderboard to keep our eyes on as well but yeah, now let's see Niklas what he's doing and we're, we're just 20 minutes out from our our FPO feature card teeing off so we will be checking in with them that's like periodically that's a hot card it's so many oh good yeah. players and a uh, lot of talent there so very exciting can't wait to see them here's Niklas Taking a driver, putting a good move on that. It, it's Keep moving it. a little bit off to the right side, though. I'm a bit worried unless it comes back. Oh, it oh that's totally fine. Back. Yeah, totally fine. Not prime position, but he still has a shot there. Yeah, he's a, he a great shot, and even though it came out, out down there to the right side, it didn't hit anything. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he got good distance. Great distance, and uh, Seppo can he do something different? Uh, so similar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Love his form. Check this out. Just smashing that looks on it. Straight. That looks perfect. Straight down the middle of the gap. Finishing up nicely. Well, it rolled up to the left side a little oh bit. Oh, it went far up there on the left side. So that yeah, might be a tricky that shot. That might not yeah. be to his advantage. That that little skip and roll at the end of that shot might have put him in a little bit tight of a spot. Yeah, he probably needs to position himself now with the next shot and play yeah, for yeah. par rather. Maybe. Than, yeah. Maybe there might not be a, a clean line up to the pin from there. But we'll see. We'll see. You definitely got good distance on it. Yeah, similar to, to, hole, to hole four, this is like this kind of tweener hole where it could just as well be a par five. Almost, yeah, yeah. exactly. Averaging 4.54, indeed. Rasmus missed another tee shot. Definitely like, a, like an am par five in yeah. a way that you, you feel really great about a par if you don't throw, you know, 150 meters. Because it is quite uphill on the second shot. And a very demanding shape with all kinds of trees. There you see one of them kicking. Oh, it flipped up so it. nicely, but then it ca continued to turn a little bit too much. And now he's in a really bad position there. He's a lot of things to go around, stay on the fairway. Yeah, he's going to have to switch into scramble mode and uh, work pretty hard to even get his par from there. Still kind of in shock to see Poodor Yeltsin's scorecard there. Just bogey free, ten down, coming out hot up in the gates, you know. Uh, that's that's super impressive. And uh, can he do a similar thing tomorrow? Do you think? If oh, he if he can mm. do that on on live coverage, it's gonna do wonders for his career. He'll be a household name in no time. He's ten. Uh, 1,012 rated player, so he is oh, very skilled. Yeah, yeah, he definitely. Only played one tournament this year so far, and that was in Tali. Okay, and he did he pretty well there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember him. 13th place, and that's a respectable. Oh, definitely. Finish, yeah. yeah, very good, very good result. And he's he's shown he's capable of really getting on some hot streaks. I know he had one going in Tali. It was on the yeah, uh, he did right on yeah. more of the front nine or or so, but today just kept it clean all the way. Villa finds some kind of line in between everything, and where does he end up? 
didn't look great. But he didn't look that disappointed, though. So no, maybe it was no? good. Maybe it was good. Hard to tell where it finished, but... Yona Heinonen just eagled hole 11. He did! <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And he's bogey-free, seven down through 11. You need to have a huge distance to, to be able to eagle that hole. And he got it yeah. from outside from the circle two putt. 12 meter putt so wow great job great job yona and he's having an incredible round he's he's going to be challenging for that lead yeah he's up there like he has oh, yeah. still a lot of lot of like he's even on a better pace really i mean at this point so many birdieable holes to go here also with for him but let's have a look at rasmus oh late Did he hit the fence oh, it was or the fence? no yeah. Uh, yeah true it was the fence pretty good result though it curled up He's going to be putting from circle two. The green's kind of perched up here on, on this hill. Without that fence, this hole would be playing completely different. And you could really go for that side, but now you need to go around. Yeah, it makes yeah. it so it's much more no, difficult. No yeah. choice. Yeah. And, and there's huge roll away potential here if you if you kick a tree or, or cut roll or something. It, this hill goes all the way down. It's it's really not some place you want to get a roll away on. See what kind of distance he got. So okay. far, yeah, yeah, he's way up there, but still pretty look tight line. Yeah, and he needs to put so much angle on that disc to get it all the way up yeah. the hill. Yeah, and if he lands with that much angle, then it can roll. Then it can definitely roll. And we're getting a little bit of rain now. You can see he's he's got his umbrella over his bag. He's reaching for an S line DD three. High speed driver. Needs to keep those discs as dry as possible. Yeah, he's got his whale sack. And he's trying to hunch over his disc to keep the raindrops from falling on his grip points. He's trying to get a get a good hold and just having a bit of a hard time. And yeah, he's taking his time. Uh it's a very difficult shot. It's quite difficult conditions now that the rain has started. L let's see if he can pull this off. Oh, well, I think he made so it. Oh, good. I think he made yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, just a bit early, and he. Uh, look a at this. A little early, and there you see the roll, but it curled up, luckily. Yeah, luckily it rolled backwards yeah. and not downwards. You don't want to see no. that going down. That can, that can do uh, some really bad things for your scorecard. Still, par here is uh, half a stroke better than the what what is averaged so yeah par you're, you're gaining strokes if you're through. saving a par here or i i, I don't want to even want to say saving par if you're getting a getting par, par yeah. yeah a par is a great score on this one i think you'll have a pretty easy up and down from there relatively anyway but those trees are, are quite quite good guardians it is yeah do you want to come down like long on the right side to be able to approach and this is probably is that Seppo's disc that might have been Seppo's second yeah. shot yeah just trying to put himself in in position for an easy par which would be a very smart play i'd say and now you didn't get to see it here we have some technical issues but villa ahokas just played his shot his third shot and hit a tree and it rolled down far so he's really in yeah, a bad position. He's struggling. Yeah. He's struggling. Yeah, you now one. you get to see it. Sorry, I spoiled it for you. We have some some technical issues with delays and stuff, but yeah, look. Yeah, there you can see it hit and cut roll, and that's exactly what I was talking ah. about. That hill is just a beast. Yeah, sorry for spoiling that for you, but uh, oh, that's not your fault. No, nah. we're just trying to do your best to keep everybody in tune with what's going on. As as you can see, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties with our camera crew. Uh, the rain has started, so that might be a, a big factor in all that, but. We're going to be hoping to bring all cameras up online as soon as possible and continue to bring you the quality coverage that you're used to here at Disc Golf Stream. That rolled down quite long, but I still think that he's able to, to get up towards the basket from there. It's not that wooded on that right side. so Yeah, it's very quite uphill. a clean shot. Yeah, yeah, at least he has a uh, pretty open approach from down there. But it's going to be a pretty long shot because that uphill, that hill is quite steep. Yeah, everything looks so much flatter on camera than what it actually is when you're there playing. Indeed. And especially if you're there playing in the rain, then everything feels even steeper and even sli more slippery and uh, 
it's not fun to play in these kind of wet conditions. Yeah, very challenging. Oh, he rolled way down. Yeah, though. he's down there on the road even. Maybe even yeah. past the road. My goodness. There's a clear line there though, at least. He's, he's, he's able to get it up there. Beautiful shot. Ah, that's great. Uh, that's great. Down there. Yeah. Happy yeah. to see that he repaired that. Yeah, great recovery shot there. I believe it's still for his bogey, but uh, he's, he's going to be really happy to get it up there close and not have to have any stress on that one. This should be the he's third shot from Seppo. Seppo, yeah, he's just pitching up. Playing smart after that slight miss on the... Yeah, par, par's good. I wonder who's up next here. Is it going to be... Um, I think it's Rasmus. No, it's Niklas. Oh, there's Niklas, yeah. yeah. After getting that so kind of rolling back one. And that's not a nice tree kick. And oh my, no, I don't believe that actually <laughs> rolled away. It does. It keeps on rolling and... Uh, Luckily, not as far as Ville, but still. Yeah, but there you see it, this hill. This hill will cause you grief. And after such a great tee shot, even Niklas is struggling to get the par on this hole. Yeah, I think he might have to settle for the bogue. I mean, Look we'll, see, we'll see what he can do. Look at it, it's raining more than we can see on the main camera. Yeah, the rain's definitely picked up. And I think it's affecting some of the play that we're seeing. Certainly I would be surprised to, if it wouldn't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The grip, grip is always an issue. Wet plastic is uh, not not quite as good as dry. He just pitches that up. He's gonna have to take a bogey. Or is it his par? Not sure. It's a bogey. Hmm. So yeah, there there you can get a good look at the rain. I mean, it's coming down quite hard actually. Rasmus here, circle two's edge. I think he's giving us a run. Yes, he certainly was. Ooh, that's a scary, yeah, <laughs> scary thing settled. when you hit metal like that, and uh, it's so easy for that this to start to roll down, but it stayed. Yeah, happy to see that one check up. I'm impressed with Seppo here that he's able to save a par from that position he was in. Mm, good job. Good job, Seppo. Keeping that clean sheet. No bogus from him so far. Nope. nope. And when it starts to rain like this, it might be that you need to change your game plan a bit and maybe not go for those uh, play a risky shots. And and place yeah. That could be a good point, yeah. So that is what we might see if it continues to rain at least, but uh, who knows what will happen. Yeah, you're right, Niklas got himself a bogey. I miscounted that. I thought it was a par. No, it's definitely a bogey. So he, he's not able to keep that clean sheet, but still off to a pretty hot start. Two down through six is nothing to scoff at at all. So bogey for Niklas, bogey for Ville, par for Seppo and Rasmus. Check out this one. This is beautiful. So beautiful. This is an example of the work they put in here. You got this beautiful path going down the fairway. Trees all around, but a very clear and clean line. One of the easier holes on the course. Yeah. Averaging just under par. Yeah. Yeah, third easiest. There you see the basket. 96 meters, 315 feet. 30% of the field able to birdie this one. No OB. There's nothing strange about that shot. It's basically a straight, straight mid-range or putter shot with a bit of a finish, and you should be down there by the, by the basket. Yeah, yeah. Basically, any, any flat kind of uh, backhand, glidey disc. Yeah. yeah, with a disc you can trust to fade a little bit in the yeah. end, and you should be fine. I mean, lefties maybe have to do a little bit more work. Forehand specialists might have a little bit hard time with it. Might be, yeah. But um, for us, the, the mi majority majority of the players, they it should be a stock shot. But and that's also what we can see in the scorecards so far today. Yeah. But with the, in the rain, nothing is easy. 
That's perfect. This is great. He put a little bit of flex line on that and uh, yeah, he's right there in the circle. Perfect. Shot. Beautifully done, Seppo. Next up, Rasmus. You can see how much rain is coming. Look at that tee. It's pretty soggy. Fantastic tees here. That might have too much angle, I believe. The Anheuser on that's just a little too much to get it to come back. But the kick is fantastic, and he's right on the fairway. Circle two, even. He put a lot of Anheuser on yeah, that. Yeah, way too much, yeah. but a uh, great result. And you can hear that rain pitter patter. And we'll see this mutant again. I'm surprised they're going with such big, but does you probably get the bait safer line that way, turning yourself Sure, you're making around. sure you hit yeah. that gap, right? That's the very overstable mid-range from Niklas, and that looks good. Oh, just curl around the tree, yeah. coming in and be hard with that almost yeah, he's on circle. Yeah, circle's edge. Nine meter uphill. Mm -hmm. Good shot. Next up, Vile. The king. Much That's on straighter. the inside line, yeah. yeah. That might not get as close, but oh! Pretty decent reaction. That's very close. Yeah, he's in the circle. Great. Well done, well done. Good drives there. None of them really made a shot that I thought they would go for. But uh, I'm also not a thousand rated player, so wh who am I to? <laughs> well, they got, yeah, I guess they, they've had their practice rounds and they, they know yeah. what they're doing for sure. They're, they're, gonna, they're all mostly electing for that kind of overstable mid flex shot, which. Definitely works, as we can see. It worked great for them. Yeah. Yoni Peltonen in the clubhouse, eight down. Finished with the turkey. Great job from him. Could be a new face on our lead card as well. So many birdies here in the top. It's like, look at the scorecard. It looks like the Finnish flag, but inverted almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So pretty exciting. Not necessarily the names we were expecting to see at the top at this point, but really happy to see it. Those yeah, guys those are scoring really well. Yeah, we have some some uh, big guns just behind also that can, with a great round tomorrow, it might be a really tough battle for the lead. Yeah. Rasmus. Yeah, he's first up to putt, about 16, 17 meters. Just didn't quite give it enough. Not the best putt we have seen. A little bit off on the right side, but it should be an easy par anyway. He continues to struggling. He will be he's on two up so far, two over par, and uh, he will probably stay at two over par after this hole as well. So he needs to pick up the pace if he wants to get a good result on this round. Next up, Niklas. He's got a 9 meter, 30 footer. Uphill. This is this is usually once he caches, but with the rain, it might be a, a little bit more difficult. Oh, oh no! And look what? at this! What is going on? I thought that was in all day. Was it a bit high, maybe? It looked like it kind of just popped off the pole and yeah. then, then caught the cage and, and flopped out instead of in. That's so... And the roll away. Such a bad result after a good putt. Uh, it was a great looking putt. Niklas is, is having a little bit of, of trouble and it is... I was not, just about really to say, fault, like, if he's think. putting like this, it's going to be very hard to stop, but that's seems to be the only thing that can stop him. The baskets are not fair to him today. I was I yeah. was ready to count that one. I thought it looked like it, he had kind of hit the spot that he usually hits, you know. Um, just just maybe the maybe the wet chains and the wet basket or the And now he's outside a circle for par. And that can hurt the confidence, you know, too. You throw a perfect shot and don't wow. get the result. But look <laughs> at that bounce back. What a professional. No, he doesn't care about missed shots. He just goes up there and scores. That is a super great comebacker there. Bounce back. Bad spit out. Rolls away to about 13 meters. 
and then he just puts it right on the money. Oh, that just it, puts it all out of his mind. It's so impressive to see that he he's so careless, or like he care, like he, he, yeah. That's the mark of a true professional, being able to come back after that. Great putt from Vile, solid birdie. Just thinking, next shot, next shot. Can't affect what has already happened. Except Ooh, a little wide, he but got good lucky catch. There. Yeah, good catch, and he's in. He's in for his birdie. Excellent too. Yeah, <laughs> that was. That looked scary, and that might have been one of those putts that might actually hurt your confidence more than it. Like, well, he's happy to see it in the basket, that's yeah. for sure. But it, it wasn't the perfect release. No. And uh, on those prodigy baskets, sometimes when they're wide, they don't catch so well. Hey, let's get a good look at this. What what actually what happened happen? here? Because it looked looked to me like a fantastic putt. Kind of, kind of coming in, right on the pole, I believe. I think it was perfect. Yeah, I think it was great, straight in the middle, and just a weird reaction, kind of bounced off the pole and just caught the nubs and just flopped out and rolled away. It also, it didn't look too soft. It didn't look that. But it look at this. Yeah. This is a mark of a true professional here. Just clutch comebacking, everything else out of your mind, nothing to do except execute your stroke, yeah. and he did it perfectly, beautifully done, Niklas. He got his revenge there on the basket. <laughs> Here we go, hole eight. This is a beautiful one. 222 meter par four. Averaging 4.23, fourth hardest. There's a little bit of a casual lake here that's not usually there, but uh, so that, that's playing as casual. And they're gonna, these guys are gonna try to land their, their drive up somewhere here on the hill. And then it kind of drops off now uh, down here in this little bit of a valley. And then it turns left to right at the very end. So pretty challenging one. And again, a green that is very hard to reach for a birdie. So this is yet another one of those very um, hard birdies to get, averaging just over par. Very beautiful green there, yeah. though. They've done a lot of great work, as you can see, throughout this course. And that's another one of those spots that they built up beautifully with all that labor. And I, I, I'm just admiring all the work they put into this course, how much care and how much planning and, uh, yeah. It's How much maintenance? It's yeah. not just that they have built it, but they're keeping it nice. And That's right, yeah. True, truly beautiful sight to behold. Make sure you get yourself here someday. Seppo with a can. super important birdie there. That so happy for him that he got that, because that could have just as well yep. gone out. Keeping the box. Yeah. You can also see, uh, well you, you could see for a moment there on the right, there's a big solid beautiful bench. Lots Odd. of cool wood structures on this course. Bit too much turn on this one. I think that's going to be a decent result though if he kicks back. Yep, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. He can still work from there. It was a little bit off to the right though. Yeah, he exactly. Said, yeah, but he turned it, turned it over just a slight bit too much. In no way was it a bad throw though. It, he ends up, he has good footing there. Yeah, on that little flat hill. So, huh. That that lake has actually swelled quite a bit from when we were there. Much just two days ago. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, noticeably smaller during our practice round. A similar result here from Villa, up on the right side, and this didn't get that great kick out towards the fairway. So he's in a bad position. Yeah, he's in the rough there. He might have a tricky time from there, but it's a par four. You know, a good shot now, and he, he can be in position for par still chance for Rasmus to show that he has a great backhand and this looks good if it just starts to come back. I think this is great. He gave it good that's height and he crushed it way up that's there. That's the best so far. Yep, that's prime spot. That's where you want to be. That's the landing zone these pros are looking for. Nicholas trying to get a grip on that disc. This legs look so much smaller also when these guys are throwing compared to when we were throwing. But this, again, another Overturn one up that. there on that right side. Surprising yeah. to see three guys overturn their discs. Yeah, yeah, Nicholas might have been the worst. He's, he's kind of yeah. deep, deep in the rough there. That went pretty far off to the right side. It did. I think he got a little bit more distance, though, than what Willa got. So maybe Perhaps, he can... Yeah get a look 
yeah, towards the fairway. There's yeah. some kind of line back towards the fairway. He can still par, but I, I'm pretty sure Birdie's way out of the question. Oh, yeah. There. That's, uh, There's just no way to make that shape, you know? I, I think it's more or less only Rasmus here who has some kind of look for a Birdie. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Everybody else is going to be scrambling for par, and they'll be happy to get it if they can. Yeah, even even though Seppo is in a good position on the fairway, he didn't get the distance that he needs to be able to to attack for birdie. But he might prove me wrong here, so I will should maybe not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully he can. How is yeah. it going on the FPO? They have played a few holes now, and we have Silva Saarinen in the lead, together with Justin Bitka and Emilia Kallio. And that's what we're looking at is our feature card there up on the fairway. I believe their tee time was uh, it is. 4.45. So yeah, they just teed off. We might have just missed them on the tee, but uh, nice to see them moving up the fairway. And there we get to see the leaderboard. As I just yeah. mentioned, Justin em and Emilia Kallio and, and uh, Jenny Karpinen. No, sorry. Yeah, Jenny Karpinen, yeah. Silva Sarinen, it does, it's not updated. That's why I got so confused here. She actually got herself a double bogey. Oh, she just so dropped off on the we top three. Yeah, we don't there, see yeah. that yet on this one. Yeah. So here we are back with Seppo for his upshot. Well, his second shot, I guess. Yeah, he still has quite a lot to go to reach that basket and... I would he's going to go with a forehand flex, so uh, that is the kind of shape that might be able to get him up and around the corner, but he's not going to be able to park it, but if he's able to get himself a circle mm -hmm. two putt, that would be ideal, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah. That's what he needs to go for. He cannot really be too aggressive from this position. No, I don't, I don't think he's too stressed about a birdie at this point now after that tee shot, but he just wants to get himself up there for it so he can have like a, a really easy pitch up, I think. Is he going between those trees? Yes, he is. And oh, that's actually really good. It is. Okay. Caught some late trees, but he's pin high. And he's about 30 meters off from the... Well, 25. Yeah, he must have hit something there in the end, right? Or Yeah, he caught some, uh, yeah. some of those trees when you just have to make the corner at the end of the of the hole. But he's in great position there for the for the par. He can, oh, yeah. He can just kind of jump putt and put it under the basket for an easy could four. Could actually be a little bit aggressive on that putt, maybe. I would but recommend I doubt it that on that green. You know? yeah. I think that's a pretty bad idea, in my opinion. But... It's a very small green, yeah. and it does roll away. But, you know, I, if he's feeling it, he's feeling it. I, I, if I was his caddy, I would say don't. <laughs> I would say no quite often, but <laughs> these guys just keep on proving <laughs> me wrong. So That's a good-looking shot if you can get off that. It yeah, is. he's going to be nice. Came up a little short, but rolling down. I think that's an okay roll, actually. It gives him more space to work with on his next shot. I, I agree with you. That's a good position he's compared right in the to middle being the up there on, on the slope. Yeah, you don't really want to be there. There's a lot of no. trees, and it's just there's not much you can do. You're better off on the fairway. Seppo was kind of lucky to get past the, the most of those trees, so he, he should have a clean line on his his approach. But in general, you want to stick to the fairway on this one. And it's a very cool fairway, very neat shape, lots of lots of turns. It's a very unusual Some hole valleys. with this like it's it's like yeah it's like a canyon almost. Like yeah, yeah, it's a very very nice shape and a very cool use of the. Of the space. Feels like a rainforest almost today. Like jungle or something down there. Yeah. Here's Nikos isn't actually in that bad a position here. I thought it was worse. I thought it was much worse, yeah. but he, he's actually ended up in a pretty good spot in the sense that he can he can rip a forehand down there and, and be in, in position for an easy par. And if he's able to do something special then I don't know. Birdie's not quite out of the question yet. No, 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 not at all. With a long putt, he could, he could make it. I didn't know there was open lines up on this far right side. I just haven't seen anybody up oh, there yet. But now he overturned that. That was way too much on the left side and he kicked somewhere over there towards those stairs. Okay, he probably needs to settle for a par then, which is not a bad result at all. If he's even in position to get a par, I'm not sure. I though. think so. Yeah. I think he should be able to throw up from there. You can again see some of the work they put in. Mm. Nice little wall and uh, some great stairs. So much quality woodwork done here. Rasmus is definitely in a position to to go aggressive for a birdie, and yeah. that would be a super good result for him. Yeah, he's got that flex forehand shaping up. He needs to get some good scores, and 
Come on, turn. Maybe too much angle on that. No, it turns back. Um, okay, it's pretty stable, but I think, yeah, maybe just a little bit too much Anheuser. Yeah. Not enough. release. And he might actually have problem with that. Slightly That's obstructed by that. Yeah. Fence. Huh. Let's see if, if, if it gets in his way or not. Hard to tell. Yeah, distance-wise, it's close enough to, to reach a par, no problem, but it might be... Might, yeah, he might have to get creative with yeah. his, his approach anyway. Something overhand or like a reach-out sidearm or patent pending, maybe. Let's see what his lies like, but I think first we're going to have Nicholas, maybe. Still no scores from the feature card on the FPO side on the first hold. We're still waiting to... I'm excited to see what's happening there. Oh, it's actually Vile, yeah. Vile was the one that was shortest. Mm -hmm. Vile is first, yeah. Here, we get a good look at that. Very pretty green. That's coming in nice. Ooh. It hits that tree and settles up. Right Great there. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Happy that he didn't get a roll this time. Yeah. He's Even though he hit that tree, but... Settled up nice. Good throw. Good shot. Looks like Seppo's up next. Or is it Niklas, maybe? Perhaps. Still didn't really see where that landed, so will be exciting to see if he has anything. We get the ride from with our camera, <laughs> and now we're back at the uh, tournament central here, getting a good look at the course map. Niklas is lining up his throw here. Oh, now. what a beautiful shot! Look at this. Uh, now you can see that green in that that valley that we're talking about. How the the fairway runs all the way through this like valley. Nicholas is getting to jump putt over it all. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Please. It oh. did not go in, but and another, another roll for Nicholas. He's having such terrible luck. And now we get to see some emotions from him. He's not happy with that, and he should not be. No, I mean, no. you don't usually see see this this kind of emotion from the, the young player. He's so stoic, you know. Mm. But he's just had some terrible luck. Three holes in a row, really. Uh, not fun. I mean, he's he's dealt with it all wonderfully, but... He was really hoping that that would just stay close, you know. Not the round he was hoping for. Rasmus doesn't seem like that fence is real. Oh, or no, he's just pitching it up. Uh, he's, uh, he's okay from there. But yeah, he wasn't able to give it a run, that's for sure. Slightly obstructed by that fence. He mm. had to just jump putt up for a, for a par. If it wouldn't have been for that fence, he could have probably put a bit more power and really, like, gone for it. But... There's also the risk of rolling down the hill. So. Looks like that gallery is kind of... Uh, oh, oh, that, that was, was a good was run. close. Yeah, great bid there. Almost did it. That was close. And it stayed there um, up on, right the, on, that on the shelf. So. Pretty green, yeah. I was just trying to say that it looks like the gallery might have dissipated a little bit with the heavy rain, but we're still seeing quite a few supporters out there mm -hmm. doing, their, doing their best to get a good look. We're seeing that camera crew trying to stay dry. I think we're going to see a really aggressive putt there from Niklas. He's going to want to have this. Yep. Yeah, let's see if he can turn some of that disappointment and frustration into a, a positive result here with a big shot. No, not quite enough oh. juice on it, but... And again, set up for a bogey. again, showing some emotions, not happy with that umbrella. Yeah, he's not having the most fun of his life here in the rain and having all that bad luck, unfortunately. But uh, still, plenty of holes to play. He's going to have to kind of keep his composure and try to just do best he can to Ooh, keep himself in this event, you know. You see how steep it is. Rasmus almost slipping down. But he gets, gets the par. Yep, nicely done. Par is just fine on this one, especially in these conditions. Nice one from Vile. Also par from him. And here we get yet another par from Seppo. And the bogey from Niklas. Yes. that. 
Now, Niklas is one down after that great start with three birdies on the three first holes. And Here we get another camera angle on that roll away. It, was just, it hit the green. I don't know how it caught edge, but it just Some rolled him down to circle two's edge, I guess, and just couldn't connect. This hole is quite a tough one. Really difficult par three. Brought to you by Coty Pizza. You're trying to hit this gap on the right side, most players. There is a bit of a line on that left side too, but it's super tight. Averaging right in the middle, right around par at 3.02. It's 107 meters, very far uphill. You can't really tell how, how uphill it is, but this green is, is perched way up on the top of this ridge here. And uh, only 16% of the field able to birdie, so. Yeah, kind of an easy par, but a very hard birdie to get. Yeah, well, you can you can have some uh, major damage on this one too. Yeah. If you don't hit that drive clean, there's OB all over that, that's on the right it, side yeah. there. So, yeah, you could take a big number, but I think most of these guys, yeah, it's a it's a pretty easy par. Averaging just around par, so yeah, I think that it's hard to uh, be too uh, well if you're throwing the line you more or less are aggressive on this one with the distance that they have so but it, it's not super easy to reach all the way even for these guys it's uh, pretty hard to get it all the way yeah. up there it's, it's quite uphill in the end even though it's a uh, just over 100 meters it's playing more like 130 i would guess or 120 something at least yeah and the rain is just coming down in buckets now oh, it's getting more and more and i think we're going to see something similar tomorrow also weather wise Okay, hopefully not. Maybe even on Sunday. Good well. thing that it's, in, it's not too cold. They still have somewhat of a okay temperature around 15 degrees. So, sure, but you'd, you'd definitely like to see it a little drier. Yeah, I think that Purus result 10 down will reach him. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Seppel still got the box, and he's reaching for an F1. Very overstable fairway driver. And he's hit the line very clean. If he can get the skip, he will be up on the green. And he does. Yeah, he Fantastic shot right there. He just creamed that. Yeah, and it looks so effortless. and uh, Smooth and easy. Smooth and easy and par. Oh, yeah. Beautifully done, Seppel. Yeah, only 107 meters, but it's much more uphill than it looks here on the camera. Yeah, it plays like much more. Vile hits the line clean as well. Oh, no, he no. didn't. That late tree came in, and there's the OB. <laughs> That's the kick you were talking about. That's exactly yeah. what I was talking about. Yeah, that can happen. It can, and we saw it. Yeah, I thought he'd already gotten past those last trees, but it, it was a little bit too too wide right. Yeah, he, he, he kept the disc a bit too flat. I think what maybe needed a touch more hyzer on it. Yeah, Seppo did that really well to keep it really like really. Oh, a lot of hyzer. That we get to see it. Yeah. That's a bad kick too. He might be OB also. So very this, similar this whole, to Villa. Yeah, this hole can cause some problems, like I said. Let's see if Nikos can turn things around. He's definitely in a bit of a rut right now. Not his own fault. Mm. He just had some terrible luck from the course, but course give it, and it shall take it away. But he has also shown us that he can, he can uh, just like forget about what's happened and, and oh yeah, throw yeah. great. He has the mindset of a yeah. true champion, and that's w one of his main attributes as a quality player, in my opinion. This was good that's out of perfect. the hand. Yeah. Committed to that hyzer like Seppo did and ends up there on the green as well. Hmm. We will follow FPO more and more, but right now we do have some technical difficulties, most probably because of the weather. Uh, so we, we hope that we will be able to follow them more than what we are doing at the moment. We will keep you updated on the scores though. And yeah, we must yeah. apologize for that. We were scheduled to follow the FPO and, and bounce back and forth between them and the MPO, but the technical difficulties has made that an imp impossibility mm. at the moment. So we will keep you updated and we'll hopefully be able to bring you FPO coverage the most that we can. After one hole, the feature card on, on the FPO side, Evelina Salonen, she was able to get the par. Uh, rest of the card struggled a bit. And, uh,
was getting uh, got herself a bogey. Olivia Chinstedt also got herself a bogey, and Katie Tete a double bogey. Vile just kicked off on his second shot. He's down there almost by the lake, or was that something else? Mm, I think? Yeah, uh. he went pretty far down there. Uh. It's not where you want to be. Let's see what Rasmus can do. Was that straight enough? It was, no. I think. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, he's great. He's up there. Just yep. very close to Seppo's disc here. Yeah, he's in the circle. Should be a par for him. Vile we're a little bit more worried about now. He got a pretty rough kick and kind of sailed down that hill. It, there's, You know, it's a very steep hill there, and he somehow didn't really catch any of those trees, it didn't look like. So he might have a very, very difficult shot to get up and down for what I believe will be a five. Yeah, they were throwing from the drop zone right there on the left side. Exactly. Yeah. So that was the third shot. And now if he's able to put this one close, that will be for five. But it, it might be very difficult to scramble. Rasmus looking like he's probably going to get to collect his bogey. Then. But still a bit of work to do. Short putt, but in these conditions, you know, nothing's a gimme. And in the lead on the FPO, we have Emilia Callio, the young young player who is right now on par after three holes. The only birdie we have seen on the FPO side so far on hole two. Okay, nice one. That's a good game. Emilia Callio. Congrats to her. It's a beautiful she played really well in Tali as well, and she was just behind there. And That's right. She was right there in the, in the mix and on the final round. Yeah, really Remember aggressive that. player with a lot of power, and we're going to see a lot of her in the coming years. I'm yeah. I super impressed to see her. And yeah, she made a run from the chase card, right? She did, yeah. It was very tight there around the third, fourth position, and she ended up just behind. So yeah, we're they're taking some time to find Vila's shot and uh, not a good position. There it is. And not only is it in a bad position, but it's very hard to throw from there because it's so, sti so steep and so slippery. And uh, yeah, you can't really get a run up, up that hill. He's going to have to probably go stand still. And that requires a fair bit of power, which he's definitely got. But I hope he can put it close. Looks like he's going to go with a forehand maybe. Yeah, forehand standstill approach. Having a hard time keeping his hand dry. Uh, and again, this is a know. meltdown from him. He is it's struggling. gonna be a big, big number. The and he's king already over par. The king has lost his crown. I think Peter Jutsen should be the new king <laughs> <laughs> if this <laughs> continues. But uh, we, we have to wait and see. This yeah. round is far from over. Indeed, we indeed. It's just one round and we're just having a laugh. But yeah. we're hoping he can ride the ship and uh, get himself back in the battle for this victory here. I think he's still out. He's taking his time. You know, it's it's... Very uncomfortable conditions. Everything's soaked. Definitely not ideal. Giving it a go. Yeah, I, I. That was kind of a safe go that he could go for that. So, so I'm not surprised to see that. But uh, yeah, it takes a lot of power to to jump putt uphill that far. Mm. But he definitely gave it a chance. We keep on calling him the king of Kipasuo, but uh, the reigning champion Lauri Lechten, and he is four down, tied for eighth place, and uh, will be exciting to see what we can see from him tomorrow. Yeah, he's not out of it. He's going to be uh, quite far behind the leader, six strokes at the moment, but uh, definitely not insurmountable with two Rasmus rounds gets to go. it in. Yeah, great, great putt, putt from there. Rasmus. There. Yeah, nice one for his four. Let's see if Seppel can connect for birdie. Seppel's on a good pace. He is. He's still bogey, bogey free. free after. Still not the best play, and we have seen some misses from him, but he has always. No, 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 no. Just caught the nubs. 
just needed an, another centimeter of height or just a one percent more power to get that up in there and again we see when he's putting for those birdies then he he's a bit more tense I yeah, think. yeah. It, it's a different kind of stroke we see from from him it wasn't yeah. a bad putt he just needed a little bit more on it and this guy is putting great all the time though but sometimes he has been a bit unlucky today but well, he definitely yeah. had that really bad spit out, but then showed out, showed his class by making the comebacker. Can he's he gonna want this birdie. To yeah, yeah, bounce back birdie. Yeah, he needs to get his round back on track because he's kind of lost, uh, lost a lot of that pace he was on. Started out real hot. There you go. He has learned where to put that yeah. disc now. Great. No putt. more of those spit outs from Niklas. Yeah, that one was right in the middle of the pole. Uh, nothing really can go wrong with that stroke, I don't think. And that's a big number. What was it, a six? No, it was uh, actually just a five. I'm wondering. Mm, I think they got that wrong. No, that, uh, well, I'm pretty uh, sure that's a six. At, at yeah, at it should have been a six, right? I'd at least. See if they adjust the scorecard here. But right now it says five. Seppo got the par. After a disappointing putt. This is a beautiful hole too. First of our par fives. 276 meters, winding fairway. Playing as the seventh hardest at right around par. Here you can kind of see the shape of it. Very, very pretty. Lots of trees, but plenty of space to work with in the fairway. And then when you get up to here, there's a, a huge forest of birches on the right where you don't want to go. And the left is, is nowhere good either, so you really want to stick to this path. Basket's kind of tucked back in here behind all this stuff. Very pretty and demanding hole. Yeah, this is the kind of hole that really rewards uh, safe play, because if you're just out, on the f uh, out from the fairway, you're going to be having some trouble. Yeah, you really want to control your disc on that one. You don't want it to end up anywhere off the fairway, really, or then you're going to have a much more difficult time. But if you keep, keep the shots clean, it's, it's very gettable. For these guys, anyway, it is definitely. It's a uh, there is some OB on the sides as well. So uh, yeah, especially you on really the need, shot. yeah, especially on the t-shirt, you need to watch out both on the left and and the on the right side. So play safe. Keep yourself in the fairway. It's averaging just around par, and uh, par is a good score here. I would say. Oh yeah, yeah, you'd be fine with the par. I'm not gonna tell what score I got on this hole. <laughs> Neither of us yeah. did too well on this <laughs> one, did we? That's our secret. <laughs> but I have to say that my, my partner here, Andrew, he got he had a hot run going and I almost told him that he should should call in our backup commentator and sign up for the competition. But <laughs> he slowed down a little bit on the back right back slowed nine, down though, yeah? a lot on the back, but But I was impressed. You have you know this course. You have played some. I love it yeah. here. This is one of my favorite places in the world. It's it's just beautiful. It's it's fun. It's technical. It's got everything. It's and got something for everybody here. Yeah, and we also had an amazing day with great weather. It was so warm and no, really no much wind to talk about. And we, we had yeah, perfect conditions. Yeah. yeah, that was a really fun day. Thanks for the good company. Thank you. And. Uh, Thank you, Niklas. This is actually where we we sat just on that bench and watched Niklas Niklas practice this hole, and it was impressive. Yeah, yeah, he's going for big distance on this shot. I can tell you, if his practice round was anything to base it off, he's trying to get way up there. But yeah, it might be more difficult with the slippery disc. Let's hope he can get off the tee real clean. That looks good if it keeps on turning. I think it's great. That is perfect. A uh, little bit lower than we saw. Look started. at this. Look at oh this. My. So far down. That's perfect. Wow. Right? You can't really do a lot better than that. That's that's really, yeah, perfect. I'm, I'm I don't have any yeah. other words for it. Huh? Yeah, he got the full flight. You know, he had that, that little bit of Anheuser and it flexed out and huge distance. He's almost halfway there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Similar idea from Seppo, but I think he put a little bit too much Anheuser on that, and I, 
Uh, but it cut back to the middle of the fairway perfectly. Yeah, Nothing he, wrong with he that. was got a good, good ground play there, and I, I think he played a bit slower disc. He was probably not going for the same kind of okay. distance. Yeah, as just trying to position himself, yeah. uh, trying to keep keep that OB out of play. But a really good shot. Yeah, great result at least. And this just needs to turn a lot. Keep on turning. I like no this. Oh, oh with that late kick. kick, but that's not going to hurt him too much. He's safe, and he's... Uh, I think it was a good kick. I think he would have gone more to the left otherwise. So, yeah, he's yeah, that, also that, in a good That left position. side can, can come into play the OB really quickly. So y you might be right. That might have been drifting a little bit too far left. Yeah, I think it might have been, but... Vila's got a t-shirt on now. Yeah, he got warm after all that hill climbing <laughs> on the last <laughs> hole. Uh, he got a bad kick. Could it even be OB there on oh the right sure side? Sure could. Yeah, it probably is. Kind of be hard not to be with a kick like that. Oh, that would be tough for him after struggling on the last hole. It still says five though on the last hole, so maybe we counted it wrong somehow. But I'm surprised to see that yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah, I think they either got that wrong or maybe he wasn't OB on his first shot. But he was thrown from the drop zone as well, right? Yeah, he was. I think so. I'm pretty sure that his his score was a six. But Niklas, <laughs> Niklas, he <laughs> after a birdie on the last hole, he and he really shows that he has not given up yet. So oh, he never gives up. No, no, that just lit his mm. fire. You know, a little bad luck. <laughs> the only thing I'm gonna do is just make him more determined. You don't want to get Niklas pissed. <laughs> he's that kind of no. competitor. He is fierce. Like I yeah. said, he's got that got that next level competitive energy that uh, is not particularly common. It really sets people apart in this game. He's in that world-class elite level. And he wants it. See how far down the fairway they are walking and they are still not... Well, we are for waiting for, for Ville. And is he... He's in bounds. He was safe, luckily. Yeah, he was safe. Good for him. It's a good break. Not not having an easy go at it as of late, but uh, and this is what we were talking about. If you're just off the fairway a bit, it's very tricky to get back out on the fairway and get some distance at the same time. So he needs to. Ah, oh you see, he's overturned that. Oh, good kick though. That kept him safe. Got lucky. Yeah, that was head no. Uh, probably ob. Hard to say, but uh, definitely was overturned. You don't see a lot of confidence in his play right now. It's uh, Yeah, I wonder if the weather is affecting his mood. Yeah, he just seems to want to have this round over with and come back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah and they're only halfway through, so... Let's see if he can keep it together the rest of the way. Seppo with that great late kick. He's in a great position, he mm -hmm. and this is a shot that he really excels at. This Anheuser backhand that he's gonna go for here. Look at this. It's a roller. It's a roller even. He's going with the F5 roller. How? Oh, oh what a how? cool shot. Oh, but he's in a bad position there in yeah. between the trees. But he got so much distance on that, yeah. Yeah, and that's only his second shot, so he can still scramble mm. for birdie even from there. But that that birch, a little prison. It's not easy to work in. No, no. It's a tight place with... There are a lot of gaps, but they are so tiny, so it's... Yeah, none of them really line no. up straight to get you any any kind of a decent distance through there. But that was a really cool idea, trying to roll it down that path that way. Very aggressive. Yeah. And Surprised to see, but he needs to... If he wants to be up there, he needs to be aggressive. And he's, he's three down so far, so... Good score, but he wants more. Yeah. Highly skilled shot there, and he executed mm. it pretty well. Oh. That's a, that's a big shot. I think that's good. Pretty good. Yeah? Yep. Might even have a chance for the birdie from there. Yep. Maybe maybe throw some kind of a forehand flex down to the green. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, that he could reach it with a bit of a trick shot, but still with some, some uh, skip forehand shot. 
And how far down is Niklas? <laughs> Niklas. That's so impressive. That was a bomb. Yeah. Let's see what he does on the second shot. Looks like he's going to go forehand flex and try to chew off a whole bunch of distance. I think that's a PD2. It needs to be something very overstable to, to get back and land flat at least there in the end. And it needs too low. Yeah. But it cut rolls and yeah, but wow, pretty that's bad not play. where you want to be. You can't do much from there. It's so it came out thick. really low. And the cut rolled all the way over behind those birches. Maybe it slipped out of his hand, I don't know, but it's n it was weird angle and it was way too low not at all what he was going for that's the uh, disappointing to see after that great great tee shot yeah kind of a surprise Ville is playing safe not going for a lot of distance yeah just trying to get himself on the road give him a chance to get up and down a smart play when he's not obviously not really feeling it today he's not having those yeah, great and highlight shots he so just really wasn't in position to do anything that there. too yeah but yeah, smart, smart play. But it's quite easy to when you w like you want to repair your your bad round and you start oh, to yeah. take risks. But yeah, that's a common thing that happens in disc golf. Yeah. You, you feel like you you got yourself a little behind and you got to do something special to get back, and that's when you can start to compound the mistakes, and, and that's where disaster hits usually. And. I think Niklas just needs to take his medicine here and get back out. Or, like, can he go around on the right side? I no, he's, he's he going to try to. He doesn't have much of a chance. Or is it a forehand roller who's going to go yeah, straight yeah, down There's here. nothing he can do from here. This is full-on jailhouse. Now you see the, the grass is so high, so you cannot really go with a roller here. The roller won't won't get much steam, you know. It, it's going to die off real quick, especially with that wet grass. Uh, I, he can't be happy with this. He he is probably... There's not a whole lot he can do. He, he might have to go with a tomahawk or a thumber or something just to try to fight his way up forward, but that might not even get him all the way out of the birches. He might oh. have... Or he's going with the forehand flex, maybe. He is... And that's see a some risk. Kind of line, is it? Or? This is a high risk shot. I mean, look, there is just no way through that stuff. Those trees are everywhere. He's definitely got himself an idea, but I it's a really low percentage shot. He must be a mag magician if he gets himself down there. And he's going to try. Oh, he's he going with, go with the four and roll. Even in the high grass. But how far down does it go? Uh, it was better than I thought it would be. Uh, but I, I'm not sure exactly where it ended up, but it it, it definitely put a, a fair bit of uh, momentum on that, and it, it, it did carry hopefully all the way out of the bird. But there's still so much distance to go. Like I, if he hits something, there, it, it, yeah, we'll hard see. hard to say. Yeah, we'll see where he's at. But he's not in a great position anyway. To no, he's not going to. Here's another get in the from there, either, no matter what. But. Wow, this well, might be good. Really this good, might be actually. good if it comes back. That's Ro amazing. Oh, no. it's still going though. Whoa. <laughs> okay. He got himself far down, but it turned the wrong way. It, if it would have curled oh, up, that's pretty good yeah. shot. He's almost pin high. He is. Yeah, he is pin high. Wow. Uh, that, was, that was actually really impressive, given the conditions and, and the, uh, the place that he was there. You can't really do a whole lot better. I mean, you, you'd kind of like like to hope the disc would curl up to the right side, but that's asking quite a lot after a shot like that already. And Rasmus is here after two, and he really definitely has a chance for that birdie with a great shot here. And it do looks, looks good. Really no, no, he what? hit the tree. What did he hit? I, I thought he had he that. He hit something there on the inside. One of I those thought it that we was good. See maybe yeah. from the angle. It looked like perfect. Just caught one of those probably birches and shot him over on the on the left side but still on the fairway though he should be able to save the par but no that he that would have been a nice birdie to get for him yeah. i would have liked to have seen that shot finish because it looked like it was heading right down there but wasn't meant to be and he'll continue from over there on that left side is that niklas yeah it is niklas okay so his roller wasn't too great after all 
It must have hit something there just when they switched cameras, so we didn't see the, the actual hit, but, but he's still scrambling, like I said, you know, I, I, it's this is where you don't want to play the hole through. This is how the big numbers come. Maybe he should have just been smart on the second shot, and or uh, third shot, and put himself out back on the fairway, but... But that wasn't even very easy to do. No, that, that's he true. He would have needed to go backwards. So even yeah. even throwing backwards can be hard when you're yeah. surrounded by trees like this, you know. He was just in a, in a pretty tough spot where it was really no good decision to be made. Uh, so surprising to see after that beautiful first shot. Huh? Yeah, we thought he was going to posterize this hole, and now he's just trying to scramble for the lowest number he can get, but it's not going to be good. No roller this time. Can he? No. Oh, no. It's no. so tight. Like, whatever you do, stay away from this right side because and I've, I've never seen him in this state. The he's frustration really is frustrated. It's clearly yeah. evident. I mean, there's, there's no way to disguise it. He's frustrated beyond anything we've seen from the guy. Uh, I wonder what is going on. Be well, because he's he had some bad luck, you know, the conditions aren't good. His score isn't that bad still, so... Well, he wants to know. win, you know, he, he plays does to want, win, yeah. and uh, it's just not going his way today. No, not so far. And it's, you know, I mean, a lot of it's not even his fault. He just had some really bad breaks. Seppo in a similar position. What's he going to do? He's I think it's a little bit... He's got a little bit more space to work with, but it's yeah, still really tight. I mean, look, he's, there's just not a whole lot of options inside that birch jail. He's taking a, a forehand approach. No, he hit and that. He hit it, would it looked one. good otherwise. Yeah, but it was a tight little line, but I think he's most of the way out now, at least, hopefully. I shouldn't be that much left to work with, work around or in between. What's the latest with our FPO? Yeah, new leader, Evelina Salonen. Let's oh, great. have a look at that after this hole. Sure. Rasmus with a nice clean up there. Oh, a little bit long, but yeah. close enough, I think, to... Yeah, it's I about... he's still inside the circle, at least. But seven, eight meters from the basket. Yeah, hopefully he's not obstructed there. Can he reach, finally reach down to the green? He can. But what is going on in his head? He is pissed. He's frustrated. He is not having a, having fun there out there today. Yeah. Yeah, uncomfortable conditions and uh, not the round he was looking for. Oh. So. Let's hope he can keep his composure and, and maybe battle back to stay in contention for this tournament because uh, at this pace, he's shooting himself out of it. Yeah, I hope that frustration doesn't really affect his play from, from here on out because, as I said, he still has like okay score. He's two down. And, uh, ooh, great ooh. shot from Seppo. Beautiful. Yeah, but with a great finish, he could still be up there with oh, a shot. Sure, sure. And so he, like, like we said, he, he never gives up. No. It's just that this is a kind of a, a whole new level, something we uh, ha I've never personally seen from from him, this level of uh, discontent. He's usually just got nerves of steel, you know, and uh, at least he's not showing it. Oh, and that, that sailed past a little bit. Oh, that's a should be okay. Great spin put to have in those from those distances. Yeah. Yeah, you can gain gain a fair bit of distance. Well, he's actually quite close there. Yeah, he he's yeah. close enough. That's a good one. And Rasmus looks a bit surprised that he he's not as close as he thought he might be. It, it did get a bit squirrely in the end of the flight there. It uh, did, but it, yeah, he's it's about seven eight meters maybe, and uh, some minor obstruction, but he might be able to straddle mm -hmm. around it or just punch through important distance to be to, to get if you want to have a good result and 
Uh, th- he ha- does he have a branch there hanging uh, down? I yeah, think I so. Think yeah. It might affect. Uh, but he's also kind of down a little bit on that, mm. so he might be able to get under. Yeah, he's able to get under. Oh, no. he's not. What is? Yeah, well. Yeah, just a little bit on the right side there. Uh, those, those are kind of uh, pretty unlikely to stick on these baskets. So he would have wanted to get that a little more central. But not not that a bad so close. Not though. a bad putt yeah. though. No he no 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 no. Yeah, it he was just yeah. centimeters off from being right on them. I thought it went in when it, it looked yeah, yeah it looked like it was gonna. But wet chains, wet disc makes it even harder. And even that Another one squirt off. Even that one and look. it looked like he rushed that a bit, but it was still a, it looked like a pretty good putt. You know, it wasn't wasn't far off. No, there is a lot of things happening. There is not a lot of en- good energy now right now on this card. They need to do something. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. It's and like help each other because no one is benefiting from this kind of bad energy. Yeah, I, th- I think the rain's kind of gotten under their skin a little bit. Seppo's still playing pretty well. Uh, Seppo's playing great, I, ha- I have to say. He- he's playing safe. He's s- saving his bad shots with, with great drop. Yeah, he is. No. Yeah, yeah he's, he's scrambling good and he's kind of connecting when he needs to. Probably not scoring as much as he wants to. He's, he's left a few out there on some of those putts. This is a really nice par five. Hole 11, 234 meters, 768 feet. Playing as the easiest hole on the course. <gasps> Surprising. 59% of the field a- able to birdie it. If you want to get your first shot uh, anywhere through the gap and moving left, and then you want to kind of get up your hill or up the hill on the second shot, and that'll leave you a, a pretty routine approach. But the the green is is kind of a s- little bit on this like slight shelf, and it, if you if you juice it too much, then you don't really have much on the comebacker. It's a whole wall of trees there that you can't really work with. No, that's true. You don't want to get too deep uh, yeah. there behind the basket. So um, this needs to be some kind of touchy up shot. Yeah. But uh, I I really love these these kind of holes that like S shaped and yeah beautiful fairways. You need There's to show that you have all the angles and and so all the many distance. of those yeah. cool shaped holes on this course. Lots of par fours and fives, and they they all move in different directions, requiring different shots. And we have not seen just one eagle here today. We have seen one, two, three, four, five eagles five here. Five eagles. Yeah, these guys are so good. After Check out this tee pad, by the way. This is next level, isn't it? How many of these kind of tee pads do you see in the world? <laughs> Not many. You see quite many on this course, but you don't see them elsewhere too often. And is this okay? It is. It's perfect. Great. He's way uh, up there, yeah. Right in the middle. Yep. Great shot. I guess the guys that are going for eagles must come a little further in order to get that. Uh, it's hard to get that much further though, because you yeah. need to. Yeah, it needs to be a little lower. Maybe they skip a little bit further left so that it opens up. That might be yeah. a little more. I don't know. Maybe he can still attack for eagle from there. These guys do things that I can't even dream of. Yeah, the distance is really not the problem here. It's just like hit your line and uh, with, with, with two shots, a bit over 100 meters, you, you can get it. This the hole's brought to you by Disc Golf Stream. Looks Very cool. Similar, a bit more on the right side, but also really good shot. No, that worked out really well. Left Look side, sorry. Yeah, it looked yeah. like it might have been uh, a little bit too far to the left, but it, it worked out really good. That might be a little early. I think so. No, no it's good. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, he had that. Even height. That's actually the best we've seen. It's even further up than Seppo. And mm. bang in the middle of the fairway. That's perfect. Great shot. Belay taking that Heimberg Halo Destroyer. Really high and good. Whoa. Oh, cool. He okay. came out really wide and... Uh, yeah, it spiked in there. Bit lucky that he didn't catch anything on that right side that he actually... Yeah, he was up, he was kind of testing that side, wasn't he? He was, but he ended up in a perfect position. Prime time, perfect. I want to mention those players w- who got the eagle. It's uh, we have Jona Heinonen. We already mentioned that earlier today, and Lukas Müllerinen, Ville Kankanpä, and uh, Jukka Tyyni, Kasper Heikkinen. So great job, all, all you guys. Five great guys. Here we're guys. Getting, getting to see yeah. Puder Jotsen's statistic: fifty-six <laughs> percent birdie rate. He was in the circle one in regulation 56% of the time. 
Hundred percent scrambled. Scrambled. He putted well. He just did it all. He did everything you need to do. Yeah, that's no surprising statistic to see after a ten down round. That might be yeah. the round of his life. I mean, that's a, that's an amazing score. It'll be interesting to see the rating on that. Do you see nine down? Jonah, Jonah Heinemann. Heinemann. Fantastic. He can get up there. Yeah, he's he has still one two. hole to go. If he can birdie the last one, he'll have a tie for the league. I think he's going to be on our league card regardless. He, yeah, I, I would be surprised to see that many. And they are struggling a bit. Well, Seppo is playing good, but he's not I having that kind of hot round. No? Yeah, I don't think he has enough uh, time to get to that level yet. I mean, I would like to see it, but I'm just trying to be realistic here. I think the conditions have worsened as the day went on. I don't think uh, the rain was too much of an issue earlier. So these guys might have had a little bit unlucky tea time in the sense that they had to deal with the heaviest of showers. That might be. Let's see if he is a bit pinched off here on the right side. But if there is someone who should not be affected by that, it's Sepp Papayo because he is oh, he's a, a master of those shots. He's a master, yeah. isn't he? Just I don't I think, think this do is going to be a problem for him. Maybe uh, it is, though. He didn't quite get the angle. I think that's fading out way too early. He's we still got... Oh, he's, he's in a pretty okay position there. He can hyzer around that birch and still get up and down yeah. for the birdie. But yeah, that was way more left than he wanted to be. Yeah, he didn't get the angle. We maybe spoke a little bit too soon, but uh, he's uh, it, no way in a bad position after two shots. No, no, no. He, if he can do some kind of a, either like a high hyzer or, or a low skip, skip shot and still get himself on the green. Yeah, I think so, too. I think the other guys are maybe in a little bit better position in the sense that they're a little further left. Uh, maybe they don't have to work the angle as hard. Well, I guess at least Nicholas is. The other two are quite in similar positions. Yeah, they are really look yeah. very similar to yeah. the Zappos, but Nicholas is on the other side. a little side. bit more on the left. and I think it, it can be an advantage to be a little bit further left if, if that's the angle you're liking to work. Something more flat, you know. Nico's taking a driver. Lips up nicely, drifts a little bit to the right. That looks great. Oh, yeah. That looks great, and he's just on the circle's edge. Yeah, he's inside he's the, the circle. He's inside the circle. Sorry, that was that was the bullseye circle yeah. I saw. He's got six, seven meters wow, for eagle. Oh, we're going to see maybe a sixth eagle here today. That's the thing that could turn things around for him. It you know, is. exactly yeah. what he needed. A, a really, really big shot like that. That was a perfect second shot. Just the right amount of flip up and drift, and then it faded out. Uh, so beautiful. impressed. Is that a DD3, you think? I don't know. Rasmus. That was a little bit lower, mm. but he got pretty good distance on it. He should have, a, like, a, if he's not too stuck in the rough, he should just have kind of a jump putt approach for a, a birdie. Yeah, uh, you're right. He would have needed a bit more height to reach all the way there but and to get that fade towards the basket but it was still a good shot i think this looks good oh, does he's got the stability to come back does anyway oh yeah no it wasn't it was too turned yeah yeah you're right good he, shot wrong disc maybe yeah or maybe just a bit too much angle but look he's just like it's in a circle too still Pretty far so up yeah. there that's <laughs> the thing you know if, if that rough doesn't give him too much problems then he should have a birdie as well yeah what is it, like 12, 13, 14 meters? So it's nothing to worry about. But it's in a bad position, though. It might be the that he cannot see the basket even. Yeah, so. the, the rough is pretty rough on the on this green. So what it just kind of depends on his lie. It's pretty hard to say where he ended up and what he's going to be working with. But if he can find a line to mm. just punch out, then he should be fine. These guys are making it look so easy. This hole, I guess, is the easiest hole on the course relative to par. And it now we can see why. When you throw that uh -huh. far, it, it really is very eagleable. And it's kind of like a routine birdie for these guys. I'm jealous. It, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see this as a par four in the future, maybe, at, at this really high level championship layout. Yeah, we, we have seen some a little bit uh, low pars, and this is maybe a bit high par. So it evens out in the end. I don't think it matters that no, much, but yeah, it feels it opinion, feels more I mean, like a. Well, for these guys, yeah. they just you know they're just so good that it's it's kind of hard to uh, challenge them on on these type of holes. But it's a beautiful hole, and it's a fantastic par five in my opinion. And I think there's nothing wrong with having a few eagles in the field. No, 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 no. That's nothing to. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. He just uh, tried to lay that up, and I uh, guess he did a pretty good job of it. Close enough. I think he would have wanted it maybe a little closer, but yeah, he's still only six meters out. The screen, it, it, it does slope off, and it, it can run away pretty quick from you. Yeah, you see the, the like main area of the green is not that much bigger than the, the, the bullseye circle, so you, you want to really get yourself close to being a have good footing and not needing to worry so much about where the disc lands if in case it would miss. Not that these guys are thinking so much about missed putts. Now we see that rough. What can he do from here? He, he finds some... No, oh. almost. Yeah, he tried, but uh, that was a really difficult position. And uh, now he's got kind of a long putt for his birdie, but... Still very doable. He got himself himself out of the rough anyway. Yeah, just on the edge there, right? Yeah. I think he, he should be able to have a clean look from there. Rasmus, Rasmus getting also has in to get creative going with a scuba. <laughs> or it's like a patent pending scuba shot just to even get himself close to the edge <laughs> of that rough line there. This is not a shot you, you practice too much either. And he's done it great. That was fantastic. No problem. I, I, that was a very creative yeah. shot. Very well executed. And he gets rewarded with a birdie. Yeah, he just had to do everything he could to get it, get himself r reached out around that wood line. And very creative and cool shot. Okay, he still has some distance. To I thought he was a bit closer, but no. This will be a scary putt. Does he even go for it? Mm. Seems like he will. Yeah, he kind of has to play aggressive after but all. all that's a miss, and that was probably bad. But now, yeah, now he's. Okay, yeah. now he's close enough, I think. You had to settle for a par anyway. It's uh, one of those holes he really wanted to get, I'm sure. And he had the longest, longest drive, best position, I think. Maybe Nicholas was. Yeah, he just overturned uh, that no. second shot, and that kind of cost him a couple strokes in the end, didn't it? It d looked really good out of his hand, but it kept on going to the right, and that's not w where you want to be. The rough is really rough, and I guess in that sense it's a great par 5. Plenty of trouble to happen here, too. Just because these guys make it look great so easy, you know? Great eagle! It Fantastic. definitely looks easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you So suddenly... It's a great. He's down three again. Okay, so he's right back on track. You yeah. know, he's had some troubles, but kept it together. Like we said, he's a fierce competitor. Uh, that was super important. And w with a hot like back nine here, he could even reach the lead card with a little bit of luck. Like, well, he's still in the game. That's yeah. the main thing. I was starting to worry that he might, I I if those troubles. Nice putt from Seppo there. Not to for for a birdie, there. yeah. Yeah, great job. But uh, yeah, we'll let Vile putt out here first before we get back to that train of thought. Nice putt there from Vile. Like I was trying to say that I was starting to worry that if, if that frustration and, and all those kind of compounding mistakes or not even mistakes but just bad breaks really in a lot of the cases I was afraid that he might uh, not be able to stay with it all until the end of the round but he's Look proven that completely eagle. wrong. Look at this. Uh -huh. Great eagle from Nicholas, and he's right back in this thing. Mulla on siinä purkka. Oh. Spearmintti. Sulla. Pullet peef. Eli yhtä nauta ja bearnaise majoneesi. Mulla on mummo. 
Legendaarinen ylämummo. Se on voittaja valinta. Kotipitsasta. Welcome back. We have hole 12, the 10th hardest hole, 189 meters. Yep, averaging right at par. Very cool shape on this one. Beautiful tee pad. Another one that swirls around like an S in here and you need to snake yourself first to the right and then to the left and then back again to the right. That's Very cool, cool shape. Yeah, yeah this, is, this one's really cool. You gotta, you gotta move off through here, just like a snake. Well said, that's, that's kind of how this fairway plays. 21% of the field able to birdie it. No OB to be had on this one, but plenty of obstacles with the shape and everything. Yeah, and before they tee off, I want to tell you what's going on on the FBO side. We have two women in the lead. That's Evelina Salon and then Olivia Schinstedt. <laughs> they are both on par after five holes and uh, Olivia Schinstedt birdied that hole five. That's impressive. Wow, great. Yeah. Great work. Just behind, Hena Blumrus, one over par, and then Katie Tette, three over par. So, pretty tight race. We have the feature card in the lead. Oh, nice. Right out of the gates. Yep. Going strong. Good to see that. Well, I wish we could see a little more, but nice to hear that anyway. We will, of course, show more of them once this... Uh, when, when MPO the, card has finished, and we hope that we'll be able to follow them a bit more also oh, during this round. Of, yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll move move the cameras over to them when this MPO is finished, and then yeah. then we'll be able to bring you the, the finishing of their round. We were planning on bouncing back and forth, but because of the technical difficulties, we we've we're gonna have to uh, hold off on on that for a while. We will keep on. We will keep you updated though, as much as possible. Yeah, most well certainly. Right now we are waiting and it seems like there is some kind of backup here again. Uh, Niklas is of course having the box after that eagle, so he's standing there right now and waiting. And now we get to see the leaderboard. There you go. Yeah. And as you said, our feature card tearing it up. Doing good. They're all right there on the top. You know, everyone within three strokes. Lots of pars, a few nice birdies. Well played from the ladies. I think Olivia also did quite well here last year. I think he she finished fourth or something. That's like right. That's yeah, that that's might right. be a course that's, that suits her. Yeah, she's been doing yeah. great. One thing I'm a little surprised to see on that top ten was that Hades having a bit of a hard time. Yeah, she is. She's not not uh, picking up the pace as we were, what we were expecting from her yet. Yeah. But she can still turn things around. Oh yeah, yeah. She's yeah. not out of it, but she's definitely not having the the start that she wants to defend her title here. Niklas, here we go. Get a pretty good look at this tee pad, very nice. This one brought to you by Rami Rent. That angle looks great. Okay, that's how you get way up there. Nicely done. Yep. Great position, goes a lot of distance. Good for him. Yeah, that was a great shot. Now he's gonna have kind of like maybe a forehand uh, second shot to get yeah, to the thing. So I need to the that much. No, he got oh, so no. much distance that yeah. I think that's very, very birdieable from that position. Seppel going with that backhand turnover as well. Much wider and much higher, and that doesn't look good. I think that's fading out early. It is. That might mean trouble. He didn't really commit to that angle enough for. Uh, yeah, I think it came out pretty wide, didn't it? But he got pretty good distance, so if he's able to find a line through there, I'm, I'm not giving up on it yet. No, I mean, but Birdie, it looks yeah, difficult. Not, not that, likely. Yeah. Not likely at all. This one looks good also. Similar That's to Nick Flippy. Yeah. yeah, nice one. Wow, quite far up. Fantastic, really. Great shot. He got a Rathlis. lot further than yeah. Nicholas on that. That was, that was That's impressive, yeah. yeah. 
I'm not sure if it's the best angle towards the pin, but I think he can work something. He's so far up there. Yeah, exactly. You got enough distance, so you don't need to worry so much about the second shot. And this is also looking great, oh, even better. That's a dream shot, isn't it? That's where you... Oh, a bit tucked up towards the tree, but otherwise... I think he's yeah. got enough distance off it to make a, make a good shot. But he's really far, huh? He chewed up most of the distance on that fairway with that shot. Should be a relatively easy approach, I guess. We should just accept that distance is no problem for any of these players. They're all having the power that they need and even more for uh, mo all of these holes. So it's just about finding the right angle and finding the right disc rather than to be able to get the distance. Yeah, this yeah. course is much more attackable for those uh, four-digit rated players yeah. you know, with, with their power. For us mortals, it's, it's uh, <laughs> much more of a battle. It is a lot more yeah. big numbers here and there, but great fun regardless. I mean, you know, and if you stay precise and hit your putts, it, it's it's achievable to to be in single digits or closer to par, even for for guys on our level. But it it takes some some pretty straight shooting. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a nice course. Uh, even these uh, like longer holes that are quite uh, tough, but they are anyway fair and like you can play safe and straight and y you get, as just as you said, you can get a good result even without the big distance. But yeah, if you just control course, your disc yeah. and, and accept that par is a great score on quite many of these, then you can do fine. But it's anyway a great way to, to really understand how, how good these players are to compare your your own little silly arm <laughs> <laughs> distance <laughs> compared to these guys it's impressive how what they can achieve yeah we're we're really happy and privileged to get to witness this and to share it with you all so happy to be here doing this and thanks everybody for joining us make sure you tell everyone you know i'm sure they'll love it too is that henna no, somebody else. No. I don't know who it was. I think that was on that the was last hole. Yeah, yeah that couldn't be uh, somebody else. But here's here's Nicholas. Like I said, yeah, going with that forehand second shot, even with a slower disc, or yeah, yeah. maybe maybe that tactic. Yeah, I think it's the tactic he's throwing, and that was not looking good no, out of his hand. He overturned that a little, but decent result actually. Ah, he's he's in circle two, or maybe circle yeah, one. Yeah, circle's edge. Wow. Yeah, it's okay, that worked out actually fine. Much better than I thought. Yeah, I thought yeah. he was gonna. He, did, he wanted that to be a little bit more on the right side, but it, the result is just fine. Sorry, Nicholas, we didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of a scary putt, though. This green really yeah, popped off. I think he did want that a little closer. He probably did. It, it wasn't the perfect shot that he was looking for. He would have wanted to release that a bit flatter. Maybe not get that. Uh, that yeah, a little bit too much ante. Yeah. Maybe he just get kind of had like a maybe one or two ticks too much ante on it. But it, it's the result is fine. And oh here is no. a struggle. For Seppo, he hit the tree early. Yeah, he was in a bad position. He had to try something extraordinary, and it just didn't work out, did it? Hmm. No, he put himself in a bad position after that first shot, and uh, now he's got to get get his scramble game on real tight if he wants to stay bogey-free now. Oh, it doesn't look likely, right? Uh, it's very unlikely, but I'm not counting him out. This he's is good, though. He's this really is good, though. Oh, oh my whoa, gosh. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That looked like it was in the bucket. That would have been something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was so close. What a shot. Fantastic forehand flex from there. And just it looked like it was going to crash straight in the chains. I don't know. It must have just missed on the on the right side a little bit or Yeah, had right, had uh, the, just a bit on the right flex. side. Yeah, beautifully done. But that would have been a great eagle from wow. from Villa. <laughs> That's something you don't see on this hole very oh, often. Coming in a little Here. bit too hot. And there you see how the screen can yeah. play. It drops off quite fast. You, you want, want to land softer. You've got to land with the perfect angle and just the right speed if you want it to be close. And you sure do want it to be close on this one because rollaways are a real deal. And where is Seppo? He didn't get very far. He's still in the deep woods here. And now he's going to have to go with like a grenade or a spike hyzer. Can he reach the green from there? Oh. I don't know. It's going to take something really special. What What a cool looking shot, it's though. Oh, no, no. Oh, stop, stop, stop. That was stop. incredible. He can. He, can. he reached it. What a scramble from Seppo. Yeah, and he might actually stay bogey-free still. That was a wild shot. Wow. 
It was like a 90 degree and uh, yeah. Heiser angle, like just super commitment. I would have liked to see that from a, like a straight line from the basket to see how tight it was. I yeah. had to be tight. I don't think he had hardly anything to work with. That took perfect execution and he just nailed it. Fantastic scramble. Oh my there. god. My god. Good. Good for you, Sepon. You <laughs> wow. staying clean so Keep far a if you can just sheet if you yeah. can just tap that in. It, it even got like a really uh, interesting uh, kind of action on the green. Yeah, I thought it, it might stopped. roll away and then it curled back towards the basket. Yeah, because it looked like it came in with such a high speed. I thought that's going to go way down, but it stopped. I guess um, it just had so yeah. much hyzer that it, it just kind of like popped up and cur turned the other way. Thank you. So I think V-Lay's up. No, I think it's actually Rasmus first. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I meant. He came in just yeah, a bit, he got that bit fast, but it's not far away though. So, and with an uphill putt, he can be a little bit bit more aggressive than if it would be downhill. He's just outside the circle, and he step puts that in. Beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Yeah. Very nice putt, Rasmus. Nice clean stepper. So that was the first birdie. So Jono Heinonen did birdie that last hole. He did, so he's also 10 down. We have two guys at 10 Ooh. down in the clubhouse. Incredible shooting. Niklas. Niklas, 9 meters, 30 footer for the birdie. Big moment here. Kind of a scary putt with that drop off, but for him, shouldn't be a problem. No! What uh -oh. is that? Okay, it didn't roll away, luckily. I think he expected it to roll. He, he, yeah, he, got he the turned away in disgust and then looked back again quickly, thinking like, uh-oh. Did I just make a big mistake or just a little one? Relief. Luckily, just a yeah. little one in this case, and he can still get his par. And now he has his friend Oscar Wikström as caddy carrying his bag. So oh, That's really nice of him. A little bit less weight on his shoulders, and there we see Ville getting his almost eagle, but instead he needs to settle with a birdie. I think he's happy with that. It's only his second birdie for the day. Very well played. And Niklas... Disappointing miss there from him. Yeah, kind of a rare miss to see him leave it low, I guess, but he's usually right on line, so it, sometimes they're a bit lower high, but not often. That one a little that high. That was high, yeah. yeah. But in. So he maybe overcompensated a bit, but not uh, yeah, enough yeah. for it to, to be a miss. He, he yeah, just, yeah, just a slight overcorrection, but a, a good result, and he's got himself a par. And if Seppo can get a par here, then that is just fantastic. What a great scramble on that last one. Sweet. He's staying one of the bogey cooler free. Shots see, yeah. Yep, bogey free. Great job. Still only four down. Uh, not a bad result at all, but, but still super impressive to be clean so that's far. That's actually yeah. a really good pace considering, yeah. you know, he's he's got some, if he can get a few more birdies, he's right up there in the mix. Could still even make the lead card. Like yeah, he, he could. Like all those last holes, they are so open and... Uh, or so open, but compared to these at least. So yeah. like he, he does have the distance to reach it and uh, expect to see some fireworks there. Yeah, and that was an excellent 12-meter uh, step putt from Rasmus. And this is a tricky hole, I would Very say. Very cool hole. Th hole 13, it's a par 4, 212 meters downhill. Very tight fairway on your second shot. You, you want to get the first one just somewhere over here so that you have any kind of angle that you can work through this main fairway. And it shapes up really nice. Quite a runaway green too. Yeah, I think this is ho this hole is all about where you land your first shot. It's like a very small landing zone that is uh, from where you can attack. If you go a little bit long, it will be very hard to to reach. There is a back door fairway as well, but it's so tight it's you can not really something you can work with. And here you get a good look at, at some of this awesome infrastructure. Look at that nice bench and this built-up tee pad. The majority of the holes do have this type of a thing. You know, you can have a break on any hole and be really comfortable. You, you know, these are always going to be dry no matter how much uh, precipitation or, or snow you get. You know, they, they're built up nice and high. Really magnificent work from the whole crew and everybody to make this place what it is. Thank you all for that. All okay. that Okay, on the FPO, we ha now have Evelina and in the lead, Henna Blomros one stroke behind. And Olivia, two strokes behind, she got herself a double bogey on six. Oh, disappointing. But, but we still, still do pace, have yeah. the feature card in the top. Katie Tette is also just there behind. And 
both Katie and Olivia got birdies now on hole seven. There you see Seppo's in the top ten. He is. He's yeah. probably one of the only guys still on the course that has a chance of making a run for that lead card. Look, he's so, uh, he has still six holes to go. So yeah. yeah, everyone else is in the clubhouse in the top ten. So nobody's really making a run from the late late tee times except him at this point. So we're wishing him the best, and if he can keep keep bogey free and uh, steal back a few more birds, he'll be right there in the mix. There's already a small separation there on the on the FPO side. Yeah, a little Just bit. two shots, but still they they are showing that they they why they are on that feature card. They they yeah, are there. They're, yeah, they're really well chosen. Yeah. They're starting to distance themselves a little. And Heidi, look at her. Yeah, plus seven, like a little bit surprising, but she's still not out of it. She's not a, no no not at all, but but uh, definitely a higher score than we were expecting. I expected something much better from her, but we, we have to wait and see what. She can tighten things yep. up on the back nine and, and still be in the mix. Those two ten downs are just mind blowing, though. Really, <laughs> ten hard, down. Hard to picture how that happened on a rainy day in Keep Bus A very difficult course. But that would be some 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 great rated rounds. I can't. I, I honestly yeah. did not expect to see any double digit scores for a single round in this event. Neither did I. I thought like when we saw that six down. I thought six yeah. might might be the top. You know. I mean. Uh, I, I mean. Yeah, that's some great shooting from all of those folks on the top there. <sighs> and Niklas is only one stroke behind Seppo. Easy to forget now when he has been struggling a bit, but that eagle did a lot. That eagle was really a helping hand in his score. Yeah, big clutch moment there. What are we seeing here? Looks like the card ahead of our uh, feature card is, is still trying to play out the hole. This one can be pretty demanding. Uh, it's a very cool tee shot, quite downhill, and you got to try to get it to land in this really narrow sort of strip. This is, uh, they're actually filled the landing zone where you want to be. So uh, I don't know if someone is about to throw from there or if someone has to, no, it looks like we're waiting for someone to throw. Maybe. I don't know. Hard to tell what's going on. Or is that just maybe the gallery waiting for to see the feature card throwing down there? But another good time to get a snack. Yep. I've seen quite quite often Oscar coming to, to join Niklas after finishing his round. Yeah, yeah, what a good guy. Yeah. Even in the rain he's you know, he's uh coming out to help his buddy and <laughs> Good friends, teammates in Discmania, and and two incredibly talented youngsters. Oh yeah, they are still so young, and they have already played quite a few years in the top. But yeah, they are so young, so we're going to see them for like ten, fifteen, decades, maybe even twenty years. Twenty years, still, yeah. Quality play from them. Hopefully, if they can stay <coughs> healthy and and everything. But I would like, yeah, like to say that one of those guys could could well be a world champion someday. Yeah, I would almost be surprised if we wouldn't see some of these like young Finnish guys already within a few years getting yeah. up there because they yeah. there are so many of them who the skills are yeah. there and they're they're getting that travel experience, you know, going over to the states uh, as much as they can. I know it's been impossible over the last couple of years because of the COVID situation, but they're they're really up for uh, learning more about the different geography in the U.S. and being able to compete at, on that high level over there. So. Really exciting to see what they can do. Here's Rasmus. Rasmus with two birdies in a row. And he's got himself the box, and this and is a pretty good looking shape. It is perfect. He gets down there also. Oh, oh, almost. Almost perfect, but he's still in great position there. Yeah, that's about where you want to be. It might be a little bit obstructed there by the tree. No, but, but that was a yeah. hyper aggressive shot. He was cool. trying to get yeah. way down there on that fairway. I, I like that. That was a great line. And Villa almost getting that eagle on the last hole, going with a similar, similar shot. Similar shot. Very cool, but he kicks in, and he might yeah. need to go for that back uh, backside. Yeah, there is a tiny little like footpath that works through on the on the very outer edge of that uh, of all those trees. It's it's not where you want to be, but it it can give you a, a little chance of hope if you overshoot the landing zone, like like he did there a little bit. Not sure if he got all the way to there to that path though. He might have no, to just pitch out to the main fairway to be honest, or do some 
crazy forehand roller or something. It was hard to say from that, from that angle, but here's Niklas. Oh, Ooh, that's not. That is a full-blown shank. Turned I out to be a roller. That's and that's not what he was trying to. Sh no, that's the worst shot I've ever seen Niklas throw. He has struggled a bit with his angles, and that's not something we usually see from him. But the well, the that that was the just odd, odd to see. Uh, yeah, we have seen some like just a little bit off, but this was completely. No, he's so tight. weird. What's he's so tight on? with his form no. that um, I think the weather and everything's maybe getting to him a little bit. But he's still still keeping it together. Three down. Yeah, he's he absolutely is fine. Not out of it, but he needs some kind of break to find his game again and that might be a little early too. Oh, great kick though. He's right Perfect there in the prime landing position. zone. Position. Perfect. Thought he overturned that as well, but just not quite as much and he got a just a really perfect kick, didn't he? That's where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right there. That's that should be a birdie every time, really. He's only got like maybe I'm guessing like 50, 60 meter a little upshot, simple putter approach kind of thing. Yeah, not much much more than that at least. Yeah. Then we get to see that cool looking green on 18. That little bunker trap there right in front of it, and then it rolls away. Such a cool way to finish the round. You know, so much can happen there. Yeah, that's a similar bunker to the whole 11 in Tali. You're yeah, yeah, true. Right in front of the green there. Guardian that you need to decide if you want to be aggressive or if you want to lay up before that. But I think it plays as a hazard, doesn't it? Or is it an OB even, this one? This one might be an OB. Not sure. Let's check that. Yeah, it's OB. Yeah. It's not like in Tali. No, it's similar shape, though. At least something. Yeah, well, it might even benefit benefit the player more in the sense that it's an OB. If you hit the slope and roll back in, then instead of playing it where it lies, you'll take it a meter in from there and have a pretty easy comeback. Yeah, then you're very close to the basket. So, yeah. And there we see our top tens. Evelina having a great round. Even through seven, Hannah and Olivia right behind her. And what whole, whole lead car doing great. Yeah, All within two strokes. Evelina and Hannah, they have both come to, to the US tour this year with high expectations. And none of them have really lived up to to their potential or what people were thinking. But they have been struggling and I think what they need is to come back home, play a few good tournaments on courses that they know get that confidence get back. that confidence back and it, it seems like they are doing just that they're doing great Happy here yeah. yeah yeah they both had some great moments over there in the states but definitely not to the level of consistency that that they were probably hoping to perform at and yeah not at all and yeah we have seen some 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 great shots and some great rounds but still if we look at the whole still the results yeah yeah, yeah they're not quite they're both still rated in the top 10 in the world and and fantastic players in their own rights and it can be a really big challenge to go to a foreign land and uh, there's lots of different weather and geography over there. Niklas, look at that tiny little gap, but he's got something. He's going to be aggressive. That actually lined up pretty good that he even has any chance. Here. How aggressive is he? He's, he's super so aggressive. aggressive. And, he's and he's way up there. Come on back now. Yeah, that's okay. Holy cow. Put, put your brakes. Wow. Oh, just circle sets again. What an awesome shot, though. <laughs> that was super tight. That tiny little wow, gap, and he just nailed it. Wow. With full speed, almost, yeah. like that mid-range. I mean, that was incredible. That's cool to see that even when he's having a tough round and when he's being upset and he being annoyed with his game and everything and things are not going his way, he really dares to be aggressive on that kind of shots. So yeah, and he's still yeah. that caliber of player that he can, you know, just do incredible things. But he, any, he, can tr he trusts his game, even on bad days. And, and that's what really separates him, I think, from many other players, that even those days when he's not really feeling it, he knows that he has it and just goes out there and performs instead of having... Yeah, he's got yeah. an incredibly tight Meltdowns. mental game. Yeah. Like he keeps it composed and and just a fierce, fierce competitor. There, here we see Vila. He didn't quite make it to that back door fairway, Almost but he's gonna try to work though. with yeah. it. He goes there. Oh, what a cool shot! He does reach something it. super flippy. Ooh, but it that was a in. really technical shot. I think it's still a great result from that where he was. It's a great because he couldn't have gone much 
slower because then it would he wouldn't have hit the gap. Yeah, and yeah. there wasn't anything he was working with. That was a really cool shape on that shot. It was something like some really crazy flippy mid or something that he. Yeah, might even be a putter or something. Yeah, but wow. something slow at least and and very flippy because he he that threw it like flat and it moved moved left to right like beautifully. <coughs> That's a high skill shot. Yeah, yeah, he should be well happy with that, and he still has a chance to save his birdie really with a huge putt. Seppo. Seppo had a good result with that kick. and Maybe he's a little further off than I called it, but... Uh, maybe more like 70, 80 meters. Perhaps. Than, yeah, 50, perhaps. 60. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe even more. But he makes it look easy. Look Skipping at right up look there. Look at this. Yep. Look Just at outside this. outside the bullseye for a bird. Excellent shot from Seppo. Well played. <sighs> no problem saving... Uh, or keeping his his scorecard clean from bur uh, bogeys. Uh. Playing very well. Look at this from this other angle. Oh, my oh, goodness. That's so tight. That tiny little gap, and <laughs> How he, he nailed went. it. Imagine if he hit anything there. Like, the, his oh. disc could be basically anywhere that on the course. fearless. Though. Yeah. Just fearless play. And then precision. Just pure precision on the line. That's super cool. Taking that Eagle McMahon clawed MD3. Uh, just heard that after this hole, we're going to get an interview with Jona Heinenen after that 10 down round. Cool. Can't Looking wait to hear to what that, he says. Yeah. You can see he's in the lead there, tied lead with Peter Jotsen. Yeah, guaranteed spot on our lead card. Excited to see him and Puru tomorrow. At the moment, Joni Peltonen will be our, our third member and Taro Jatinen. Seven down, so if Seppo can claw his way up or if Nicholas perhaps can also do some magic then we might get a chance to see these these guys again but but l look at that all those three guys in the top had turkey birdie. finishes yeah turkey finishes and wow. uh, that means that like there's a lot of chances for for these guys as well to to have similar result there in the end so they could be up there but it's super impressive to end your round in that That's way a great way to end your yeah. round a little turkey dinner oh, look at this look at this gobble, he gets gobble. it oh my gosh what a putt that spin <laughs> putt is just a work of art it's beautiful it looks so effortless and it's straight online all the way it's in the basket banged it right in there check it out from this angle right on the pole the whole way boom that's what got him the third place in copenhagen that exactly yeah. that putt and He's done it again. Great yeah, guy, great putter. His, yeah. his range on the putting green is, is really excellent. Niklas again from this distance. The fact that he can get a birdie from where he was is just is, is so impressive. Nine meters, 30 footer. He's got it. <laughs> it looks so easy. That one was right where it needed to be. How is that possible? That's so impressive. That was Yet an again. Incredible scramble for birdie. I mean. Great second shot and great putt. And he's still well in this thing now. That puts him at four down. Four down with that stretch of, I wouldn't say easy hole, but definitely birdieable holes in the end. And yeah. Rasmus also gets his putt. This is a... If he can get hot, mm. he can be on that lead card without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And if he's able to get that turkey finish like everyone's doing, that would go a long way. Seppo, great birdie there. So close to a star frame. But we will get to hear Jona Heinenen after his 10 down. No niin, Jona Heinenen. Sä oot pelannut kuule oikein upeen kierroksen. Mitä, mitäs fiiliksiä sulta siellä löytyy? Kiitos paljon. Eihän tässä paljon parempi fiilis voisi olla, että kymmenen alle ja ei paljon virheet tullut ja putit meni sisään. Niin mikäs tässä? Se kuulostaa oikein hyvältä. Kuvaile vähän tarkemmin meidän sun kierrosta. No mä heitin koko ajan oikeastaan aika hyvin, että mun ei tarvinnut hirveästi puttaa, mitä nyt muutama C2-putti lirvahti sisään, mutta muuten oli aika lailla nostoja ja ei ollut hirveästi ongelmia. Et silleen kun täällä radalla menee, niin sitten yleensä tuloskin on hyvä, että ei yhtäkään auttia ja noin. Kuulostaa mahtavalta. Jääkö sulla vielä jotain parannettavaa kesille? Olisiko mahdollista pelata paremmin kuin kymmenellä? No aina on mahdollista pelata paremmin, mutta kyllä mä sanoisin, että jos mä 
loput kesti pelaa lähellekään kymppialle, niin mä he, metin tyytyväinen. Kuulostaa hyvältä. Mikä sulla olisi tämmöinen maksi, maksimaalinen tulos, että jos sä ajattelet, parit huonot heidot pois sieltä, niin miinus kymppi oli nyt, mutta olisiko miinus 12, miinus 15? No ihan maksimaalinen varmaan joku 14 tälle ehkä. Ja se on, 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 on sun peli, mutta ehkä me huomenna nähdään vielä parannusta. Ei sitä ikinä tiedä. No, jääkö sulla vielä huomisella jotain odotuksia, että muuta kuin että sama, samanlainen kymppialle? No mä yritän pelaa omaa peliä ja välttää virheitä, niin se on tässä viime aikoina toiminut aika hyvin, kun on käynyt tässä pelailemaan, niin sillä mennään. Mahtavaa. Näyttää siltä, että tällä hetkellä te saattaisit päästä ehkä video- videokorttiin. Kyllä. Oletko aikaisemmin ollut? No, on ollut aikaisemmin jo. Useasti. No on muutamia kertoja. Mahtavaa. <laughs> Hei, kiitoksia sinulle haastattelusta ja oikein mahtavaa tota, väli- välitaukoa odotellessa huomista kierrosta. Kyllä, kiitos paljon. Kiitos. Do I have what it takes? I have the dedication. I have the right equipment. I have the fire. Zuka. Disc golf carts for a better game. Sulla on siinä purkka. Oh. Pearmintti. Sulla. Pullet peef. Eli yhtä nauta ja bearnaisen majoneesi. Hyvä mummo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Legendaarinen ylämummo. Se on voittajan valinta. Kotipitsasta. Welcome back to uh, weird graphic patterns and uh, basket 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously having a little bit of technical difficulties, most likely due to the rain. But thanks for joining us and coming on back. Thanks to our sponsors, everybody making this possible. All those contributions go a really long way to help. Yeah, you haven't missed anything. There's this sh- short walk here between hole 13 and 14. So they are heading up there, getting ready to play. And that is one of the most beautiful tee pads I've ever seen. You're going to see it soon. Yeah, this is magnificent. Yeah. They got it built up on a, a really high level. Looks like almost like a boat or, or somebody's like really impressive terrace patio thing. Here you here have we it. Can see on the flyby. Beautiful hole. Long. It's downhill, so these guys are able to reach it. But for most people, there you're just trying to land somewhere here, somewhere here in the fairway. It's OB all around, 155 meters, so 509 feet. Playing as the third hardest, yeah, 3.42 average. Eight percent of the field able to birdie it, though. That's pretty impressive for yeah. all those guys. I think that uh, we have some guys on this card that actually could. And oh yeah, this is I think they not do it, but gonna be one of them though. Mm. Yeah, just overturned it a little. And that it could be even difficult to get up and down from there. Yeah, I could almost almost make the decision to re tee if he does if he's in a bad position because it might be hard to gain some distance if he's in a bad a bad think, spot there. I think he'll probably try to try to throw from there, but it's yeah. hard, hard to tell exactly where it ended up. I think he's safe anyway. Yeah, he's not going to be OB. I was more me more on the sides left think, and right. I was more thinking that if he's in a slope and sure, it might be sure. hard to gain some could distance. Could be an option. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But maybe not. Niklas, is he going for the birdie? You think? Oh yeah, he's always going for the birdie. He's never met a hole he can't attack. Does he catch? This is going to fade out too much, no. though. Oh, I hope it stays in bounds. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, he got to that wide part of the fairway, way up there. So he's 
It's still possible to birdie. He has to look for a long, two, yeah. long putt, yeah. Yeah, he's about 15, 16 meters out. And Seppo knows that 155 meters from this height is no problem. Yeah, uh, he's he's probably had aces this long before. <laughs> yeah, he's really That's a great line. It. Really cool shot. That's going to be close. Re Keeping it right up almost there. Almost just oh on yeah. circle's edge, just outside, 12, 13 meters maybe. Yeah, nicely done. Very good shot. Rasmus. Got all what the distance. What kind of distance does he have? Probably not that much less at least. Oh, I think he can do this mm. too. He's already showed some pretty great shots. He's going That's straighter. A little bit I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's coming back. If it works out, it's great. Almost. Uh, oh, that is just on the OB edge. line. Circle's edge, but it's OB because... Is it OB? Is yeah. it just on the edge? No, nah, I think it's out. If uh, it's uh, out, then it's really bad because then he, he went out really all early. The way back, yeah. yeah. Let's see. I hope he's lucky, but I don't think he is. No, I don't think uh, he he got inbounds at any point over on that side. But really close to being a, an incredibly good shot. A super close. If he could have just got a little more scoot, he would have a circle's edge putt for the birdie. That OB is pretty tight there on the on that side. It, the wider part of the fairway is where you saw Seppo and, and Niklas end up, but he was really going to try to put it close. Might have just had a little bit too much Anheuser on it and maybe not quite enough height in order for it to fade back in time. Yeah, probably, but... Pretty great shot, though, really. Good distance and everything. I mean, Oh, here we see Vila. Yeah, he's not Ooh. in too bad a shape. No, he, he he's having flat ground there. He's not on yeah. that, like... And he's in bounce. He was pretty close to being yeah. out of bounce too. I mean that that would have been kind of worst case. That's okay. Now we get to see what he can do from standstill also. Still a long ways. Yeah, but he's being aggressive here. He's yep. going for the basket. Got the stability to come back. Can he save the par from that? I think so. Yes, he's well inside Most the circle. Definitely. Beautiful shot. Great recovery there after a, a bit of a shank off the tee. Looks more like a par two hole is <laughs> with these guys <laughs> throwing it. <laughs> They're amazing. Now they are making it look easy and it's so much power you need to be able to reach it from standstill there. It's like 120, 30 meters almost from standstill. And it's Very also impressive. from that position, it's a bit uphill, I think even so. Yeah, once you end up down there. Yeah. Beautifully done. Great recovery shot from Bile. Now we're going to get a, a little look at the uh, shot from Rasmus if he was... Well, maybe not, but... I wonder if, if, he, if oh, we're going to see Niklas throw first before we get to see if he's in... No, we're seeing that Rasmus never made okay, it no, Okay, no, yeah. okay. They didn't even go, they need to go and check it. No, no. They, we couldn't quite tell from the angle, but no. I, was, I was pretty sure he didn't make it in. Yeah, you were right. And there we can see... He's got himself a very difficult upshot to try to save the bogey. That looks good, though. Oh, he's done it well. That should be really close. Perfect. Right on the bullseye's edge there. Good recovery. Yeah, that was an important shot because that could have been a big number if he would have missed that. Or Yeah, yeah you, last thing you want to do is go OB again after that, and then, you know, then you're in all kinds of trouble. He's right now placed on 52nd... Uh, a 52nd place, and that's right in the middle of the field. Um, yeah, I, I think he's okay. he would have, of course, wanted more so far, but he's also not one of the highest rated players. So uh, he's, I think he's rated right there in the middle somewhere. So, uh -huh. I think I'm really impressed with the way that he's bounced back. You know, he had those those obvious nerves on the, on the first few holes and even took yeah. a triple bogey there on that hole three. And uh, after that, he's really really played pretty pretty solid, pretty consistent, you know. He hasn't done anything, you know, too incredible, but he, he definitely hasn't uh, given up a bunch of ground after that. No, I'm, I'm just more than just slightly impressed to see what he's... Uh, he's done well. He's done so far. Definitely a shaky start, but yeah. I think that's down to the nerves with the live coverage and all. Niklas Longpot. Oh. No, did not really go for that as much as he needed to. He, You saw he was disappointed already when he... And yeah, it yeah. just didn't come out the way he was hoping. No. And maybe just a slight uh, lack of commitment or, or just a misrelease. 
He definitely wanted it, but yeah, he did. Kind of fluffed it a little bit. Yeah, Maybe he didn't really give it a chance. A little bit on yeah. that one. Seppo then, a bit closer. Yeah, he's about 12 meters. And another birdie putt, and let's see if he can really he's commit lined, to this one. He's lined up a step putt. He's he's pretty good at this. He has a, a very short stance step putter. Oh, yes. Pretty good. <laughs> so great to see Seppo make that. Pretty good. Yeah, beautiful step putt. And he's on pace to get on our lead card. Six down. Six down with four to go. Very exciting. Hope we can see him again tomorrow. So fun to watch. He's fifth. He's just outside the lead card right now. Ooh, nice he left saving there. par from that. That's that's a great par after that tee shot. Yeah, great. That's just as impressive as the birdie we just saw. The yeah, well done to get up and down after that. Nice one. Yeah. Okay result, but I think Niklas is still a di bit disappointed of that long putt that he didn't really give a chance to go in. And, and, and a good bogey save from Rasmus yeah. as well. Good and important bogey save. Mm -hmm. This next one's a really, really difficult shot to birdie at least. Oh, here we get a great look at this different angle. Boom. Straight and in. Fist pump. Wave to the crowd. Very happy with that. Yeah, check out this beautiful hole here. All that, that incredible woodwork at, as we see on so many of these holes. This one's tough. 146 meters. It is downhill, but the basket's on this mound. There's OB on the right and even on the left, but it shouldn't come into play much. And there's OB behind too, which is actually pretty close to the to the circle's edge. Yeah, they can be aggressive uh, and then just hope that they are close enough to the basket because it's not a basket that you want to be aggressive on if you're not close enough. Right. But because yeah. of that OB and also that it's up on that hill, it's not an easy task to to go for it. So 10 birdies from the field on this one so far. That's pretty impressive. That's good, yeah. Yeah, you need a, a really, really good tee shot to give yourself a chance on this one. Evelina Salonen holding on to that lead just with Henna one stroke behind and that's how it looked more or less whole last season. Evelina and Henna battling for the top but now we have some players really close behind both Katie Tett and Olivia Shinstedt and nice to see. I'm happy that they are really it's not just a two person battle. It's really open field yeah it's great to see yeah. see other players pushing pushing them to their limits and uh making them do the best they can to win seppel's got the box he's taking that f1 he's been throwing that really well he's gonna probably put a little bit of anheuser on this one and try to get it to flex back right up onto the green hopefully that's exactly what he's oh, doing he's but i think happy. that's too much it's okay though. Should be an easy par at least. Easy par, yeah. But not what maybe what he wanted. No, you heard no. him say oh no right out of mm -hmm. the hand. Like he was maybe he needs to throw that even a little bit flatter with his power, yeah. Might have just put a little touch too much Anheuser on it. V lay up next. Going with a similar shot, seems like. Yeah. Type of fairway driver, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's very similar, a little but better. much better angle and more stability on that disc. Yeah, so it's got the height to work back. And that's a birdie. That's Park a birdie. <laughs> Holy, oh my goodness. What a shot. Look, you cannot do that any better. How could it stick on that <laughs> on that mound like that? That was just absolutely that, perfect. You can't do it any better. Like, wow. wow. I, I've never seen anybody even get close on this one, really, <laughs> and that was just parked up on the mound. Okay, that's why he's king. That, yeah, That's he's why he's king of Kippas. Yeah, shots like that. My gracious. That was something real special. It looked great 
all the way you saw it, it was the pure, pure right line, stability yeah. on the disc right angle and right speed and he got yeah. everything just right with that one Let's see if nikos can do something also similar. looks good yeah uh, now that's a yeah. little bit overturned maybe it's gonna be pretty good though pin high i think yeah that's okay yeah not too bad kind of a scary putt to run but I, uh, yeah we'll see what he does Let's see, let's see if Rasmus can get this one close. Looks like the rain has let up, which is nice. Maybe they're having a... This is good, I think. This is... Re this oh, that's great. Yeah. It's going to be in the circle, yeah. right? Or just Ooh, outside. long, okay. but great Pretty shot. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good, yeah. He's 15 meters out. Got himself a, about a 45-footer. Look at this again. High light shot. Oh, this is crazy good. Look at that, just coming back right now, right on point. Hits <laughs> the I'm hole and just settles right under the basket. I'm at loss for words. I just want to like sit in with an open mouth and watch yeah. that all day. That's one of the best shots you'll ever see. Perfect angle control, speed. Uh, you know. Yeah, so we will see at least one birdie. Uh, probably not another one. I doubt that they will go that aggressive because you have so much to lose being aggressive on this one. It's yeah, this is those one of those holes where you can end mm -hmm. up putting back and forth at it if you're not careful. Yeah, and I if you hit metal, it's going to roll away. It's very yeah. unlikely that that it's it's going to stay up there. It's so small hill with such a like yeah, pointy it's top it's there. So very, yeah. very tight mound there. Yeah, like steep steep on all sides and just really surprised that uh, that someone could stick a disc up there off the tee uh, from that distance is really really impressive that's cool that's so cool yeah we're getting a look at our scorecard rasmus and vile not having the day they were looking for but uh nikos and seppo hanging right in there he's probably just going to try to put this close and yeah. i think he's done a pretty good job of that now he wasn't close enough to even give it yeah, a chance yeah no way no way but even that upshot, yeah, it's a bit touchy with that mount. But he did a good job. He put it right in the bullseye. Right on the edge of it, at least. Who's up next? Either probably Rasmus. It's like a one meter radius up there that you can even land. Yeah, if exactly. You hit Look, yeah. The bullseye is like halfway down the mound. How is it possible? It's so small landing zone, and he got himself... That right there. So remarkable. Uh. That mound looks smaller on camera here. This is actually a pretty big mound. It looks like a little tiny hill thing, but it's actually like much more. Yeah, it's 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 not a small thing. Like Just looks like a tiny hump here, but it is actually much steeper than, than it looks on camera. No crazy aggressive play from Niklas and yeah, smart. Probably not from Rasmus. No, I mean you just can't really run this. But he's you? maybe going Taking for something. Time, yeah, but it would be a highlight putt if he's able to connect. Is he actually gonna do that? He might be is having he? that kind of round that he wants. Is it. he? Is he? He, he is. did it! Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> what a putt! Oh, that's that is so ballsy. Uh, he just so nailed it right in the guts. Yeah, but look how, how like he he went so high, really dropped it in the basket, oh and that's what you man. want need to do if you want to go aggressive here because. Yeah. That was impressive. Incredible. Give us a replay on that. Oh, most definitely. And look at this Relay with that CTP. <laughs> Clap <laughs> your hands. Wow. He's not giving up his crown. I want to see a replay on that. Yes, Here thank we go. you. Check it out from another angle. So gutsy. Look at it. And it's just perfect. Ah, perfect right in the heart. Up. Just banged it. Excellent shot, Rasmus. That was amazing. It looked even better from that angle. <laughs> that was something. Yeah. Here's a cool hole. Hole 16, par 3, 120 meters. One of the most open shots on the whole course, but then it kind of tightens up here on the green where it, it, it slopes up really steeply. Rollaways are a, a big possibility. Yeah. But playing uh, pretty decent for the field. 2.86 average, one of the easier ones. Yeah, if you want to have a birdie, th there's basically just one thing you can do, and that's 
shooting hard and straight right yeah, into that mountain. Right yeah. into that hill. Bang side. it and pray that it stays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most likely it will not. <laughs> but uh, I will. I wouldn't say most likely. It could, but it could ra also roll down. But even if it rolls down, you have quite a safe par from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with these guys' power, they can they can kind of get it to maybe be coming in a little bit softer. Uh, yeah, that's, that's at, at that height, but I can't really dream of it. But this whole brought to you by Prodigy Discs. Villa first, of course, and that's not a good shot. No, it's way off on the right side, which actually makes it kind of difficult because over there it's, it's a lot of trees. It's and pin high though, but it's yeah. still tricky. It's a scary uh, place mm -hmm. to be though because there's a lot of trees and then the roll away potential. I guess he's going to have to lay it up, but he's going to have to even, even be careful about the way he does that. Yeah, he needs to be really careful and s touch the soft shot. And this has it enough turn. I like yeah. this, actually. This good, good. This good. Oh, he just... Wow! He oh, stop it. there. He stops. Wow, what a great <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, but that's good if you come in with a little bit of turn. Yeah, then it's, yeah the angle's right. It's going to land softer that way. Oh, I'm so impressed with that. Rasmus is turning it on. He's not no. giving up on the round at all. He's proven his worth here. Well deserved to be on this feature card. I was Some amazing asking cuts. a few holes ago, asking what kind of power does he have, and he shows that oh, he has he's more. he's got it all. Look, that's similar, but it doesn't have enough. Oh, good kick, though. That was a great kick, wasn't it? Great kick. That would have ended up far away from the basket. I think he's on circle's edge now. Yeah, he can. is. If he wants to run it, he can. I think he's even closer. I mean, it's a scary putt still, because if it hits something, it's most likely rolling down the hill, but... He may elect to lay it up. We're not sure. I, I think he's. I think he's gonna go for that. Too. Yeah. 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 I think there's a, plenty of space there. It's uphill. I mean, he's just gonna want to really, really dial it in and make sure he connects on the chains. Nicholas has definitely got the power for this one. Yeah, we saw it on this hole a few days ago, and uh, it looked quite good. Yeah, he made it look pretty easy, <laughs> putting it way up there. Could maybe even give it an ace run with his power. <coughs> be quite, a, quite a crazy one, but oh, that's a little bit lower. Oh, does it have enough turn? No, it does not. But he's, yeah, he's there great. in the yeah. circle. Pin high, nine meters. Excellent shot. Scary okay. putt though. But we no, it happened though. I think he's that's that's right in his range. He doesn't stress he about is, no. those kind of things, does he? Here we get another look at Rasmus. Some great replays, back to back. That getting amazing putt and then the perfect angle on this so far out there and it gets it to flatten out right at the point when it yeah. needs to and it just bam and it boom, just parked it beautifully stops. done just stops yeah yeah very well played excellent shooting still the same top four in the fpo field nothing big happening there yet and we are soon gonna head over to them there you can see it evelina in the lead but not Super in any pace, yeah. comfortable lead at all no no everyone's within three strokes on that feature card olivia with a couple of unfortunate double bogeys but uh, the, the birdies right there to keep her in, keep her in the mix those are impressive birdies on five and seven. Oh yeah you see katie also got one of them nice very well played Looking forward to seeing some of that action. Don't step on that disc. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Vile. Uh, yeah, he pretty well obstructed. It's going to be a l scary shot and with a potential risk for a roll away. Looks like he's going to have to Anheuser around that. Oh, come on, stay there. Stay nice. there, yeah, it stays, and it was close even to go in. Gave it a chance, yeah. didn't he? That was a great run. Impressive. And it settled right up there for a tap-in par. And uh, I think that Sepp was going to go for this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's feeling his putt today. He's got the confidence. He's actually inside circle one. So he is, yeah. Maybe, maybe eight meters uphill, so it's kind of hard to gauge the distance, but... But still a risky putt. Yeah. Oh, but it stays. It stays. It stays. Okay. Oh, he almost had it. You. Almost had it. He wanted it. 
uh, he, he got a lot of chains there. Yeah, you can see he he got disappointed, but he also not as disappointed because he he knows what could have happened. Right, slightly yeah. relieved, disappointed initially, but relieved to have it settle up so yeah. close. And yeah, yeah, that was just a, a little bit left. Yeah, but perfect height and everything else. Niklas with the similar distance, but completely different kind of putting. This is pin yeah. high, more or less. And he has to straddle a little bit. It's, it's not his normal putt. But it was close enough for him to be comfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's. I'm pretty sure he's got this. I'd be quite surprised to see him miss. But it hasn't been his, his best round on the green. I mean, he's... A few surprising misses. Yeah, he's missed a yeah. couple that you wouldn't quite expect. See if he can dial this one in. Could go a long way. Oh, yeah. Peter. And Beautiful. even those misses, they have been so close that they could have oh, just... like yeah. It's not like he's off. No, Just no. been a bit unlucky, and he really proves here that oh, even he's, he's a, a bit world, tricky... World-class player. Yeah. Looks so safe. He's five down. Still right in the yeah. mix. If he, can, if he can birdie out, he... It's right there. And Seppo is pretty much tapping in the par, yeah. Tapping in the par, most likely, yes. He's six down. Great. With two holes to go. Not going to get himself up in the lead. But he can be on our lead card. He could. He's going to need at least one more birdie. Yeah, and with his low PTJ number, he's gonna. it's going to be enough for him to, to get... Yep. One birdie. Yeah, and with that bogey free round too. Yeah. Really, really well played so far. I can't remember how it goes after the on the first round. It might be the PDGA number, yeah. I I'm not sure. Niklas. Who would not be scared to putt from there? Boom. I would be. Right in the middle. Great shot. Niklas is not. Another one of these incredible tee pads. Ah, oh, this is m maybe my favorite hole on the course because I can actually <laughs> reach it. You had a great birdie it, on it, it too. It's that a was fantastic. It's a beautiful hole and just throw a bit, uh, like you, you want to slide up towards this basket because this is not normal grass as you can see. It's some kind of artificial um, turf, plastic turf. Yeah, yeah. Astro turf. Yeah. yeah, it's a very cool hole brought to you by Koti Pizza, downhill. Really touchy. You know, you want to put it as close as you can. There's a little bit of a mound that's on. There's OB all on the left side. It's actually an island hole. And you go to the drop zone if you're, if you're OB on your drive. So the drop zone's about maybe 15, 16 meters with, the yeah. with OB behind. Is it possible to run it from the drop zone? These guys uh, <laughs> would probably elect to lay it up. I ran it and made it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's I, that's I, what I wanted to tell. That's how I do yeah. it. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I like big putts, and I cannot lie. Yeah, that's true. You do. Here we go. Rasmus got the box after some really impressive shots as of late. This is a really fun hole to play because there's just so much you can do. I don't like the look of no, this, though. This, this was, again, an early release. And he's out there on the parking lot, which is OB. Yeah. Yeah, he just... Surprising to see that... Mm. Just came out a little early with a bit too much hyzer, maybe. Oh. And he was thinking maybe it would flip up, but I don't think he got the the angle or the release point exactly right. You don't need to think about the distance. Just throw something straight, and it will slide up there. I think that's my... Yeah, yeah, and there's not a lot of wind, so the wind is usually the factor yeah. on this hole. That's true, yeah. But it, it's not really a factor at all today. Very so calm. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to see him miss that one. But it, uh, quite but a it few is of it those early releases. Oh, yeah. sure, and it is a very difficult hole. It, it's hard to get it just right. You can see that it's, it's not the biggest island. Uh -huh. Oh, look at this. This is good. Yep, this is what you said. You want to just hit it there and yeah. slide it right up. Because it, it will get quite a bit of scoot on that turf. It, yeah. It's not going to stop there, or it's not going to do anything crazy. So yeah, he's he's that was smart play. Yeah. And that's just how you, you drew it up, right? You just, just kind of smash it straight, let it let it scoot right up to the to the base if you can. Anywhere in the circle is pretty fine. Filet, this early, is early release? Is yeah, it's not good. I think he's going to be out on the... By a long shot. On the parking lot. And there you see it's you know... Should be an easy hole, but it's not. 
you know? of course it's easy to say when you're playing a practice round in the sun and having just a relaxed day but this is a competition they are they're trying to yeah yeah and it it, it's it's different it's a touchy shot yeah. it's a touchy it shot is. but it is definitely birdieable for most players in in the oh come on not if just that in the gets field but even a lot of comes back oh that's great it's gonna be great parked Oh or no no it's not it's out is it safe it's no it's safe he's just safe they're clapping yeah 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 look good oh that kind of kind of hyzered a little more than my like <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah. skipped a little bit but yeah i got worried there he's gonna be fine with that that should be a birdie yeah he's pin high about six seven meters maybe five so yeah two two guys going to the drop zone Seppo and Niklas will have birdie putts. Niklas is about nine meters. A little bit uphill. Shouldn't be a problem for him. Seppo's a bit closer. But he was flirting with that OB right on the edge. Yeah, I would I would want to see how, how close it is because it's very close to that line. I I think at least, yeah. Yeah, it it is a scary shot from that drop zone, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, b b because you have the the OB just behind the basket, and you are putting uphill, so you need to put so much power on it. So if yeah. you miss, you're most likely going to be on the parking lot. Yeah, I, I would. Mm -hmm. I think these guys might lay this up. I don't know, Rasmus. He's got the guts. I think he's going <laughs> to go for showed, it. He showed us. Yeah, the last he showed he's not yeah. afraid of a uh, in any putts really. Yeah, he looks like he's lining up a nice little stepper. He he's definitely going for it. Yeah, he's I like feeling this. It. Come on. Show him how it's done. Come on. Oh, go in. No. no Just I thought it was good, but it's safe. Though, I think. I think it's safe. Yeah, it looked like it curled yeah. nicely. I think he got he got kind of lucky that it. Uh, or he gave it a you know a soft run so that it. Well, it was great height and uh, great yeah. speed and everything. It looked a little bit to the right. And he's running it too. Oh, okay, okay. Come on. That's going to cost yeah. him. But that's okay. He's. Well, uh, he's circles edge for both. That's, that's, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. Ah, not, not an easy one. And again, he's putting towards the OB, but not as scary from there. Very cool hole, though. Great hole design. I like what they've done with that drop zone. Give you a chance to save the par, but also, you know, you need big to time yeah. risk reward. It's a risk that you need to. Uh, to think if is it worth it or not but it's that kind of hole you really want to birdie so it gives you a chance to salvage some dignity with that big putt on the drop zone oh almost and, and this rolls down best. again it's gonna be a he's gonna have oh okay it's curls back up so from there he should be able to make it yeah quite easily still but still. a little bit of work to mm. do but that's for a five yeah not what you're looking for nico's trying to collect his birdie Having a short conversation with Seppo. I guess Seppo might have been a little bit further than we realized if he's... Yeah, because he's not quite pin high, so he's he is near the circle's edge. But I would have thought, thought Nikos was further out, though, there. Wouldn't you have thought? Yeah, I, thought, I think so. I wonder why. This looks like Seppo is about seven or we'll eight. We'll see maybe OB and... No, he can't up. No, 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 uh. no, no. no. He, he's safe, but... I think Nikos was nine meters, and this looks mm. like seven or eight. Maybe they were just confused about uh, the actual distance. No. Ah, Again, you dang. He, when he's going for those, he's kind of short armed it a little yeah. bit, maybe. Uh, just that's a little bit too tense, maybe to let let the stroke kind of really flow fluidly. Imagine what score he would have had if he would have been able to get those. He still played an excellent round. He, uh, yeah, I, I'm not taking anything away from that. Like he's an amazing player, amazing oh, yeah, round, yeah. and everything. But it's so. Oh, frustrating to see. You want to see those putts go yeah, in. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And he wasn't off by much. You know, just, just needed a little more pop on it. Yeah. Let's see if Nikos can get his birdie. The only one for a feature card. Nicely done. So now, now he's still right in the mix. We he's six up, down, and we have talked Seppo. about that he has a frustrating round. <laughs> yeah, imagine what he could do if everything was going his way. Yeah. He'd be right up in that double-digit mark, no doubt about it. There you go. Thank you. Nice tight putt. Thank you, basket. Thank you, disc. Thank you, Ville. That hurts a little bit, though. Five, yeah. Five's not what you want on this hole. Oh, no. 
Rasmus. No! Oh. Oh. It uh, was a bit too much on the right, but still. Slightly yeah. right, but it just kind of like. I'm going to have a big number for him page. as well. He's yeah. going to also get a five. Yeah, surprising. There you go. Okay, so that hole really causing a lot more carnage for our feature card than you What a expect. surprise. You know, only one birdie and then two double bogeys? Two double bogeys. That's kind of shocking. Not what I thought we would see here. Very surprising. But that's what you were talking about. It's the... Uh, it's a risk reward. Risk yeah. reward. The risk is Ooh, quite that great. Was so close. Yeah, just a little bit down, and it looked both of those putts looked good out of the hand, but it was. Yeah, he gave it a oh. chance. Another one of these awesome tee pads. Last Final hole. hole. Yeah. Par four, 178 meters, 584 feet. Playing as the 13th hardest, right there around par. Brought to you by Prodigy Discs. And nothing strange about this hole. It's straight shot with OB on the right and OB on the left. So keep it in the middle of the fairway. This little bunker is also OB. So yeah, watch out for that. But just keep and it straight. The mound on the end can, can be. That nifty. can happen a few things. Yeah, when you approach, that's most definitely. But yeah, yeah, kind of a, a straightforward and very attackable for these guys. The guys that throw this far can can get themselves up there for. Just a, a really easy kind of jump putt approach, you know, for yeah, a yeah. simple birdie. It's 178 meters, but it's from an elevated tee pad, so yeah, they can really crush it up there. Yeah. For for most people, it's it's two placement shots will get you the birdie. You know, just you just want to get clean off the tee and get yourself up there so that you can kind of avoid that OB trap and not juice it too far to roll roll away behind the hill, because there is OB back there. That's a possibility too. So there's plenty that can go wrong, but it's definitely attackable for. For even the shorter arm guys. It is, yeah. Very cool hole though. A lot going on. Everything that is from these kind of big elevated tee pads feels so like luxurious to play from. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun. Yeah. It just it's a really special place and they've they put in so much work, so all that shines through into the player experience and into the moment that you get when you're on that tee. It's a special feeling. Yeah. Look at this, Evelina and Henna, they are doing what they ha are usually doing when they're playing yep. in Finland. They are Yep, distancing separating themselves, themselves the yeah yeah that's what they tend to do it's they're match kind of play when these two guys uh, the girls are playing yeah, yeah they're good friends and they're kind of in a league of their own in a lot of ways but yeah. it's nice when when people perform up to that level and push them a little bit but they're right here in their comfort zone you know leading the pack so final hole for our mpo feature card it's been a wild round Nicholas so much excitement six down you know what both Seppo and Niklas could actually leech, reach the lead card. Yeah, they are just one behind Tero Jatinen, who is right now the fourth place, seven down. So yeah, I don't know about the PDGA numbers or so, but but they well, if Seppo can birdie it, I think he's going to be guaranteed on our lead card because yeah. he has a low PDGA number and he's played a clean round. So whatever the criteria is for that that final position, it will definitely go to him. And Niklas That's is way OB, OB, so he is not going to be on the lead card tomorrow. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. He ruined his chances with that shot, and uh, he still got quite some distance. He can save a par from there, but and he's still probably going to find himself on that chase card. So not yeah. not out of this uh, event in by any stretch of the imagination. Oh no 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 no! He he's gonna he had a frustrating round, but we know he can do a lot better, and he'll be coming back fired up. He's most likely gonna gonna be able to save a par from there. But oh look at this! This is great. Going nice and wide, wide over to right in the center of the fairway, and way up there. Oh, he is in a great position I like to that. attack the lead card. Or yeah, 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 let's hope he can put that close so he doesn't have to stress on that putt at all, you know. Keeping it clean. That's not that many who have been able to. Fantastic. Oh, oh that's overturned. Oh, you see his face. He was just grimaced in disgust. He was trying to gain a little bit more distance than he had control over it. Then he, yeah, and it yeah. he just flipped that over to names. Mistake on the angle. Maybe a little greedy. And that looks, looks similar. like it's the exact yeah. same thing. And wind's not an issue. So those are pretty poor tee shots from the guys on this level. Yeah, that's not, That's just like what is <laughs> Yeah, the errors, basically. Yeah, unforced yeah. errors. Yeah, unforced, exactly. that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Unfortunate, sure where you yeah. Were going with that. Yeah, no, I got you. <laughs> yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. Totally unforced errors. Like, uh, unforced. Really trying for too much, you know, just just 
way too much Anheuser on those and, you know, miles out of bounds. Unfortunate errors, you can also say. But right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is unfortunate, <laughs> but also unforced. Yeah. And kind of unexpected as well. Yeah. Uncharacteristic as well, perhaps. Well, may maybe getting tired. Maybe it's been a long, wet round. Yeah. Very moist out there. and Yeah, and it starts to kind of, you know, your clothes are already soaked. Your bag's all wet. The discs are all wet. You're doing your best to keep them dry, but these kind of rounds are, are a little bit like draining of your energy. It's a long course, and your arm is feeling it after this 18 holes. Here, so Yeah. Yeah, even in, in great conditions like we had, it'll, it'll wear you out. Yeah. But only one guy staying in bounds. That's that's definitely disappointing. That's not what we wanted to see here. Kind of surprising, yeah. Of course, there there's OB on both sides, but it's wide enough for for anyone to 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 stay in bounds here. So yeah, and and without the wind, it it really shouldn't be too hard to control a disc up into that no. fairway. The only thing I can think that it's a bit tempting to to try to, try to get gain a little bit more distance than maybe you're comfortable with because sure yeah. sure but if you're not going for the ego it doesn't really do you yeah. too much good you know it's more about control and uh, you just want to be in bounds that that looks really good though it's really good I think he's gonna be tapping in for oh no, no, he gets he's that oh and he didn't cross in on the front side so that's gonna be an extremely scary putt for a double that's gonna be for a double because now he has already two extra OB strokes. He is dropping down far. He's already oh, that, on 79. Bogey. Sorry, sorry it, it will be for bogey, yeah. Yeah, because three shots. Yeah, it's a par four. Sorry, yeah, 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 you're, yeah. you're right. But par still, four. but still, it's going to be a scary putt regardless. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, he's outside the circle and that huge oh. mound behind. I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot to lose at this point. He's not really playing for the win anymore, but uh, he can be aggressive, and then that might, might be wha why he also missed that tee shot that he wanted. Maybe, maybe yeah. he was trying to do something special. I mean, he's plus four, so he is not yeah. in any way kind of sad to see. He was, yeah. you know, one of the favorites coming in. And he's, he's more or less shot himself out of contention for the for the win here. That might just be why he's also so far down. Yeah, too much pressure. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. He can still uh, battle back, have a co you know two oh great yeah. rounds, and put himself in maybe in the top ten or twenty. But yeah, it's a long road. Rasmus, this looks a bit better. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Fantastic. Yeah. So he good. saves the par with that most yeah, most yeah, probably with that throw. Yeah. Very well executed shot. He's two over par right now, placed sixty five, sixty fifth. So yeah, he's done some amazing things. Sad to see a couple of those uh, holes that really bit him. Yeah, that three and seven. Triple bogey on three, yeah. and yeah, take those off, and he's way under par. He is. He has showed a great skill and a lot of highlight shots. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Would have loved to see some more of him, but I'm sure we will at some point. Oh, in the future, most definitely. He's got a lot of potential, and he's really proven himself to to be of this quality, deserving to be on this feature card. But not tomorrow. Nope. No, nope. just a, a little bit of nerves in the beginning, and then. A little bit of an unfortunate result on 17 really cost him a lot, but Nicholas has taken this uh, tactic that he uses so much for his approach game. He trusts it a lot, and it's it's very effective. Yeah, and even if Nicholas gets this in with two shots, he will still not reach the lead card now. But I, I doubt he's running this. That looks a little wide. Is his finger bothering him? No, it looks. Oh, and he gets a roll away again. It looks like he was kind of uh, giving some attention to his hand or I finger saw that. or something. That maybe he, something wasn't going too good with his... Could have been a splinter or a broken, broken nail. nail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hard to say. Maybe he just definitely had a mosquito bites. <laughs> definitely showing some discomfort yeah. anyway with that throwing hand. And that could be a, a big issue. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Step four. four. Mm. Oh, this. Come on back. Oh, yeah. Stand soft. And yes, with yes. the putts now he will... Uh, Get himself up there on the lead card tomorrow, and that would be huge. Six meter putt to land himself on our lead card. We're hoping he makes it. It's a bit of a nervy one, but he's pretty close. So I, I'd like to believe he can connect there. Yeah. Let's hope he can relax and breathe and just, uh, just execute a simple putt there. Yeah. 
Of course, with all the implications, it's never simple, is it? No, I can <laughs> I can say that it, no putting Even here on this green is easy, yeah, and especially true, not in a situation true. like yeah. this when Where it matters so much. Yeah, yeah, trying to get yourself up on the lead card in a Prodigy Disc Pro Tour yeah. competition. That I, no, it's not easy. No, not at all. But he represents his sponsor so well. And his country and uh, the whole community, the disc golf community, we're so grateful to have him. Niklas. No, it's not him. Wow, wow look. What a I thought putt. we were going to see Niklas first, but no, that was... Vile, yeah, for his bogue. And that's a huge save because that he... That was a great putt. His putting's awesome, isn't it? That yeah. spin putt is so tight. Just nails it in there. Just sneaks it over the rim and it just doesn't give it anything. Like any now we're chance to spit out. Yeah, now we get to see Niklas. Okay. Was he safe? Yeah, I think so. No, or no, maybe not. Oh. Yeah. Bummer. So he's now putting for double bogey. Okay, that so he will move him away from the chase card as well. That's not good. Not to finish. He's right there in the mix. There's a lot of good players down on four under par. So, like, there could be a really hot card, a few strokes back and maybe they can inspire each other to some great scores and Seppo electing to straddle here yeah and does it welcome Excellent. to the lead card tomorrow Seppo Payo great round Bogey great three clean sheet in those Seven conditions down. that is so impressive S yeah he, he showed so much grit and so much quality and all of those shots that scramble game he <laughs> heard us before. He's, we, we were talking about 6-7 down being a good result, and he, he, did it. he did everything he had to do. Yeah. Could have been even closer to that 10 if he would have made a couple of those putts that were just a little bit off. But anyway, I mean, I incredible performance. Fantastic result. So our lead card tomorrow will be Jona Heinonen, Peter Jutsen, both 10 down. Then we will have Joni Peltonen, 8 down, and Seppo Paio, 7 down. Such a cool card. That's well, going to be that's awesome. Really Can't exciting. wait. Yeah, yeah, we got the legend, Jona Heinen, and also really, really high quality player. And then two pretty new faces. I, I think I've never seen either of those guys play. Are you familiar with any of any uh, them? Not super much, at least. It's going to be it's going to be exciting to see them both, and especially Peter Jotsen with that ten down. Like, yeah, can he do something can similar? He, uh, can he back that up and solidify the cloud? I mean, wouldn't that be something? Put together a couple. Mm -hmm couple rounds like that and he's right in the mix for the win. Jona Heinen and I was watching in the European Championships where he finished third and that he was great. He oh was yeah. so hot there. So he's got I, a game. Yeah, he's I'm got he him, got yeah. distance. He, he has Yeah, he he has it all, but he's a really power player, so yeah. Going to be cool to see him tomorrow. Yeah. He's rated 72nd in the world currently, so he's well recognized in the in the world. So yeah, that, that's it for the MPO today. We're going to follow the FPO from now on. They are moving in between holes right now. They are going from hole 11 to hole 12. Evelina is still in the lead with a great round so far. Even par. Nice. <coughs> There's that top, pin, the top 10 from the MPO. Lauri Lettinen sneaking in there. Mikael Hamme, very familiar names. Oh, yeah. They're still in the game, only six back from the lead. Jonas Alto, very familiar name as well. And then a few few new Afenain guys. Afenainen, and Villa, Tajatin, and Pelton. There's so many of those. Yeah. yeah, great players that we haven't seen so much from on the on the lead cards and on the live live stream. And it's gonna be exciting to see if they can yeah, and, and attack those those more well known players like Seppo Pio and those yeah. other and other guys. And nice to see a, an Estonian flag in there. Matthias has done really well. Shot that early. Oh, yeah. Fixed down round. Otherwise, mostly fins. So we will go to commercial and soon be back with the FPO. Yeah, make sure to stay with us. Come on back and check out our sponsors, too. How do you build your better game? Reps. 
focus. The right equipment. Zuka. Disc golf carts for a better game. Sulla on siinä purkka. Oh. Spearmintti. Sulla. Pullet peef. Eli nyhtö nauta ja bearnaise majoneesi. Kyllä mummo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Legendaarinen ylämummo. Se on voittaja valinta. Kotipizzasta. Look at this beautiful bridge. Beautiful Heinola, nice place. Yeah, such a beautiful town, surrounded by this lake. A nice bridge there and lots of fun things to do. Evelina Salonen in the lead, even par. Henna Blomros, two strokes behind. Katie Tette and Olivia Chinstedt tied for third. And we are gonna see those players now. They are on the feature card. Yeah, everyone's right there. Very cool, very exciting. Only three strokes between them all. Yeah, if you're wondering what's happening now, all the camera guys from the MPO cards they are running up to, to meet the the FPO players. And the FPO players are about to tee off on hole 12 quite soon. Yeah, so we'll be able to get you all kinds of good quality footage pretty shortly. Until then, enjoy this really beautiful drone footage we get to see. Lake Payani, massive lake quality drinking water for our city. So what do we have more? Heidi Leine, she's nine behind. She is struggling still not that far behind though. She could easily get herself up in the in the mix if she picks up her game just a little bit. But we have a lot of other good players there as well. Yeah, Saaren and Pitka, Karpinen, we saw Karpinen in Tali playing really well. Emilia Kallio, she's a bit behind now also, but she has a lot of potential to, to play really good here in Heinola. There, there on that, um, that drone shot on the left, you could see Kumpeli Spa, which is a great place to stay if you're coming to check this out. They have a disc golf course right there on their property as well. Nice is little there, nine hole, I think it is. Or is there any maybe? place in Finland that doesn't have their own disc golf course? <laughs> Not many anymore. No? We're, we are so lucky. So lucky to live here. And check out this cool bridge. Yeah, this is how it looks when you when you get to the to the course here in, in Heinola. Yeah, and it's such an amazing feeling to come through that gate and you know what's here. You, you got disc golf park world right there at your doorstep. Yeah, I, I got butterflies in my stomach here when we <laughs> drove up. And uh, I'm, I'm getting some shivers right now. To, yeah. You know, thinking about how good that feels and getting to... Everybody gets to see this. There you get to see the well, that Puttinola kind of tic-tac-toe putting game and all these warm-up baskets. There's everything you could ever ask for and more here if you're a disc golf player or fan even. Yeah, and if you're in the area, if you're somewhat close, to, like you have still two days to, to just get yourself to Heinola and watch the, 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 the remainder, remainder of this, this competition. Yeah, come on out there. watch it live. And yeah. If you can't do that, subscribe to Disc Golf Stream and you won't miss a minute of the action. We'll be right here with you tomorrow and Sunday and all year long, bringing you great events on this Prodigy Disc Pro Tour as well as the European Pro Tour. Top level disc golf in Europe. So this is the second shot on hole 12, Olivia Schinstedt. Right into the action and uh, nice looks good. Up. She ripped that. Looked like it might end up a little bit in the in the woods there, but she got good distance and she should have a pretty easy approach for the par. Both Olivia and Katie got themselves some birdies on the previous hole, so they are they are getting closer 
to the leading duo. Or I wouldn't say leading duo, but the two up in the top who usually battles for the win here in Finland. Here's Hannah Blomros taking her patent pending shot. Probably her second shot as well. Uh, caught that late tree, but she got pretty good distance up there. Should be able to get up and down for the par, hopefully. Uh, not too far away. No. This hole 12, if you don't remember from the previous card we were following, following it's 189 meters. It's uh, not one of the longest holes, but uh, beautiful snaky shaped hole that you need all kind of different angles and uh, yeah, and a very pretty fairway. Yeah. You got the grass there and all the trees around. A couple spruces in there that you don't want to really get stuck behind. But KT looks pretty good. Averaging a bit over par, 4.78 here on the FBO field, but then we of course don't have the the stats from this lead group yet. So it yeah, they might be able to yeah. chip that down a little bit, but still quite a difficult hole. Playing right there in the middle as far as difficulty goes, ninth Just hardest. Evelina, and she is able to get a lot of distance on that throw. That's beautiful, almost down there. And with a soft landing, that's a great shot. Yeah, excellent work. That was her second shot, so she is in the birdie range now. Nicely done. It's like it might be sprinkling a little bit again, but not quite as heavy rain as we saw earlier, at least. Just a bit of drizzle. Yeah, not too much to worry about. <laughs> we see some <laughs> camera guy there running in panic to get <laughs> in time to the hole. And yet again, a patent pending throw from Henna Blumros. <coughs> She's really good with these standstill throws. Like, more or less all of her shots fr on, uh, from the, yeah, not from the tee. She she chooses to go standstill, so she's great at that. Yeah. Well, it looks like she's electing to go over the over the top here with an Anheuser. Maybe yeah. she's not not comfortable with that tight little line that we see through the middle. That's probably a pretty smart play. It's really actually. wide, and does it come close enough? Yeah, it's a great shot. She's there. beautifully done. Yeah, that was it. That's a very very skilled shot. Patent pending with that that really high Anheuser. Great trust on her disc and on her. On her uh, it's not there. easy to find the right angle and get any kind of distance from that position. Like it, you need something very glidey, understable to yeah get anywhere from a patent pending lens. So wide patent pending as she had there. Yeah, very touchy shot. She executed it very very well. Olivia. Perfect. Perfect shot. If that just stops Curl there. on up. Yep. Does. About four or five meters out. Very well done. Looks like Katie will be up next. Katie, for you who don't know who she is, she's the second highest rated player from Estonia. Who is, yeah, she told us yesterday in the press conference that this is the first year she's playing professionally, like she's actually having disc golf as her job. So she does not need to do anything else than play and uh, just gain experience. Yeah, yeah she gaining was very experience. positive in the yeah. press conference, really, really just uh, extremely ecstatic in a way to have this job and to have this opportunity. Just very grateful for, for everything. It sounded like really, really awesome attitude. and not putting too much pressure on herself to perform up to any level, just trying to have fun and play as much as she can and do the best she can. Yeah, and that's, I think, the, the best you can do when you're in a new position like that, to, to be able yeah. to play as much as you can and learn from this year. Yeah, and there's Seeing no reason to no. have any, uh, you know, 
unnecessary expectations to put on yourself. It only would cause pressure, I suppose. Well, and that was a costly miss from Hannah. But luckily, she curls back up. Yeah, just a little high, and she skipped off the top of the basket. Those kind of misses is what we have seen a lot of, both from Evelina and Hannah on the in the beginning of this season. And uh, that's something that they are well aware of that they need to work on because yeah yeah that's very costly in a tight field definitely losing a lot of stroke mm. on the green between the two of them something they they really want to tighten up and if they do there's no stopping them really i mean oh they are on such a high level like lowers of the disc you'll yeah. ever see there you go good correction and nice beautiful comebacker. yeah i think in, in quite a Quite a few competitions already this this year. We have seen the the that Evelina has had the absolute best stats from the tee. Yep. And also at the same time, the worst stats in the circle. Yeah, she's so absolutely dominant off, yeah. off the tee and throwing the disc. And then she's clearly great putt there from Olivia. Yeah. yeah, that was a great putt there. She's clearly had had all sorts of struggles on the green, and she's well aware of it, as everybody is. But. Hopefully she can uh, correct all that and and just. In a way, it must feel good to like when when it's that clear what your problem is, so right, you know yeah. what you need to work on. Right, it's, to, it's to simple get point back of focus. There and, right? yeah. there's nothing wrong with the way she throws, and that seems to oh come no. completely natural. It's all in the in the head. It's a mental game, and like yeah. I think it's something that we all can relate to. That yeah. suddenly it, something just doesn't work, and you don't really know what the problem is. Yeah, and everybody has yeah. slumps, but the, you know it's been kind of extended yeah. for her. So hopefully she can she can overcome that and, and get her confidence back on the green. And she might be doing just that. She's having a good round today. Yeah, because both Evelina and look there at that go. great, great. There was no yeah no worries there. She was. Confident and aimed, aimed perfectly, executed the shot. We were talking about that there would we would like to see some Finnish world champions in the near future, and both Evelina and Henna could just as well be there. Yeah. And those are the things that they need to work on. And if they do, and if they find some kind of like nice routine that it really works for them, then they are up there. They oh could, yeah. They could win already this year. It's absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Super high quality players, all Hole the skills in the world. Yeah, hole 13. Yeah, here we go. This is a beauty, isn't it? That par four, 212 downhill, playing f as the sixth hardest for the women, 4.89 average. Brought to you by Noco. That's the No Carbs company, making great beverages. Still need to keep the scores. Yeah, there's most probably some backup here. We need to wait for the group ahead of them to, to finish 14. Evelina with a healthy lead now. Four strokes ahead of the field. Yeah, she gained something there. All right, I guess Hannah took a bogey. and Yeah, on the, that was on 12. So we are waiting 30, for the yeah. scores now on, on 13, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, right on. No, sorry. <laughs> no, th this is 13. Now, no, yeah, it's a long day. We have been sitting here for a few <laughs> hours. I'm starting to get get tired but i really don't want to make any mistakes when it comes to numbers like that this is whole no 13. we got you well, this is a great shape this so beautiful beautiful so far down there straight through the gap wow oh. it just faded a little bit but she's so far up there that she should be able to scramble maybe i think so and she could even go on the left side maybe, maybe. yeah, yeah. how far she scooted there yeah if she didn't hit anything i think she might have almost gone through that pretty good shape patch. on that yeah. though Olivia up next. Latitude 64 sponsored. Looks like she's got that uh, NBDG sign on her left yeah. sleeve as well. Sponsored so. by NBDG as well. Very cool. She's trying to go for a straight shot there and place herself I and didn't really manage out. to. So that's yeah. just on edge. I'm pretty sure it's out. Yeah, I think a little too much hyzer on that. Not what she wanted. It was quite close to stay safe, though, but no, not close enough. Here we get a good look at Katie. Looks like she's taking a driver, trying to move it left to right. If you haven't watched Katie play 
There is one shot that you should... Oh, let's oh, see. Oh, terrible kick. That looked like it was just starting to move really nicely left to right there. Ah, uh, unfortunate result. Yeah, I will I will talk about that sorry, one shot. No, 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 no. I will pick some better moment, but there is one shot from the European Championships that she did throw in from like 120 meters or something. So wow. Go and watch that. That's amazing. On YouTube. And here is Henna. Here we go. That looks great. There are a few Maybe players fading a little. that can match her distance, but... Okay, okay. She, she's in a good position for that back door. Yep, scramble. She might be able to do that patent pending that you're yeah. so good at and, uh, and hopefully find a way down that really narrow back door fairway, if you can call it a fairway. I guess it is, in a way. It's more like a footpath from the end of the hole towards the next hole, but it can definitely be of use if you overshoot that landing zone. It's very, very tight, but it's at least an option if you get yourself down there. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the first choice for anybody, but... Uh, are we going to see an interview here or not? Looks like we cut to a place where they were doing interviews, but that might be... Yeah, we see that Evelina got herself down under par there after 12. The beautiful. That's impressive. She's playing really, really well today. Beautiful birdie on 12 with that second shot, especially. That was, that was high level. Yeah, great, great job from her. And here, next up. Katie yeah. taking her one meter from the OB line. So this will be counted as her third shot. And I have a really great statistic for you for Evelina today. Yeah? 100% circle 1x putting. <laughs> So she has right, right at that ship, and here we are still talking about it. Yeah, but it's He's already moved on. That shows <laughs> that it's all in the head. Like there, it's yeah, not about changing any your technique or or learning how to play again. It's just in your head. And yeah, and maybe she's kind of back in her comfort zone here in Finland, where she's so dominant. You know, seems like it. Yeah, maybe she's she just kind of a little bit less stressed about any of that stuff, or maybe she's just made some genuine improvements in, in the routine or something. But either way, fantastic performance today on the green she's even made 25 percent of her circle two putts that's good that's hot katie overturned that a little bit it was almost getting but turned a little bit too early so but she's not in a bad position but that's, she would have wanted to have a little bit more distance from that position and uh, olivia up next also with her third shot after going ob Hannah also 83% circle one. That's great. Though. Pretty awesome too. It definitely improved today. I'm happy to see that 100% from, from Evelina. It must be so good after yeah. struggling so long. and Get that monkey off your back. Yeah, you know. just show the world like, hey, look I what can I can do. do. Yeah, Yeah, that's super great to see. Very, very happy. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of confusion about where her... Yeah, where it went out. See what they say. They're gonna change the lie maybe back over here. Okay, so that put her in a bit worse position. Yeah, most definitely. She can probably not put as much power and a little bit trickier line from there, but maybe yeah. she can find it. Changes the shot, that's for sure. It's now it was a straight shot before, and now it's like a, a turnover. It requires a lot more touch and angle control. But that looks oh, good. That, that looks, looks beautiful. If it just comes back, it does not really. But still, she hit the line clean anyway. Yeah. But yeah, maybe not the best place to be over there. The, yeah, the rough's pretty rough on this one. Great shot. She would have needed to pick another disc with a bit more... Something more sta stable. Yeah. yeah. Is that a Royal Grace? I think it was. Yeah. yeah. She had it in her hand at least, but maybe she picked something else. But Those Latitude Royal discs are very popular. Yeah, those feel really nice. OK, 
Katie with kind of a tricky position here too. She's gonna have to maybe bend something around that first tree at the very least and then try to get it to work back to the left, which is not, not an easy thing to do. Definitely not. Uh, this is a similar shape to what what um, Evelina, no, <laughs> Olivia was just trying to do. Yep. But a bit closer to the basket, so not as much distance needed. She, oh, she ah. hits the one little tiny tree there. Yeah, she almost got around it, but she's still smiling, still having a good time. Great attitude. Just happy to be here and happy to have this job. Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, very cool. She's a positive person and really, really grateful for the opportunities that she's got. Also really happy to see some international names here that it's not just Finns playing. That We, we got to see Kaide Alsalo from Estonia last time in Tali and now we get to see Katie Tette. Yeah, and Roland Kur as well. That was Roland Kur, awesome. yeah. That was an amazing storyline. <laughs> 14 years old, busting on the scene like a madman. I, I really hope that we will get to see more of him soon. Because oh, we're going to see a lot of him yeah. in the future, I'm sure. This is, again, this really, really wide stance, yeah, patent pending. That looks almost scary. Very very flexible, but look, she looks comfortable in that position. It like does. Oh, and look and how what kind of control shot. she has. Fantastic. Well, that's very good though from where she was. Yeah, yeah she it, that was very tricky. <laughs> Super impressive. Tricky lie, but but showing some some really quality creative stance. And work. see what kind of balance she needs to yeah. be able to throw from that. And like that's so much core like Strength, muscle power yeah. you need to, to keep yourself in Yeah, what a great athlete. Yeah. Super impressive. I remember hearing her from from her interview for the for something I can't remember what it was, but she was saying that she likes to play a lot of sports and and do a lot of different activities and some of that athleticism clearly transferring over to some really impressive disc golf shots. It's it you can clearly see that she is that kind of very active multi athlete, talent yeah, yeah, yeah athlete very yeah very impressive. And as I said, there is few women in the world who can match her distance shots that's like maybe sh she might be even the furthest thrower, the furthest thrower or like up, up there in the page, top yeah. top three at least sure Paige and Christine and those yeah Evelina. oh that's an uh, early kick really bad kick oh, it went backwards it went backwards it was the first possible tree to hit or at least it's in the o kind of open now yeah it actually Kind of in a be better position than it was, yeah. but it's but with le less further away from the basket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about those power throwers m when we say Paige and Christine. We were talking about Paige Pierce and Christine Tatar. Yeah, of course, the top two players in the world. Christine Tatar is actually the top rated player in the world right now. Right now, yeah. Very impressive. She's gone over to the US and dominated there. Played played incredible disc golf and and a uh, really awesome attitude as well. If you want to see her, stay with us on discgolfstream.com. She's going to play at least Yarba. Yarba. Yeah. So excited to see that. Yeah, she'll be there for our second stop on the European Pro Tour. That's not even too far away. No, just a few weeks. Yeah. Look at this. She's going on the right side of that tree. So straight and great shot. And now she can... Be She's going to putt for a... Is it the par, right? Par. Yeah, yep. par. Yep. Still have a chance to save her par. Pretty good upshot from there. So we'll be coming to you live from Stockholm, Yarva Disc Golf Park. Absolutely legendary place. That's June 17th through the 19th. Make sure you tune in for that. This looks... A bit. Oh, that what was a, a dream <laughs> tree kick. <laughs> you couldn't be it better. Beautiful tree love there for Katie. Go and give that tree a hug because it deserves yeah, uh, it. it. It definitely deserves it. Very kind. Yeah, and before we're going to Jarva, we're going to see uh, uh, Prodigy Disc Pro Tour third stop in Oulu, northern Finland. Yeah, that's June 10th through the 12th. 
Also really looking forward to that. Of course, I'm not at all familiar with, but very excited to see what, what they're doing up there. I think it might be the home course for Christian Koksa, so. That's right. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think he's from there. He's definitely from mm -hmm. Ulu, yes. Oh, that's a good shot. She finds her way up through all those trees. Well done. Yeah. That was a tight little line. She did it perfectly. See all those trees she had around her, and she just hit that gap clean and five meters for the for a putt there. This is kind of one of the only parts of the course, really, where you have much background noise from the car road. Most of it, the rest of it, is just really perfect, pristine, peaceful forest. Yeah, even though it's so close to the town, it's, it feels like you're in the middle of disc golf paradise where there's nothing else existing then yeah well said yeah so true you don't really notice that much of the no just kind of over here on the very edge of yeah. the property line there is there's some little bit more major road and what henna did there was to place down her marker so she got herself in a 20 centimeters closer to the basket and she gets to throw from the marker instead of the back of the disc so that's a smart thing to do every inch counts Oh, just not quite enough on that. Still a par, though, from her. Yeah. After that amazing second throw. That was quite a cool shot on that. And Evelina, can she keep that 100% putting stats that's very impressive yeah it would be cool to see this is the kind of putting that is so important for her oh she yeah can. she's doing so good <laughs> look at her what confidence and very impressive cool thank you for showing this to us evelina we never doubted you so good to see her back in her element on fine, yeah. fine form on the putting green. We know she's a great putter. Everyone has struggles now and then. It's been a long slump, but it's really nice to see her coming out of it. That's a great putt also from... I like how she really attacks the baskets, and that's what you need to do on these heavy chain prodigy baskets. You need to... Re right, yeah, yeah. You, you need a little bit of force on there. Whoa. <laughs> you can putt that's like that as well. Cool that also worked, yeah. Cool little tap in from Katie. Kind of like a, a flippy turbo kind of thing. Yeah, but if you're off too soft on these baskets, you, you risk that it spits out. And uh, yeah, be aggressive. Be that's, aggressive that's and a good be thing. pinpoint. Now there's a long traverse to the next hole, so we're going to be showing you some of the, the best slow-mo replays from our MPO field. So you're going to enjoy this, folks. Check it out. Boom. Oh, that's... <laughs> that <was laughs> yeah, <a> spit out. <laughs> you thought it was the hit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't dare to say anything because I wasn't sure if it was the hit or the miss. Okay, so some of the slow-mos aren't... Uh, necessarily highlights but important but to this see is him. a highlight that yeah. he was able to save that's right yeah. this is this is what it's all about the comeback here right here getting that out of his mind and just executing on that, the next that was one. so unfair that yeah rough spin uh, and I, again and this was for Nick. eagle remember eagle putt boom nice one that kind of turned things around for him got him right back in his super in the zone. important yeah for him big to get, momentum shift yeah. right there big moment this was a great step or two remember from rasmus awesome. and he was really playing great it oh, was a few showed. misses here and there that ruined his round yeah. it ruined his score but still he a great showed, round he yeah. showed his class he's an excellent player this gap was wild like, just <laughs> this is on the same hole we just saw the yeah this is this is whole 13 playing yeah that was a wild scramble for birdie i mean he was in in no man's land there and he found a gap and just that was cool shot threw an incredible shot and then then banged the putt too on top of it Nice nine meter uphill putt there. He got it. This is uh, Vile with his nice spin putt, banging that home. Looks so floaty and nice when he gets mm, those in. Smooth. Great stepper here from Seppo. This was a big moment for him too. Nice kind of short stepper. He has a little bit different stance on that step putt. His legs are really close together. Yeah, it's not what you usually see from, from but it's very effective. And this is maybe the shot of the round. Oh, wow, this is insane. 
It's one of, I, I, one of the nicest tee shots I've seen in a very long while. Cannot find words to describe it. It's just like, yeah, that's how to, to throw. it on that yeah. mound. I didn't even know that was possible <laughs> until now. So that was like very cool to see. And this putt also, like this was a highlight was, hole. Yeah, It was crazy that he even ran that and he just nailed it. Yeah, excellent work there. A couple really great highlights. And then another one too, where you put this one in, this, in the bullseye, I remember. True. He was hot there for a... <laughs> Very hot. He definitely earned himself some recognition and really sweet highlights. Just had a couple holes, bang. like I said, that cost him a lot of strokes. Yeah, but that was a sweet drive right there. Here we get the flyover on 14. Awesome tee pad. It's got a Zuka cart track thing going on on yeah. the side of it. It's like a huge terrace. This Hard, is you know. 155 meters. It not really attackable for most FPO players, uh, with two exceptions at least and those two exceptions we're going to see here i'm sure Heidi line and maybe a few others also could attack but sure but it's Evelina and yeah and hannah yeah. they are they probably going to go for it go for it averaging 4.33 for our women's field so that shows you how how hard it really is i mean mm. it's it's a very long shot and there's ob all over the place and we're getting that nice look at the drone shot again very beautiful bridge in hanoma and one down that's that is so impressive super 100 percent yeah. circle one putting yeah and for those of you who who, who didn't know uh, here in finland the ladies are playing from the same tees as the men so you can actually compare it straight to the men's field and see that how how good these players are yeah yeah, yeah evelina right now out shooting the majority of the of the mpo field yeah. She'd be right up there she, in the, in the top, is, yeah. top, what, third of the men's field at this moment. Incredible performance from Evelina. And here we have our... <laughs> There's the man. <laughs> our Nico. tournament director. <laughs> Join himself a makara sausage. <laughs> uh, it's important to uh, keep your energy levels high. And He's trying to hide from the camera. He yeah. realizes there's no hope. <laughs> He's going to have to give it the thumbs up. <laughs> what a great dude. He's doing so much for disc golf. We really appreciate all the effort that he makes. He's uh, organizing all kinds of events and doing so much to make all this happen okay so we hear some voices getting closer to the tee pad here on 14 and we're soon gonna see some most probably amazing tee shots that's exact uh, at least what i expect to see here definitely an amazing tee pad yeah i could spend a whole summer just on this tee pad like, yeah yeah Evelina, yeah, I, I think she's going to be aggressive here, I think, and she is. Oh, yeah, she is look at that. Straight at it. Bombing it. A little bit too much hyzer to get all the way up to the green, but she's pretty far up there. Yeah, it? not all the way up, but but far enough for it to be, as she showed oh, us. Yeah, it should be an easy three at least anyway. A lot of distance. She might have needed a little more Annie if she wanted to really attack it there, but maybe she didn't want to take the risk of overturning it. And being, Might being be so far back. She's playing such a great round. Just one bogey on the whole day. It's huge. Fantastic. Henna. Oh, this that's is nice. Good. That's good. Pretty similar result. Yeah, no, no, not really like hundred percent attacks. Maybe There's some kind of like uh, safe attacks. I would say. Yeah. yeah. Well, when it's averaging four point. I think it was for the yeah. field. They're, they're still taking strokes with the par, you know. Oh yeah. Maybe, maybe it's kind of just, just out of reach for birdie. I'm sure they can get there with their best shot, but maybe it's a bit too risky with the OB all around. Olivia throwing that grace again, going oh. extremely wide. That was almost like grip locked, and she hit something. Yeah, that was way too wide. Is it safe out there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she. Yeah, I think it's safe. It. The OB starts she up, needs yeah, up, up, up to get quite a bit distance didn't, to get get that far. Did she? Yeah. So. That should be safe. Let's see what Katie can do on these long drives. I think that she might be throwing the same disc. Grace. Oh, yeah. oh nice one. That's a great move on that. With going to be straight in the middle of the fairway. Great glidey driver and... She's far up, maybe not as much distance as Henna and Evelina, but no, but super. She clean. does not need that. She's far up enough up on the fairway too. Yeah, you get a good look at that tee pad. Check yeah. it out. Got your Zuka ramp. 
Come on down. Nice and easy with your cart. Yeah, that was smooth, though. Never in danger of, of going OB at all on that shot. Just that a great. super clean, nice yeah. key shot. Got trash can, benches everywhere. It's, they provide so much infrastructure and, and comfort with all that building. All that construction work has, has been so nicely done. Really, really prime example of what's possible on a disc golf course. Yeah, with just a little bit of will and uh, help. A lot of work. From <laughs> yeah, a lot of work. And yeah. uh, also, what's important is they get so much help from the from the, from the city. And uh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and yeah. nice nice to get people to work that are exactly, that are yeah. not able to necessarily find gainful employment at, at, at the moment they're able to get out and do something and feel good and contribute to the community in a really positive way. So really, really nice uh, structure there. Bit of a tricky position here for for Olivia to to reach the basket. I wonder if that's a river she's throwing. She has that as a interesting stance there. Uh, I guess she's not. She's kind of. Oh, that's not the angle she was looking for, but she's safe. safe. Th yeah. Okay. Maybe there was some rough footing there. I thought, yeah, maybe she couldn't have the run up and decided to go patent pending. It looked like a bit of an awkward stance for the for the moment there, but hard to tell exactly what she was dealing with. Camera guys hustling, <laughs> doing a great a job. A lot of exercise for him today. Yeah, it's a big long course, and with all that rain, couldn't have been comfortable, but doing a great job. Bringing us all this quality footage. Very happy to see it all. So next up, Katie, I would guess, or is it Olivia again? For her third. Yeah, it seems like it might be Olivia. And those must be Hennas and Evelinas. See, they are matching each other. Those are amazing. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's really match play when these two yeah, are and playing. They're, and they're such good yeah. friends, they kind of push each other and uh, support each other in so many ways and and very very similar skill sets in, in a lot of aspects as well they do yeah just huge bombs i guess that's what happens when you play a lot together and you you practice together you you travel together you are yeah 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 you develop really solid games that are pretty comparable world class absolutely yeah okay so evelina knows <laughs> Olivia's third shot from here uh, could go for a bogey save, but that's Whoa. extremely wide. Is that really what she was going for? I think so. It is. Think yeah. So. Yeah. It must have been pretty stable, and she had a lot of highs on it, so she wow. knew, knew it was coming back. Very well done. Six, seven meters for the bogey. Yeah, good. Good shot. I mm -hmm. <laughs> was really surprised to see that. It that looked like a yank a little bit, yeah? but yeah, she definitely <laughs> knew her disc and knew knew the That was great. The position, so well played. Katie's got herself a the heart like a, maybe. Yeah, some some type of approach disc. Slow speed. Nice and smooth, a little bit wide, but in the circle. Beautiful. 6 7 meters. Evelina, electing for the sidearm too. She got like kind of a fan grip on that. A good fan grip. Yeah, nicely done. Puts it right to the bullseye's edge. Yeah, as you said, a par that saves her a lot of strokes. Like almost one and a half stroke on the, on the field. Yeah, par is fantastic here. I doubt doubt we see have seen any birdies from the women's field. No, I don't think we have. If anyone could do it, it would have been them, but they weren't they look like they were even quite playing for it. They're, no, they're exactly. They're really happy right. to be in bounds and have an easy up shot for the... I think they could reach it if they would really go for it, but I don't see that it's really worth sure. it. Uh, it's a bit risky, yeah, with all the OB. That's nice and smooth. Putting it right there. Great shots. They had such good control. Nice, clean approaches, yeah. yeah. Impressive. Very well done. She 
button with pure. Pure. Yeah. Great disc. So we do have two Innova players and two Latitude 64 players on this card. And that ah, just a little bit high. Right on line, just just a bit too much height. There you see that MBDG, that's the natural born disc golfer. Also sponsoring Olivia here. And this hole. And they have a great shop too if you're looking to get some, some real quality disc golf products. Oh, another one high. Another one, yeah. Popular band there, I guess. Ooh, that's going to be high numbers for them both then. Or not super high numbers, but still not what they were hoping for. Five and a four, right? Yeah. And uh, Evelina hopefully par yep. for Evelina. Yes, great. Nice one. Boosting that C1X putt. Percentage up. Still at 100. <laughs> that's great. Fantastic. Yeah. And just what she needed to to get her confidence back and to silence all those critics and haters out there, all the trolls and whatnot. Yeah, I hope that those uh, they are watching us now and and, yeah, and following this because uh, that's so. Yeah, that's a slap in the face on a lot of people. Yeah. Not that I think that she cares so much, though. She doesn't seem to be that bothered by. No, no, yeah. but it's just good to perform at at oh yeah. ability and you know for your. For your own sake, and then <laughs> that's a nice reaction for oh, her. Yeah, good. Reaction. Even though it doesn't <laughs> miss, but it's <laughs> it's always it's always fun to see that kind of yeah, see that human emotion. Yeah, okay. that's why we are playing because <laughs> very entertaining part of the game. Absolutely, yeah. another incredible tee pad and stairway built here, brought to you by Rami Rent. This one's very difficult. I mean. All these last holes are so fun to play, so it's almost easy to, to like, it's easy to forget about the, the score and just like have fun here. And that's what I hope that they do when, like, after those fives they got, Katie and Olivia on the on the last hole, just throw and uh, enjoy the course here. Yeah, this, yeah. this is the kind of course you, you can't help but enjoy. You no. know, they put in so much effort and it's designed so nicely that even if you're struggling or, or feeling worn out you, you're still smiling because you're just happy to be here you know it's like that kind of place where you, you just you're just very grateful for, the, for it to even have a venue like this to, to play disc golf doesn't matter the results or anything else when you're here really just just happy to have the experience custom built stairs for for a hill like that that's not what you see in so many so many courses yeah and so wide and sturdy yeah very solid Excellent engineering and quality work. Here I doubt that we will see that big of a tax. Par is probably the game plan for, for all of these players. It's quite far. Maybe that Anna and Evelina would go a little bit more aggressive like we saw in the previous hole, but par is a great result. Yeah, par is pretty much all you could ask for on this mm. one, really. I mean, 146, but it's downhill, so, well, who knows? Oh, that looks pretty good if it comes on back. It does look good, but it doesn't come back. It no, a little bit too much Anheuser, maybe. Or definitely a bomb, though. Yeah, way she up passed there. all Holy the distance you need. That's She's on the circle's <laughs> edge. <laughs> okay, sorry. I was, talking about I was talking about being aggressive or not. That's super good. That was amazing. That that was yeah. a very stable disc. It looked like too much Anheuser, but yeah. it came back. It unwound. It had all the, the yeah, landed flat there. Fade, yeah. yeah, I guess when you're thrown down and it has that much time to fade it, with that kind of height that she had on it, perfect shot. Really, she's pin high on the circle's edge. Yeah, I don't know if she'll go for that or not, but it's risky to go for. But she might yeah. want to lay that one up. I, I, I no reason with it, that big lead that she has now. Also, I hope it's outside the circle so it doesn't affect her percentage. <laughs> Look this. This is also looking great. Oh, this is looking they got even that better, man. These girls can bomb. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she parked it. Wow. Villa Ahokas and Henna Blomros. They are. What an incredible <laughs> shot from Henna. <laughs> I'm talking That's about that they might not be no, aggressive. No, that is mind-blowing. She just stuck <laughs> it up on the hill. <laughs> Look at that. 
Wow. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you, Hannah, for showing us how to play this. This is That was the perfect <laughs> shot, wasn't it? <laughs> Pleasure to watch. Wow. Wow. Incredible. These girls are so good. It's also looking good. It has that flip and can float up quite far. Not bad at all. No, not really enough distance, but no, safe but for to easy if you three. play for a par. Yeah, easy yeah. three. Yeah. Wow, that looked so good out of I hand. I can't it just believe that shot. <laughs> Hannah, that was incredible. It was just perfect all the way. Yeah, <laughs> all the way from the hand. Yeah. She's also, she's going much tighter, and that needs to stable up soon. I think it's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah she's it's safe. okay. She's safe. Pretty far up shot, but she should be able to put it close. Check it out. Oh, we get to see it from this <laughs> angle. <laughs> so cool. Perfect angle. Incredible speed. Oh, that's follow great. Through. That's so great. Just tracking all the way, without a doubt. And then it just lands soft right on the hill here. Boom. So effortless how she's throwing that. Oh, uh, man, that was incredible. Whew. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Yeah, that's world class, top class dis distance uh, that she has in that arm. And uh, wow. What a stroke. So smooth form and perfect angle and speed. Uh, interesting to see if uh, if Evelina gets inspired now and she tries to go for this. But if if I was her, I would not because if you have a four-stroke lead, she's still gonna have a three-stroke lead if she plays safe here. So it's gonna be very interesting yeah. to see what she decides to do. She might. It, it's a big moment. Yeah, big decision. A lot of things c could happen here if she. Yeah, and many things to consider. Yeah, she has a four-stroke lead, but she knows that Henna's tapping in for birdie. But, uh, yeah, I don't think she's too concerned about any of that. She's just trying to stay within her zone and her element. She's playing so well. We'll see. We'll see what she does. So who is first? Is it hey, uh, Katie or is it... Yeah, it seems Katie first. Okay. Even this is a little bit scary, that you, you want to land it so soft, so... Don't want to risk any rollaways. Huh. This looks good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. No trouble there. Quality approach. I guess Olivia's closer, but a little bit farther off on the... Yeah, just a different angle towards the... Or yeah. the different... Yeah, she was pretty yeah. far on that right side, but... Looks like a very doable approach. Well, she's not too far away either. That'll work. Oh, it's Maybe a bit, a bit short. short. Yeah, that would yeah. be a scary putt. But she's so cl that hill is actually quite small, so she's close even if she's by the edge of it. But it's but it's a tricky angle, yeah. an uphill like that. At least there's no wind, so that's that's usually the. The biggest concern in those moments, putting uphill, exposing the flight plate to that wind or whatever. But it looks scarier when you're there than it does here. Yeah, look at that. And I got the bullseye hit. <laughs> what a shot. From okay, she's outside the circle, so she can lay up without affecting her 100%. Oh, that's good. But she's go. No, no, no. no, 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 no it looked smart for a second smart. that she was going for it. No, no, super smart layup there. Yeah, she had no reason to go for that. No, such a big lead. Gain, yeah. Only things to lose in that case. Yeah. And she's gaining strokes on more or less the whole field. Yeah, just Hannah. So the only yeah, the one. only Hannah and only one who's getting this this birdie today. Most certainly. What a remarkable birdie! <laughs> we got oh. to see two of those bullseye shots. I'm never gonna forget either of those two <laughs> shots because this hole is one that I don't even think about birdies on when I'm playing. I mean. No, no, stay, any. stay, 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 yeah, I'd say. Or, she's looking at it, maybe it rolled back towards her. Yeah, it did. Uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> she <laughs> left it a little short, now she has the same putt again. I think it's nice when you can see what's happening just by looking at someone's face. <laughs> yeah. And you could see there that... The disgust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disbelief. 
Did I just do that? Just save her bogey here. She might even be further now. No, again. Oh. oh, okay. This day. Yeah. It will be a double after that great drive. Disappointing, but. Uh, and she's not happy with that. Maybe she's no. getting tired. You can see that. Yeah, she's definitely feeling some. Something there. Great par from Katie. And Hannah here just tapping in that super bonus birdie. Olivia is still keeping her. Oh, well, she's actually tied now for fourth with. Huge birdie. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, she will actually be tied for fourth now with, together with Silva Sarin and after this double. So, uh, not a great result for her, but. All the other three women here on this card, they are doing well. Doing well on hole 14. 15, sorry. Yep. And, and we go on 16. 16. This one's pretty nice, quite open. OB on the left and right, but shouldn't be too much of a factor without the wind. Then you got to get up this hill after about 100 meters. There's 20 meters. The last 20 meters is totally uphill. Let's see. Let's see if they're going to attack this one. This one's Brought to you by Prodigy Disc. Yeah, not so much to, to think about here on this hole. Just put yourself as close as possible towards the basket and then lay it up in a safe way. Yeah, this one averaging uh, 3.56 for the women. Have been some birdies. Have we had any birdies here? Yep. We have had one. Mm hmm. And that's Emilia Callio. All right, congratulations no surprise to her. There. That's yeah. a great birdie to get. Though. That's, that's that takes good. some really serious power. She does have a lot of power. Yeah, she's. Uh, uh, I can't wait to see her on on um, on a lead card soon because she has a great game, and I'm really excited to see what what she might end up in a few years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking forward to some coverage of her. And they're taking a driver, maybe destroyer. Uh, it's a little bit overturned, right? Or is no, it's no, it's coming, coming back. back. It's coming back. Fantastic! Look at that <laughs> two in a row. It's so good. Two in a row. Henna <laughs> Blumrose. So cool. What are you doing? See. Evelina is starting to get get nervous now. Maybe Henna is I'm coming. I'm sure she loves to see her. Best friend, yeah. do, do great and on this. The disc also, really good. Well. Also, really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, almost okay. up there, but no. Still a chance, though. Hannah right has right a chance to pick head. another one on Evelina now. Yeah. She almost bullseye that again. You can see her just outside <laughs> the bullseye hit on that 120 Whoa, meters way uphill. Plays more like, I don't know, 135, 40, maybe? Yeah, at least with yeah. that elevation difference. Yeah, That's like crazy. What? kind of power does she have? She's got some very impressive power. This is, this is more realistic for most players, but that's really great as well. She's See, up on look the Look how far up she slides. Yeah, it looked low. Maybe that was just the camera angle. Beautiful shot. Maybe it was. Yeah, it looked... It looked uh, I thought it would die quite soon, but oh, it full kept, rip. kept on going. Great shot. She can give that a run if she wants, maybe. She's going w really wide again. That seems to be her Just style of like play. More of a yeah. layup. Oh no, it's pretty far up there too. Yeah, she's all those girls almost there at, the, up there at the where it starts to slope upwards. Yeah, but not really. But oh, here we go. Check it out. Look at her power and how effortless it looks like. Look at that smooth rip and the follow through. Mm. Perfect angle and speed. Perfect disc, disc choice. Stables Back. up right at the end and puts it right there near the bullseye. So it will be another decision for Evelina to make. <laughs> yeah. But I think she might run this one. Yeah, might maybe. I don't know. It's pretty uphill though. It can be a difficult putt. Uh, we'll see. She might she might lay it up too. 
think she's just outside the circle, so it shouldn't, yeah, just outside shouldn't the affect circle, her yeah. percentage anyway. <laughs> It'd be really cool. She, to, I don't think she cares about no, it. But no, but I, I sure do. I, 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 I just want to <laughs> see that 100% circle 1x putting yeah. at the end of this one for her. It's it old. just would mean a lot, you know, after the struggles and stuff, I think. Of course, it's, it doesn't really matter whatsoever. She's playing great, and she's got a good lead and everything, but it would be a cool statistic anyway. Yeah, it would. Now we had four f long drives, and uh, so we have a long walk up to the discs. That's always a good sign. Olivia first. Yeah. Not really up there, but close enough. Pretty good drive, though. Anyway. Reach a par. Could even be a little bit aggressive if she feels like it. No. Nope. That's just put it close. Oh, that's great. That's great. I think that's what I have been most impressed of to see from from Olivia when she has played together with with uh, Henna and um, Evelina that she's really following her game plan. She does not have that kind of shots that they right. have. She's not trying to keep up. No, but she's not trying too much. She she's like following her game plan. Sticking to her own yeah. skill set and playing and her own herself against the course. Yeah, and very that smart. Keeps her close. Very smart play. Yeah. So many players do get stressed and try, like, want to match that kind yeah, of. Yeah, try to play yeah. outside of their element and do something that they're not comfortable with. Exactly, and that's that's really impressive, actually, from someone like her. She's playing smart. Katie's got a bit of a tricky lie. She might have to go up and around. Then oh, she's going through him. Okay. Just puts it close for the easy yeah. par. Smart play there. Tricky line. And uh, will she go for it? What do you think? I don't really know. I think we'll see something similar as maybe a half run. run. Yeah. Well, it's so dangerous. Like risky, it, isn't it? Uh, it's so risky. If it starts to roll, then they have built a little platform here, though. Yeah, I think it used to be like that. So it was even a smaller platform. Yeah. That now now they have given it a little. Ooh. Bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, nice safe bid. And Olivia should be tapping in good par. Or there you go. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it stayed in. Yeah, it looked a little bit scary. It did. But it's in the basket. And now Hannah, look at that shot. So good. Just outside the bull's eye. Yeah. Just 10 feet. Bam. Great birdie. Two in a row. Two bonuses in a row. Big score separators. Gaining so impressive. And now they are just two strokes. Here's that, that, that weird. Yeah, tap in putt. Yeah. <laughs> She's very effective. She's very confident with it. I don't think she misses those, or she wouldn't do it, obviously. But it's very unorthodox, isn't it? I don't think she's doing it to show off. It's no, that's definitely something that just no, works for her. That's yeah, that's what she. That's her style, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So Evelina one down, Henna one up. Oh, check this out. Yeah. Now we get to see the form. Watch the follow through. Boom! So explosive. Yeah. So strong, but so smooth. Yeah, th that's what really impresses me the most is how smooth it is. And yeah. just like she's using her body to her advantage to just like launch the disc away. And yeah. A little bit similar. I, I get the same feeling when I see Christian Coxas. When I see her, they're like yeah, really... That, that really strong yeah. core and, and transfer of strength from the from the ground up through exactly. the body. Yeah. yeah, wonderful, wonderful throws. Hole 17. It's a par 3, 95 meters, 312 feet. Nice little downhill touch shot. Sixth hardest for the women, 3.78. Nobody's birdied it yet. That's a bit surprising because yeah, this I is reachable this is for the get, yeah. yeah, this is reachable for the whole field, but uh, might have been problems with slippery disc or, or something that it I have a feeling we're gonna see some birdies now. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure. I'm sure. At least one or two birdies, right? That's yeah, what I wish yeah. for. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. We only saw one from our feature MPO card, which was kind of a surprise for me as well. But definitely, definitely one you want to get. But then we can see, it, we know it can cause problems too. We saw two double bogeys on our feet uh, for the MPO, which was really surprising for me. But it definitely provides a, a certain level of difficulty. 
Yeah, you were right where, when you were talking about that risk reward there from from the drop zone. That it's probably just safer to to lay it up from there because yeah. Yeah, we saw it bite them both, didn't we? We did. We don't want to see that again now. In case we we actually don't want to see anyone even head. For yeah, that. yeah. Maybe they can all get themselves zone. down there. This an AVR X3 maybe. I think it. Oh, she fluffed it though. I think. Oh no, that's good. That's okay, good. it's no or. I think it's it long, might be out. but. It stays safe. It no, oh, just slides just out. Just out by a little bit. But she, no, no, true. She's going to the drop She'll zone. I was thinking, yeah. Zone, yeah. Just talking about it. It was close to being really good. From uh, from out of her hand, I thought it had too much hyzer, but she knows her disc well. It flipped up pretty well. It just didn't stay on the green there where where it came down. Evelina taking a putter. This looks pretty good. Ah, uh, this has the right turn. It will slide quite scoot, far scoot, up. Scoot. Yeah. Oh yeah, great. Right Still there. a bit of a scary putt, but now she's close enough to she can run. Yeah, she can right give it a safe bit also if she wants to. But yeah. seven eight meters, but a little bit uphill. It's a pretty decent angle. She's not putting directly at the OB at least. But exactly. Yeah, she, it is. She's going so much away. uphill, so it will probably not carry all the way out right, to, the, might to the OB. If, yeah. up if she is to miss it. This is a uh, Kristin Tata pure. I oh, think. that moonshine pure. That's a beautiful uh -huh. disc, isn't it? And it's. Oh, way Not at early, all though. the right angle. No, that just came out super early. I'm Too surprised low that we really see so early. much struggle both on the MPO and FPO here. And yeah, yeah, it's one of those that you you think, you know, nine out of ten times they would put it somewhere in, on the on the island at least. Right? And the island is so so big. It's pretty generous on the right side. The left side, it, you know, if you saw it off, you're in trouble. But mm. there's really no reason to play with that. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Like if the you smart just play get down yeah, there on the on the right side, you should. Be close enough. Fine. This is also that's going over. Terrible. Open. That's not even close to being in. No, that was a shot. Gonna hit that van. Oh gosh. Went under the winner. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> but surprising. Does to see? Uh, yeah. All two hardcore shanks, and then. Uh, yeah. Even Henna will be so three three drop zone shots, and Evelina will have a birdie putt at least. She can save the dignity of the of the whole field. Nobody's birdied it yet, you know. You really would would think a few of these ladies would get it. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna change their the the, the game plan for tomorrow on this hole because there's just no reason to even flirt with that left side, is there? Oh, why go the mistake to make is to turn it over too much, right? Not to hyzer it out. No, it shouldn't be any any issue at all. Just crash down and let it like slide up towards the basket with, yeah. it, with a, like natural fade of the disc. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, can go quite aggressive downwards. You feel like you yeah. could, yeah. And I'm sure they practiced this hole. They should know that, right? Yeah. Well, it's mm. easier, not easier said than done. Yeah, yeah, true. Not trying to be hypercritical. I guess I want OB too, right? But what is the thing that I always feel that if there, if it's a hole that I can birdie, then everyone should be <laughs> <laughs> able to. <laughs> and I, maybe I was just lucky that I was able to birdie. Ah, you played it perfectly. Uh, it was a great shot. Was a good idea, putt, man. Nicely uh, done. <laughs> Let's see what Hannah does. I think she might lay this up. Yeah, smart layup. Yeah, no risks. No, if you're not feeling yeah. it, it's a it's a big putt to go for, you know, and a lot of risk involved. Probably seeing something similar here. Yes, we yep. do. Perfectly done. Stays up there. Cheeky smile. She's having a good time. Yeah, she's having fun, and she's she's still right just there. Just a few strokes behind Hannah. Not too bad. Not a lot. And another layup. But that's oh not no, a very effective that's layup. a bad layup. But uh, she could even make it. She can still make it. But that was, yeah, quite a. I feel like she's kind of worn out a little bit. Maybe not not having her best day and not she not tired. Not having that yeah. much fun anymore. Maybe or just kind of run out of energy. Yeah. Yeah, she's usually having quite like low profile style or what. But but still, like it seems like she's a little bit tired. Yes, oh, keeping the putting percentage one. going. <laughs> Huge birdie. And she gets a birdie after... And, and, and she gets down? those two, back, two strokes back that she had. She l just lost on 15 and 16. She she get them back now. All right, yeah. Yeah, from Hannah. Good point. Yeah. And it's match play between those two. Yeah, 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 they're starting to run away with it. Get so this one now. Get this one. Oh, no, that was so close. Yeah, I think it was a bit lack lack of concentration there on the previous shot, and that's so unfortunate because that's the shot she has every 
every time usually like yeah 99 out of 100 mm -hmm. just a simple little pitch up yep. i think you know you can almost do it eyes closed and she just kind of uh just faltered a little bit with her concentration perhaps and wasn't able to execute in the moment yeah it happens to us all but sure unfortunate to happen definitely cost her one here though yeah. or maybe two And again, uh, and then she's just way off the mark. She's kind of lost the plot here now. Like I feel like she doesn't want to be here anymore. That's gonna be a high number now. What's going on? Yeah, she just. We saw some of the frustration on some of those earlier putts that were just missing by a little bit, and now she doesn't have the confidence anymore to do it. And she's just gonna try to lay up here. And that layup was better. Yep. Yep. But. That's going to keep her up at night, this hole. You should never be any big numbers on this one, really, should She's there? She's going to drop down a few few positions now. and uh, Will she be able to stay on our lead card? No, not no. after this. No. Well, that's disappointing, but uh, hopefully she can come back tomorrow with a, a little bit fresh attitude and still play well the rest of the event. Yeah, and look at Evelina, how many strokes she's gaining on the whole field. But that's she's so good. low birdie on this hole. So good. And here it is. Boom. Great putt. Excellent putt. Is she like holding a power grip when she's throwing, uh, when she's putting? It looks like that almost. It's I'm not too sure. I, did, yeah. I didn't notice that, but uh, right now she's two down and that would put her in, in the top 25 for the in men's the, field. In the FPO. The M MPO. Yeah. Uh, MPO, yeah. That is so incredible. She's out, out shooting all kinds of really high quality names. Mm. Yeah, that's that's, that's amazing. Uh, what a round from her. I hope she finishes this strong. She can birdie this one pretty easily too. Uh, Olivia now fell down fell down to eighth place. Okay, okay. So she is gonna not be now she she is not able to reach the lead card even with no. a great result here. No. But chase card could be possible. Yep. Let's hope she finishes strong. Well, she needs to lose four strokes to to lose that. So, so oh, okay. So she's yeah soundly on the. She's gonna chase be on the chase card anyway. tomorrow, most likely. Oh yeah, yeah. There she's four strokes ahead of Amelia. Pretty unlikely. But if the confidence is that low, and uh, hopefully nothing. I hope to see a, an aggressive henna drive now again on this hole. That yeah. We're so s struggling here also for the for the MPO, and I started to think, like, it's a really long course. It's a really long round. Are they getting tired when they're coming here to the yeah, MPO? Yeah, is there yeah. a lot of pressure because it's it's relatively easy? You mm, know, might you be, like yeah. I, it's pretty hard to explain those high numbers, though. I mean, from the drop zone there, like... Yeah, if you take the risk reward and you don't doesn't pay off, but then I don't know it, that whole uh, no. so it was playing surprisingly difficult for the field today. It really know. does, yeah, and it was also the same here on on eighteen. We saw a lot of unfortunate errors, <laughs> unforced That's errors. Cool, yeah, yeah. yeah Nicholas had yeah. a really really poor finish on that one too, didn't he? Like he did. And dropped him. Dropped him pretty far out of the top ten. Or no, no, uh, he's still on it. Yeah, yeah, right on the edge of the t tied for ninth. Yeah. Together with, uh, he's gonna play play with Lauri tomorrow. Yeah, Lauri. I think so. That probably Mikael and. Uh, yeah, I think that they. That could be a pretty stacked card. They, it could, and they could, like, inspire each yeah, other to get some really, off. really great shots and really great uh, scores. Yeah, that might be a card to look out for making a run, moving day tomorrow. We have to see. Make sure you come back to check that out. So last hold for the day. Yep. Hole 18. What a cool one. Par 4, 178 meters, 584 feet. Playing as the 12th hardest for the women at 4.44 average. 11% of the field able to birdie it. Nice. That's good. That's that's impressive, actually. Yeah, it's a good yeah. birdie to get. And 11% of the field, that means one birdie. Yep. Yeah, and that is yeah because these aren't factored in yet. These yeah, four exactly. Ladies, so yeah, so yeah. that is Jenny Karpinen who got that birdie. Okay, great job. Nice way to finish your round. 
And this uh -oh. is not gonna be a birdie. That's way out of bounds. Yeah. That's over a whole 17's basket. Only. Yeah, that was so far away. She's gonna. Okay, she's been playing so well. That was kind of surprising, but I guess she just kind of. Yeah, she she doesn't really lose that much though. Like she got enough distance to still, if she's lucky. No, maybe not. She can still save the par. Uh, yeah, I'm sure she can with her distance. And this is going OB also. I think. No, it's stabling up. Well, it's going straight now. It's pretty high though. It's gonna fade. Uh, it's going OB. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it yeah. Mm. Seventeen and eighteen. They are playing harder than you'd expect. That was a really good chance for Henna to gain some strokes back. It was, yeah. She could have been almost like uh, well not tie for the lead, but go up. It was a little bit safer play, but it might cut roll off that. Nope. It's good. It's good. She has Great perfect placement. footing there also on yeah, the Yeah, nice side. nice no. flat ground. Not sure if she can reach the pin for the birdie, but really, really nice controlled shot. And I hope that Olivia can finish this with a great shot after the struggle she had on 17. It was yeah, yeah. Really playing for some dignity here. And that great looks pretty line clean. So nice. It doesn't reach the OB line, I hope. No, it's going to be safe there. No. Oh, did it roll down, yeah, OB? Yeah, I just barely rolled off that little edge, and that's most certainly OB. That's unfortunate because it looked good. Yeah, it looked good. It just just kind of faded a little bit. Kind of got some a little bit of unfortunate ground play. Kind of a hyzer skip and roll, and yeah, a tough finish for Olivia. There, you get a good look at that kind of warm up area. Not like a really cool putting basket there next to this really beautiful tee. Yeah, that first tee is really something that like shows you that yeah, now you're kind of welcome, the welcome there. to the course, welcome to to an experience that you're you're, you're going to see something here, and you feel it already when you step up on that tee pad that like this is this is something different from yeah. the normal courses. This is something extra. Yeah. There we're seeing the numbers. What an incredible round from Evelina. That's huge. Two down. Two down. Now she, you know, she's going to probably take a par at best, but. Yeah, she might. That it might be even hard to get that par because she, she did didn't get that early. much distance. Yeah. So yeah, it uh, was so turned over that she she probably out of bounds up there in the middle of the parking lot line. Not Katie. sure though. Maybe she did cross. No, it inbounds around the edge of the thing. It's hard to tell, really. It looked like it started to turn, like right out of her hand. But uh, ah, we ha we have to wait and see. And uh, <coughs> regardless, she could just play safe for a bogey and still have a four-stroke lead or three-stroke lead. So, yep. So yeah, nothing to worry about, really. Yeah, especially since since uh, Henna also went to OB. Exactly. Taking their time. Uh, she needs to watch out for that for that sand bunker. It, that could definitely come in play. Yeah, I think she's aiming just short of it. I think that's gonna go in the bunker. Sure it does. Is. Yeah, You're right. It yeah. Did. Yeah, she needed either a little more power or a little less. I, I think I would have opted for a little less, maybe. And yeah, to go to to play safe. And yeah. Because yeah. now she needs to back up, and that putt is going to be really tricky to get in. So yeah. would have probably been smart to, to play safe there. Yeah, because you're going to have the same look, but it's going to be with a penalty instead yeah. of for for birdie, right? Okay, she got she her. still save her par, though. She's uh. lucky. Okay, she's got a pretty favorable line. Yeah, I, right? I thought it would be much worse. I thought she would. But okay, the OB line starts from there. But how was yeah. that the last place she was in? Would that parking lot be counted as in? Yeah, oh. I guess. It, I guess. Maybe it crossed over no. between. Yeah, it crossed over between the 
the uh, in that little corner it crossed mm, inbounds. That might be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that must be correct. I think that's right. They got that right, yeah. There's kind of a little corner there where the OB line turns. It can be really tricky to see here on the on the this from the camera angles that we have. Yeah. But they have more eyes on the discs. When does that clear the bunker? I think so. No, no. Did nobody no, say she so? so? Yeah, she, she didn't reach the bunker. Yeah. And she can even lay that up and, and comfortably have a really solid lead going into she tomorrow. She could, yeah. She doesn't need to stress and try to do anything too crazy. It's still the first day. I would be surprised if she did anything else at this point. But No, like I think that's going to be a really smart layup if she does does elect to do that. and She most certainly will. And Olivia was actually safe. Great, great. She that OB line's yeah. a little bit further off that thing. I wasn't sure how far it rolled, but happy that it curled back up inbounds. For oh, her. that's great for her. Yeah, and she can still finish strong here with a nice par. That's a good second throw. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Very good chance to, to get the par. Yeah, that'll that'll do good for her confidence, and she can feel a little bit better about things, salvage a bit of that dignity, and have, have some momentum moving into tomorrow. But this was not in bounds, and now... <coughs> She might need to be a little bit aggressive to 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 have some pressure on Evelina going into tomorrow's round. Yeah, if she can put this close, that that might get gain her one stroke anyway. Yeah, that would be important for her to. Could be risky though. She puts it high with some highs there. Oh, and it's long, right? That's yeah, pretty good though. But yeah, that that slope runs away, but she's. Circle's edge coming back. I'll be behind. Kind of a scary one, but let's see. Let's see what she decides to do. She just used it a little bit much, but maybe just didn't want to end up in that OB. If you leave it short, you can even roll back down into the OB, I guess. is the According to our UDISC uh, score, uh, uh, UDISC Live, that th first throw was actually not OB, but... From who? Henna? From Henna. Oh, it's definitely. But yeah, I think no, so too. OB. Yeah, I would be very surprised. No, I'm 100% certain yeah. that was definitely OB. There's no doubt about that. Just a minor scoring error from. Yeah, that can happen. The, the that can happen. We have to just hope that they get the result correct, but they should. Okay, so after two throws, she's far up. Yeah, let's hope she can put this close and. Have a feel good par. Looks like she's going for a jump putt. She's got pretty big range with that jumper. She does, and she really trusts that discs have come back. That's great. Nice one. She doesn't look amused though, does she? <laughs> yeah, she took a little bit. hard time. Yeah. She probably needs some well deserved sleep tonight and coming out with a lot of positive energy tomorrow and gonna be nice to see her and see what if she can gain some strokes on this card and maybe get herself closer and that no 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 oh it stayed okay yeah it's stayed nice done she was i think she was a bit worried that she, she might have thought yeah. she overdid it a little bit she started to look around and like that's <laughs> cause it's safe Did that go wrong <laughs> what are they doing now Now there is some confusion going on. Not sure what the issue is, but... Did I play in the wrong order or something? That shouldn't be a big issue. Let's see what Hannah does here. Oh, Bach. Oh, that was close. That nice. nice. She gave it a chance. Good bid. Are they maybe checking where, where Katie is allowed to throw from, or? No, that does not seem to.
Okay, I think it sounds like that they're trying to see if her disc ever crossed in bounds before it came back as to whether mm, she's playing yeah. in, in front or behind the bunker. And it sounds like she never never crossed in bounds on the front side of that bunker. Because it's such a high wall there, so I would be surprised if it actually did. Yeah, yeah, I don't. <coughs> yeah, I don't think that it ever was in there, so. A little bit of confusion, both from us and maybe a little bit from the players as well. But um, <coughs> it has been a long day for us all, and uh, just a few strokes left here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they got that right. Yeah. Never anything wrong with having a conversation to make sure you got the oh ruling no. right. You know, that's very important to to talk with your card, making sure that you're throwing from the from the right place, because you might actually get some penalty strokes. Sure. Uh, Great finish there from Olivia with the par. Happy to see that. Bounced back from the tough hole before there with that un unfortunate seven, and then... Yeah, that was an important bird, if, uh, important par for her to get, and it uh, feels good to end the round in that way. Yep, and Katie tapping in with that cool turbo flipper, I'm gonna call it. Yeah, that's, that's a, <laughs> I like that. It's neat. Yeah. Try that. So here it is. We don't have the final scores yet. There we now go. We see Evelina Coming five, in. Henna five. Olivia should have gotten a four. Yeah. There I we go. And Katie. Katie may have a six, I believe. She was twice so OB, right? Oh no, she wasn't OB no, on that she first was one. Not right. OB curled up. Okay, no. so she should have a five as well then. Yes. yes. There we go. That's a five. Right, I'm sorry, I forgot that. No, that's she was a safe, yeah. It has been a long day. <laughs> yeah, we have been <laughs> forgetting things, but sitting here for a long time. Um but we had a lot of fun. We saw some incredible things, didn't we? I mean from And if, if you didn't believe us about the course when we started today, then maybe you believe us now. This is a high level course in every single way. We have a lot of high s level players that have played some high level game today, so yeah. Yeah, and the quality of the course is so superb, you know, next level infrastructure, beautifully done. Hainola Disc Golf Park World, folks. It's been a pleasure to be here with you, showing you all this great action. And here is the score leaderboard for the uh, MPO that we followed earlier today. So Jona Heinenen, Piro Jotsen, and uh, what's his first name? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Joni Peltonen yep. and uh, Seppo Payo. Yeah. Yeah, and look at that scorecard from Niklas. You don't usually see that kind of ups and downs from him. It was kind of a kind of a wild day. Seppo keeping it clean, bogey free. That was fantastic. Yeah, that's one of the biggest surprises today, I think, to see that kind of like emotional roller coaster from, from Niklas. That usually not something you see from him. That's yeah, it was a right tough round you know. and he had a couple bad breaks and then it looked like it got under his skin just a little bit, which is a, a new a new thing. We haven't seen too much emotion from the guy. But he kept it together and battled tough, and, and that, still that had a pretty good he result. Got there, and that really changed his his um, his his score completely. Then he, he was like another player after after that, and for a while at least. And uh, Seppo Payo. yeah, so happy he's yeah. going to be on our lead card again. Love watching that guy play. A couple new faces, and yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, Make sure you come on back tomorrow. Subscribe to Disc Golf Stream. Tell everybody about it. Uh, get get back. To us to tomorrow, what time we're coming? It's about uh, I think it's a little bit earlier, right? I think it's a little bit earlier, about around um, th around three o'clock Finnish time. I don't know that is about two o'clock Swedish time at least, and uh, Central European time. Yeah, I'm bad with those <laughs> those time slots, and especially now after a long after a long uh, live uh, event <laughs> sitting yeah. here in the studio. But uh, we have had a lot of fun, and uh, we have only just started. Yeah, we had yeah. a great time. The weekend's just beginning. Tomorrow's moving day. Here you can see the schedule for That's tomorrow. That's right. We're a little earlier tomorrow. Or no, a little later, actually. 3.15. We started today at 3 o'clock. We finished time. So make sure you tune back in for that, all that action. 3.30, three the MPO will tee off. And 4.45, FPO. That's right. So Don't thanks miss out on tomorrow's round and uh, on Sunday's round. And uh, we're going to be here. I hope you will join us. Please do. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot. Thank you. Signing off. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.